Chapter 51 Thousands of Kilometers Away In a Small Town Hotel Ring Ring The phone rang urgently. It was the Assassin Organization's special line. Hey, it's vacation time. Don't bother me if you have nothing to do. A man with braided hair just finished his shower. With his hair still wet, he grabbed the phone and spoke in a cold voice impolitely. I'm sorry, Mr. Mercenary Tao, but it was a mission sent out by the Snake Charmer Legion. They beg you to take the mission, and they said you could set the price. On the other end of the phone, the operator spoke very carefully. He knew that the person he was talking to was the world's number one assassin, Mercenary Tao. Mercenary Tao was interested, but he still spoke coldly, I don't have time. Sir, sir, everything is negotiable. Four million. Everything is negotiable. Who's the target? A small martial arts school called Heavenly Sky School. The information was reported across the phone. Mercenary Tao stroked his beard, twisted his neck, and immediately made a crunching sound click, 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 and grimly said, well, it's a martial arts school. Hey, you know I've never fought against martial arts schools. This, the other man panicked. It was said that Mercenary Tao was also from a certain martial school, so the missions he carried out were always against individuals. There was no precedent for him to take action against an entire school yet. Well, it has to be an extra charge. Mercenary Tao said bluntly. Yes. Uh, yes. The man on the other end of the phone kept wiping his sweat. Thirty million, nothing less than that. The hotel room soon became smoky as Mercenary Tao hung up the phone directly. He then sat next to the bed and lit up a cigarette. Heavenly Sky School. Is this the school where the winner of this year's World Martial Arts Tournament comes from? A little while later, Mercenary Tao put out the cigarette in his hand and put on a very representative outfit. Black fit trousers, a pink lab coat, and a big kill written on the left chest in a bright red color as if it was dyed with blood. He usually only wears this outfit when he's working. After straightening up his image, Mercenary Tao stalked out of the room and went to the hotel's front desk. Boss. The cold voice was chilling. The owner, who was wearing glasses, looked for the voice when he heard it. Cold sweat swished down his face when he saw what the other man was wearing. The world's greatest assassin, Mercenary Tao, why is he in my hotel? The boss's face suddenly turned pale. What can I do for you, my guest? That boss spoke tremblingly. He kept wiping the cold sweat from his head. Mercenary Tao looked at him coldly. How far is this place roughly from the eastern primitive mountains? Uh. It's about 2,600 kilometers. He bowed his head and spoke. It's pretty far. Mercenary Tao stroked his chin and began to walk around the lobby. As he observed, he also stretched out his fingers. He tapped his knuckles against the stone pillars in the corners of the lobby like he was looking for a suitable pillar. A little while later, he nodded his head and spotted one of the stone pillars. Thud. With two blows, Mercenary Tao jumped up and struck the stone pillar at the top and bottom. His hidden strength penetrated the interior of the stone pillar, destroying the internal structure and forming two sections at the top and bottom of the pillar. As a result, the whole pillar was broken down by Mercenary Tao with a click. Upon witnessing this astonishing scene, the hotel's owner stared with his eyes wide open, and his entire soul was shocked. Well, that's the way to go. Mercenary Tao found the right direction. He whirled around and threw the stone pillar with force. With a swoosh, the pillar instantly turned into a black shadow and disappeared into the sky. Mercenary Tao turned his head to the hotel owner and said, For the sake of the holidays, I'm not going to kill you this time. So take this good fortune gratefully. He then pointed his toes, and the dancing sky art was instantly activated. His body had turned into a shadow and caught up with the fast-flying stone pillar. With Mercenary Tao's throwing power, it would take about four or five relays to reach the great azure mountains. With a plop, 
when mercenary Tato's figure disappeared, the hotel owner could no longer support himself and fell straight to the ground as his legs went limp. The hotel owner's face was pale, mother, that man is actually the number one assassin in the world, the bloodthirsty mercenary Tao. I actually survived him, suddenly, the hotel owner thought again. He was still unsure and quickly closed the hotel door, afraid of attracting any trouble. This time he was lucky to survive mercenary Tao. However, next time he wouldn't be so lucky, so it was better to go out and take refuge just to be safe. On the other side, the Snake Charmer Legion's headquarters was now filled with smoke and flames. The explosions of various shells detonating were intermingled with the sound of bullets firing out of the gun. Boom! A cannonball hit another building. Splattered rocks came down, along with thick black smoke as the castle continued to collapse. Large and small shell craters could be seen everywhere on the ground. Today was definitely the end of the Snake Charmer Legion. And it was a young man who caused all of this. To be exact, it was Muyang. On that day, after ending his conversation with April, Muyang talked to Isaac and the others about the Snake Charmer Legion. After getting everyone's unanimous agreement, Muyang first approached the nearest branch of the Snake Charmer Legion near the primitive mountains and staged a devastating sweep. In the process of sweeping up that division, Muyang got information about the Snake Charmer Legion's headquarters. At that point, he changed his mind and thought it was better to cut down the grass than remove the roots. Just like the original Sun Goku destroying the Red Ribbon Army, Muyang went straight to the Snake Charmer Legion's headquarters without stopping. Muyang was a powerful man of action. In his eyes, once he identified his enemy, it was only prudent to cut down the grass and eliminate the roots. Tuck tuck. The fire snake danced, and dazzling red sparks splashed. Rows of officers carrying guns rushed to the front. The flying bullets wove together, forming a net of fire towards Muyang. However, all of this was to no avail as they faced martial arts experts who were beyond ordinary earthlings. They were crackling, and couldn't see how the enemy was doing it, they just kept getting knocked out. Retreat, let's retreat. The Snake Charmer Legion's officers were scared to death to face the enemy's ghostly attack techniques. No one dared to rush forward. Don't retreat, all of you, charge forward. The commander yelled angrily, with his machine gun firing forward. Help me, someone helps me, there was a ghostly cry of grief. The officers mouthed, all desperate to escape from this place. They didn't dare to fight back at all. Muyang watched with a cold face. The key wave in his hand kept firing, and with a rumble, another building collapsed. Chapter 52 Hey! At that moment, Muyang noticed Commander Wian was heavily maintained by an armored vehicle not far away. A smirk appeared on his face as he reversed his attack direction and rushed towards Commander Wian. Damn it, my father's legion! Commander Wian's face was now as dark as ink, and his body was emitting a piercing murderous aura. The loss of the Legion made his heart bleed. If you have time to worry about that, you might as well worry about your life. An indifferent voice suddenly sounded in his ears. What? Commander Wian's eyes shrank. His green hairs stood on end, and his beastly instincts gave him the feeling that a threat was approaching. Before he could react, a huge force suddenly hit him on the chest. It felt like a truck full of goods crushing over, bang. Without any resistance, Commander Wian's body turned into a cannonball and crashed into the wall. Ah! The rubble exploded, and Wian's gloomy, inky face became even darker. His mouth was dripping with bright red blood, and his eyes were dim. Damn martial arts practitioners! Commander Wian's sharp fangs grounded out a vicious sound. In front of him stood a young man. His white martial uniform rustling in the wind and his entire body was filled with a compelling aura. Especially his eyes, which were like a falcon, making people afraid to look directly at him. Muyang looked at Commander Wian, somewhat surprised that he had survived. Are you an orc? By the look of your costume, you must be the Snake Charmer Legion Commander, right? 
surprisingly you possess a good amount of power. No wonder you're able to rule the entire Snake Charmer Legion. However, after today, the Snake Charmer Legion won't exist anymore. Muyang's voice was icy, as he directly declared the opponent's death. You're the guy. Commander Wian was annoyed and wanted to say something, but Muyang didn't give him any more chance. Swish, 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 a whirlwind blew above the ground. Muyang stepped forward, his body directly became blurred and appeared again. Suddenly he had reached Wian's side. Hiss, win. Wian's eyes shrank a little, and cold sweat swished down his face. You won't be able to resist. From the moment you attacked April's family, you were destined to pay that debt in blood. So, go to hell. Muyang appeared and didn't give the opponent a chance to defend himself. A wave of key was thrown out directly. Its brilliant bright light blossomed in the air and created a gaudy flower bone. The flower bone exploded, and the terrifying energy instantly engulfed Commander Wian's body. With a loud bang, Commander Wian was strangled by the chaotic air currents transformed by the key wave. Without the slightest hint of resistance, he disappeared into the void. After he finished, Muyang looked at the remaining officers with a blank expression and flew high into the air using the dancing sky art. Your commander is dead, and there is no longer a place in this world for the Snake Charmer Legion to stand. Let me end your lives in the most glorious way possible so that you can disappear along with this headquarters. Muyang looked down at the castle below from the air. His eyes were darkened with killing intent. He then shot his key wave towards the castle. Heavenly Sky Beam The terrifying key beam descended from the sky. It suddenly cracked in the middle of its landing, like a huge pot, directly overshadowing the officers. The key wave condensed Muyang's energy. Although it wasn't as powerful as Master Rashi's destruction of the Fire Mountain, it was more than enough to destroy a castle. Boom, boom, boom. The key rays hurled down and struck the ground. The mountains on either side began to shake violently. All the areas covered by the key waves burst into brilliant flashes of light, and at this moment, the sun seemed to grow darker. The fiery air currents steamed the earth. When the thick smoke dissipated, the original location of the Snake Charmer Legion's headquarters had been raised to the ground. The blazing smoke drifted on the surface, no longer visible in its original magnificent appearance. This is the end of the Snake Charmer Legion. Muyang who was floating in the air panting violently, the key wave just now had drained all the key from his body. After landing on the ground and resting for a moment, Muyang's strength recovered a little bit. He didn't use the Senzu beans because they were too precious for him. So, he could only use them when his life was threatened, and as for the current situation where he could recover slowly, he tried not to use them. In the middle of his thoughts, Muyang's body flashed as he entered the acceleration space to recover his strength. Half a day later, at the original headquarters of the Snake Charmer Legion, Muyang came out of the acceleration space. His body had recovered to its best condition, and his key seemed to have increased. With the Snake Charmer Legion's headquarters destroyed, those divisions outside are no longer sufficient to be worried about. Let's wait for some time to annihilate them all. With that thought, Muyang floated up into the air and turned around to head back towards the Great Azure Mountain. Half an hour later, the majestic mountain range was in sight, and once you crossed that mountain range, there was the Great Azure Mountain in front of you. And that was when... Shu. A fast shadow caught up from behind Muyang and was soon moving alongside Muyang. It was a fast-flying stone pillar. On the top of the stone pillar stood a person. His cold and dry cheeks, as well as his peach-colored dress, were very eye-catching. Especially the word kill on his chest, which was particularly striking. After taking a clear look at that person's appearance, especially that unusual outfit, Muyang's heart thumped. His face became more severe than ever. The world's greatest assassin, Mercenary Tao. With this extremely distinctive costume, it was none other than Mercenary Tao. In the original story, 
mercenary Tao accepted a mission from the Red Ribbon Army to capture the Dragon Balls and ended up being defeated by Sun Goku, who climbed Korin Tower. At that time, the vehicle he used was also a stone pillar, just like the current situation. I never thought that this world's number one assassin would remain unchanged for decades. He always used pillar to travel the world. Oh no, mercenary Tao is heading towards the Great Azure Mountain. Crossing over the primitive mountains, with the Great Azure Mountains right behind it, Muyang's face instantly turned a little ugly. Hopefully, he was just passing through. Mercenary Tao's strength was definitely not to be underestimated. His power was comparable to Master Rashi, one of the super experts on Earth that could be counted by five fingers. If his target was the Great Azure Mountains, it would be a disaster for everyone. Hey, kid, you're a disciple of Crane School? How come I haven't seen you before? Mercenary Tao saw the person in front of him using the Crane School's unique technique, the Dancing Sky Art, so he faintly asked the question. Muyang didn't answer. Instead, he jumped onto his stone pillar and stood across from Mercenary Tao. Mercenary Tao, where are you going? Muyang asked seriously. Mercenary Tao looked hesitant. Junior, didn't the Crane School teach you how to respect your teachers and speak to your elders? The voice was cold and ruthless, but because of Muyang's identity that he thought was a Crane School disciple, he didn't show his usual strong killing intent. It turned out that Mercenary Tao thought he was a disciple of Crane School. So, Muyang didn't move, taking advantage of this moment to quietly check out Mercenary Tao. Chapter 53 Mercenary Tao's image, in general, wasn't that good. Actually, it could even be considered as shameful. With a skinny face, a flat body, and a highly distorted costume and hairstyle, he looked weak and bony. Yet, he was such a person who was actually one of the experts in the world. So when it came to facing Mercenary Tao, even Muyang didn't dare to take it lightly. Mercenary Tao's current power level is around 135. He is not much weaker than Master Rashi. However, he has an immense amount of experience in killing someone because he has been an assassin for years. He was a tough opponent, and countless thoughts instantly flashed through Muyang's mind. Master Rashi might keep his old style conservative because of his martial arts school's restraint. Generally speaking, it wouldn't be easy to commit a deadly act. Still, Mercenary Tao was different. The killing was a routine and a job for him. Studying how to kill someone with greater precision might be his daily practice. Muyang, who was familiar with the original story, knew how despicable he was. After he encountered and was defeated by Sun Goku, who had climbed Korin Tower, Mercenary Tao immediately put aside his martial arts practitioner's dignity and pride to save his life. However, when he felt he had an opportunity, he quickly made a sneaky move, which ended up in him being killed by Sun Goku instead. From all indications, it was clear that Mercenary Tao was a total egotist, sinister, ruthless and utterly devoid of a martial arts practitioner's integrity. But it was also this lack of ethics that allowed him to avoid any unnecessary entanglements and take more chances against his enemies, which perhaps did fit the basic qualities of an assassin. Hearing Mercenary Tato's cold question, Muyang seemed to react. He smacked his head, piled up an apologetic smile on his face, and compensated. Uncle Mercenary Tao, this nephew knows that I've just offended you, but I was so excited. Master often mentions Uncle Mercenary Tao in front of me, saying that he is the number one assassin in the world. His power is not below that old Master Rashi, who is known as the God of Martial Arts. So, when I saw Uncle Mercenary Tao, I couldn't help myself, I'm sorry if I've offended you. Mercenary Tao seemed to have no reaction. However, when he heard old man Rashi, his face slightly changed. Muyang said with a smile on his face, Uncle, are you going on a mission this time? Mercenary Tao's eyebrows were raised, and his face had gone cold, do you think this is something that you can just ask? Hey, this nephew might have been overstepped his authority. 
Muyang was busy apologizing, while checking out mercenary Tao, and found that he didn't look too angry. Uncle, the primitive mountains are ahead, and then past that is the great Azure Mountain. I have been practicing here recently, and I'm quite familiar with this place. If uncle has a mission, I am willing to help uncle with it. Upon hearing this, mercenary Tao's face showed surprise and nodded, it's rare for you to have such a filial heart, but your master has taught you well. Well, it's an honor for this nephew to get a glimpse of my uncle's style. M.M. Mercenary Tao nodded smilingly and said, this mission is to look for a martial arts school. There are masters too in this school. So, come over here and let your uncle see your strength first. Otherwise, if you got hurt later, it won't be easy for your uncle to explain it to your master. Mercenary Tao said and waved at Muyang. Upon hearing this, Muyang smiled humbly, Please teach me, uncle, Muyang then walked over towards Mercenary Tao. Mercenary Tao kept his master's style as if he really wanted to teach his nephew. However, when Muyang was close to only a step and a half away, he suddenly revealed his killing intent and shouted out, Doden Ray. At almost the same moment, Muyang also reacted and slammed out a punch. Bo. The punch hit the Doden Ray, and a beam of reddish energy hugely deviated. With a bang and a backlash of energy, Muyang and Mercenary Tao each took half a step back, looking at each other in surprise. Life was all about acting. Perhaps Mercenary Tao didn't expect the other person to hold the same thoughts as he did. Mercenary Tao laughed, interesting, very interesting. I never thought there would be a talented young man like you among the young generation. Seeing that his sneaky attack had failed, Muyang secretly sighed in regret. Judging from Mercenary Tao's move, he might have realized that Muyang wasn't a disciple of the Crane School. The only reason he was still playing this scenario was that his assassin's instincts made him aware of the danger. Oh, it seems that I misunderstood. You're not a disciple of Crane School at all. Mercenary Tao stroked the beard on his lips. With one hand behind his back, he looked like a master, but his dry, thin cheeks were filled with coldness, and his eyes were even more cold and ruthless. I never said I was. So, you didn't misunderstand from the start. Muyang shook his head. He knew the show was over and looked at Mercenary Tao frankly. I told you. There's no such person like you in Crane School. Mercenary Tao spoke up, then remained silent. The two of them stood on top of the stone pillars flying at high speed across the great Azure Mountain mountain range. Suddenly, Muyang moved. He transferred the key in his body and made his body float slightly with the dancing sky art. He lifted his foot and stomped towards the flying stone pillar. With a rumble, the stone pillar was struck in the wrong direction by the brute force and directly flew down towards the primitive mountain range at a 90 degree angle. There was a cracking and shattering sound. During the process of falling, the stone pillar broke into two pieces. One disintegrated in the air, and the other fell to the ground, creating a crater two meters deep and three meters wide. At the same time, a loud rumbling resounded through the world, and the several dozen meter radius was overturned, raising dense smoke. Ahem, two figures popped out of the smoke and landed on the ground, each standing not far from the crater. They covered their noses but showed no signs of injury. Kid, your martial arts are not bad. I don't know where you stole the dancing sky art from, but you've used it well. You have such great power at such a young age. If you grow up, I'm afraid you will make a great achievement. Even I have developed a love for your talent. But sadly, you have offended me, Mercenary Tao and meeting me is your greatest misfortune. Mercenary Tao shook his head faintly as if everything was within his grasp. Muyang sneered, ridiculous, all of the techniques were created by signature. Who said that the dancing sky art could only be the crane school stunt? Tisk, tisk, such a shameless junior. How profound is the dancing sky art that you can just create it? I've never seen anyone in this world capable of creating a move comparable to the dancing sky art. Mercenary Tao said disdainfully. 
Compared to Mutato's period from 200 years ago, the martial world had decreased so much. Even the key-based technique legacy was very limited, let alone creating moves to utilize the key-based technique. If creating move using key-based technique was that easy, Kamehameha and Dodenrei wouldn't be legendary moves. As far as he was concerned, Muyang was more like a villain who had stolen a move from Crane School and was still in denial to admit it. Killing this kind of person, even 10,000 times, wouldn't be enough. That can only mean that you are lonely and unaware, Muyang said in a cold voice. It was true that this era couldn't compare to the Mutato era of a few hundred years ago, but it didn't mean that there were no geniuses in this era. Hey! Upon hearing this, Mercenary Tao snorted coldly. A fierce color flashed across his eyebrows as the coldness on his body became even more intense. He said coldly, a madman who knows nothing about life has managed to piss me off. It's a good thing I haven't killed anyone in the past two days, so it would be good to have a warm-up exercise before carrying out my mission. I'll show you what it's like to suffer worse than death. This sentence, I'll serve it back. Looking at the arrogant and wildly laughing mercenary Tao, Muyang's face flashed with a cold murderous aura. It didn't matter if Mercenary Tao's target was Heavenly Sky School or not. With that arrogance, he would make Mercenary Tao completely disappear from this world. As he thought of this, Muyang decided to make the first move. Muyang stepped forward with a swoosh, his body instantly transforming into a high-speed moving stream of light. He arrived in front of Mercenary Tao, but when he didn't see any reaction, he smashed his punch down with a powerful force. Boom! A startled look appeared on Mercenary Tao's face as Muyang's punch struck. Then without waiting for a response, a powerful counterattack came from Mercenary Tao fist, creating a vast whirlwind around him. That's a pretty quick reaction. I wonder how long you'll be able to hold it. With a cold voice, Mercenary Tao's body appeared like a ghost in Muyang's original position. His body pressed firmly and a vicious attack swept over. The sound of cloth tearing and a crack appeared between Muyang's sleeves. A piece of the white fabric being torn away by Mercenary Tao. As expected of an experienced assassin. If I'm not careful, he will catch me by surprise. Muyang was able to get away from the attack and escape. To be honest, Muyang's strength was already comparable to Mercenary Tao. However, in terms of experience, Muyang wasn't as good as Mercenary Tao. However, in terms of skill, Muyang, who had been trained by Korin, was a lot more clever than Mercenary Tao. Chapter 54 Phew! Shu! Two silhouettes moved swiftly through the forest. They appeared and disappeared, each appearance accompanied by a violent fight and a violent tremor one after another. Pop! Mercenary Tao grinned as his attack landed on Muyang's body. Poof, Muyang's face turned pale, and blood spilled out from the corners of his mouth. However, Muyang's counterattack was just as swift, and the moment Muyang struck him, his attack also landed on Mercenary Tao. Cough, cough, cough. Mercenary Tao's face was gloomy. He withdrew so fast that his face seemed as black as charcoal. After a few encounters, Mercenary Tao realized that he had underestimated his opponent. The person in front of him was so young yet still hadn't lost after several fighting rounds. This young man had even let himself suffer a secret loss. Mercenary Tao couldn't help but become furious. His cold eyes swept towards Muyang, and a terrifying killing intent seemed to condense into a ball. Muyang looked at Mercenary Tao with a gloomy face. He carefully gathered the key in his body, ready to attack Mercenary Tao at any moment. I underestimated you, but let's see how you dodge the next attack. Mercenary Tao shouted lightly and converted his entire body's strength into speed. With a few steps, he arrived in front of Muyang. Facing the sudden onslaught of Mercenary Tao, Muyang's eyes glowed brightly. His hands grabbed the ground in reverse, using it as a prop and with the twist of his waist, his legs kicked towards Mercenary Tao. Mercenary Tao took a few steps backward in disgrace. This time, 
he even used his secret moves. Doden, Ray. A blood-red beam of ki was fired out as mercenary Tao's entire body soared with an explosion as his finger pointed towards Muyang. Die for me. The terrifying ki condensed into a ray of light shot towards Muyang. In this sudden huge increase in strength, Muyang's face changed dramatically. Dogden's Doden Ray, dot. Compared to the previous round, this time, since he didn't have to hide his killing intent, the unleashed Doden Ray was a full one. Even if your Doden Ray is strong, it won't help if the quality isn't good. There was no time to think about it. Muyang straightened his hands and braced his palms together in a grasping shape. A buzzing sound of blue-white light covered his palms. He was going to take the mercenary Tao's Doden Ray as hard as Sun Goku. Pang! The strong attack stirred up a huge whirlwind. The fiery burning sensation came from the palm of his hand, and the tremendous pressure caused Muyang's arm to go numb, and sweat beaded on his forehead. At the moment when the key wave attacked, his body moved back four or five meters, and his feet shoveled out two deep grooves. However, mercenary Tao's Doden Ray didn't manage to defeat Muyang. How is it possible that my Doden Ray was followed? Mercenary Tao's eyes were about to pop out at the sight of it. He had been traveling across the world for so many years, and Doden Ray had been the most desirable killing blow in his possession. No matter how strong an enemy he faced, as long as he used the Doden Ray, his opponent would invariably die from the terrifying key shot without exception. But today, he didn't expect that he would actually be taken hard by someone. This man must be killed or he'll be too scary when he grows up. Mercenary Tao was panicking. The killing intent in his eyes became even more durable. He wasn't this strong when he was younger. Who the hell are you? Aren't you going towards the direction of the Great Azure Mountain? You wouldn't even investigate your target character. I'm the disciple from the Heavenly Sky School. Muyang seized the time to regulate the ki in his body, and managed to recover quickly. Mercenary Tao was startled, are you really a disciple of the Heavenly Sky School? How can this small school have disciples like you? Damn the intelligence department! How can this be a small school? To be able to teach such a disciple, they aren't even that bad compared to the Crane School and Turtle School. Mercenary Tao looked extremely pissed. He believed he was being dragged down by the Assassin Organization's unreliable intelligence department. Although he had known earlier that there was a disciple from the Heavenly Sky School who had won the World Martial Arts Tournament, he hadn't taken it seriously. Only now did he vaguely feel that he shouldn't have taken this mission. However, now it was too late to say anything. The people had already been thoroughly offended by him, and now the only way to get rid of them was to cut off the grass. Based on mercenary Tato's ego, he wouldn't allow another Master Rashi to appear in the world especially this guy. He was as deceitful as he was, so he must be killed. With that in mind, Mercenary Tao ignored the consumption incurred from using the Doden Ray earlier and tried to kill Muyang once again. Come on! Now it's my turn to attack. Muyang, who had recovered his physical strength, would never sit back and wait to die while facing another attack from Mercenary Tao. Then with a loud burst, Despite the huge consumption of the body, he attacked again, all the way through the continuous vacillation. Muyang, with extremely clever movements, came behind mercenary Tao. With a flow of light in his hand, crystal energy attached to his palm, and a startled expression on mercenary's face, he struck down his palm with a faint light. Mercenary Tao, die for me! Muyang exploded. With a muffled thud, the palm strike landed on Mercenary Tato's body. After sustaining such a blow, Mercenary Tato's body was knocked more than 10 meters out of the way and crashed on top of a distant giant tree. The giant tree shook violently and snapped right down the middle. Muyang obviously had the upper hand in that round. Ah! Mercenary Tao stood up in a heap, yelling angrily. His clothes had turned to strips, shredded, and moving with the breeze. Damn! I can't believe I got hurt. Mercenary Tao was annoyed. Apart from the Turtle School and the Crane Shoal, 
it was the first time mercenary Tao had encountered such a difficult opponent that perhaps would win against him. How could this possible? He was the world's greatest assassin, and since his rise to fame, no one in this world was a match for him. Mercenary Tao vowed that he would kill the man in front of him in the most inhumane way possible. The cold and ruthless gaze swept over Muyang. Mercenary Tao's dark cheeks twitched a little. The veins on his forehead popped out as he licked his lips, and with one hand tugging up his fist, he was full of malice. Damn, kid, you actually managed to hurt me. Now tell me what kind of death do you wish to receive? As he spoke, the key on his body became disheveled, and with him as the center, sickening murderous key spread out. Having been an assassin for so many years, more than ten million souls died at the hands of mercenary Tao. Muyang frowned, as he sensed the evil emanating from the mercenary Tao's body. The scouter in the bosom crackled and flickered. The value displayed actually reached 144, a fraction higher than earlier. This was the so-called power-up in Earth's martial arts. Mercenary Tao's power level went up a lot after he went berserk. However, it's still a lot less than the 150 power level he had when he fought Sun Goku. Muyang pondered that if he tried his best, the two might not be equal, but they would definitely fail each other. Spell it out, Muyang decided as he gritted his teeth. This was a life and death battle, not some martial arts competition. So, the first thing to do was to defeat the opponent no matter what. Chapter 55 Ha ha ha, now you know how it feels to be afraid. I'll show you what the world's number one assassin is capable of. Mercenary Tao twisted his hideous face. Because of the key explosion that exceeded the limit, his body was under tremendous pressure, and every muscle was trembling. Upon hearing this, Muyang laughed coldly in his heart. He immediately released an insane amount of key as well a flow of key no weaker than mercenary Tao's key wrapped around his body. Let's fight until the end. I must kill mercenary Tao today. Ho! Oh. Endless terrifying key flowed around them. The profound aura continued to spread, causing the entire great forest to become silent. At this point, both sides were in a state of madness, and one of them was bound to fall in this battle. Bang bang bang! The battle was triggered once more, with a series of fierce fights, with the ground flying. Both sides' speed had been so fast that if ordinary people were here, they would only see two blurred figures clashing and flashing. They wouldn't be able to see the exact process, as their speed had exceeded the limits of ordinary eyesight. Thud! Muyang fiercely stomped on the ground. The ground suddenly cracked with sinuous fractures, and with this power, his body went straight up. After reaching a certain height, Muyang cupped his hands and sent out powerful blows towards Mercenary Tao. Pang! With a single move, he knocked Mercenary Tao down from the height. A large wave of ki connected to form a cyclone that broke through the sound barrier, causing Mercenary Tao's face twisted and crashed to the ground. Then Muyang's body flickered again in successive virtual flashes, coming to the ground faster than Mercenary Tao. His body slightly bowed, knees bent as he attacked continuously. Mercenary Tao was wretchedly under attack. His eyes were flashing with an intense murderous intent, but his mouth's corners raised in a grin of madness. After solidly taking Muyang's attack, Mercenary Tao slipped forward. Dodan, Ray. The blood-red light suddenly shot out towards Muyang. Heavenly Sky Beam. A coldness appeared on Muyang's face, as he made a counterattack. Another ray-like attack, azure beams of light, met the mercenary Tao's Dodan ray. The two key waves met halfway and exploded into a fine mist of energy smoke. Impossible, this move is actually very similar to Dodan ray. Mercenary Tao looked startled and a little surprised. Dodan ray was an improved version of tri-beam left behind by Master Shen from a generation of Grand Master Wu Tato. It was one of the few legendary moves that could stand up against the Turtle School's Kamehameha. Now that he saw a weak crowned teenager using a similar attack pattern, Mercenary Tato's immediate reaction was disbelief. Humph, 
this is my Heavenly Sky School's inherited key-based technique. It's completely different from the principle of your Doden Ray. Muyang panted vigorously, as he used this free time to recover his strength. The previous battle had caused him to consume his power to the limit. Mercenary Tao was silent upon hearing the words. Each school had its own unique training pattern, and the connotations of natural ki were also various. Although Muyang's ki wave looked very similar to Doden Ray, the colors were different. The different colors meant that they were operating in completely different patterns. This martial arts school, Heavenly Sky School, actually even has ki waves. At this point, Mercenary Tao's mood was so bad that her thin cheeks kept twitching. A feeling of powerlessness suddenly flooded in his mind. One last move. Let's fight until the end. Mercenary Tao sucked in his breath and shouted maniacally. At the moment, the power in his body was almost gone, and if he continued to suppress it, it would only add more damage. So, he might as well use his most powerful attack to score a victory. Even in Mercenary Tao's mind, he was ready to run at any moment. Mercenary Tao was very life conscious. It wasn't easy to live for hundreds of years, so he wasn't willing to dwell on it if the next move didn't work. What was accomplishing the task? What was the restraint of an expert? It was all vanity in the face of life. It was all worthless. Click, like the sound of a string snapping. At this moment, Mercenary Tao and Wuyang's originally vacuous aura rose once again. From their twisted faces, it could be seen that they were truly at their limit this time. Doden, Ray. Heavenly Sky Beam. The two key beam once again met in the air. This time the power generated was even greater. The storm caused by the explosion destroyed the trees in a radius of more than 300 meters. Along with a loud rumbling sound, a fiery red energy cluster soared into the air, and the huge energy directly engulfed Muyang and Mercenary Tao. In a few moments, a piece of scorched earth was revealed on the field. The bare surface was grassless and smoking hot. Cough cough, do you think you can beat me? Mercenary Tao shielded his chest with his hands and spat out a mouthful of blood. He was struggling to support himself as he was now black and charred. His limbs filled with scrapes and his clothes turned to ashes from the earlier explosion. On the opposite side, Muyang's image was equally wretched. His martial uniform was ripped into the cloth with several pieces of fabric already burned. A slight cough was accompanied by intense pain all over his body. Muyang grunted and twisted his face. His body's injuries had spread to his internal organs. Ahem, ho, why, can't I? Muyang said in a pressurized voice. He he. Mercenary Tao sneered. His body was severely injured, but at least he could move. On the other hand, he could see that Muyang was having a hard time even to move. So, he could only stay there and wait for Muyang's death, didn't that mean he won? So it turned out, no one could defeat him in this world. Mercenary Tao thought of himself immensely. Kid. It's also an honor for you to die in the hands of a master like me. Tisk, I would remember you today. Don't worry, you wouldn't be lonely in the underworld. Those brothers and sisters of yours would soon be there to accompany you. Do you think you are going to win? Muyang asked back with an indifferent expression. Isn't it? Muyang didn't say anything. At a certain point, he had a dried bean in his hand. Then with difficulty, he put the bean in his mouth. Mercenary Tao nodded at the sight, you'll have to eat something even before you die. It's only a small bean, and you've already been shabby. Ugh. Muyang let out a long breath, which sounded like a sigh of emotion. For some reason, this voice reached Mercenary Tao's ears. It suddenly caused him a chilling sensation, as if something detrimental to him was about to happen. Chapter 56 You know what, Mercenary Tao, if it were a normal fight between life and death, we'd probably both lose like we are now. However, your biggest disadvantage is also because you ran into me, you're not as lucky as I am. Muyang's words made Mercenary Tao stunned. 
his anxiety grew more pronounced. Muyang smiled as he said, then bit into the senzu bean inside his mouth. Dense ki suddenly filled his mouth. The magical effects of senzu beans were in full bloom at this moment. Muyang's body injuries were instantly healed and caused him to return to his peak in no time. What? What the hell is going on here? Why are all your wounds healed? Mercenary Tao stared in disbelief and even frightened at what was happening before his eyes. The injuries on his opponent's body had actually recovered in an instant. How was that possible? Right now, he felt as if he had fallen from heaven to hell. He suddenly realized that he was in a dangerous situation. The bean, it must be because of the dried up bean just now. Mercenary Tao's mouth was a little bitter, was it really the beans that did that? How could there be such a sacred medicine in this world? Mercenary Tao thought incredulously. A hint of greed arising in her eyes, but then in the next second, that greed disappeared and was replaced by deep fear. Escape, he must escape quickly. He couldn't possibly be a match for this person in front of him in his current state. Mercenary Tao's face turned pale and an emotion called fear sprang up in his heart. With a plop, Mercenary Tao directly knelt on the ground and kowtowed, Young master, I was wrong, forgive me. I will definitely change my evil ways in the future. He said and repeatedly kowtowed. Muyang looked with a cold smile as if he was looking at a jumping clown. He wouldn't be a gentlewoman at a time like this. He wouldn't let Mercenary Tao leave alive today no matter what. Knock it off. Even if you kowtow more, I don't believe even a punctuation mark in your words. After a few kowtows in a row, still no reaction from the opponent, Mercenary Tao sunk in his face. He didn't know what was on his opponent's mind. Suddenly he seemed to know that appeasement couldn't be exchanged for life, and his attitude became tougher. You can't kill me, or my big brother Master Shen won't let you go. He only has me as a brother, if you kill me, it will only bring danger to your loved ones. Hmm, have you said enough? Muyang interrupted him and said disdainfully, let's not say whether Master Shen would know about today's incident. Even if he did, do you think I would be afraid of him? Since he aspired to become a powerful person in the universe, did you think the trivial Master Shen could threaten him? If Master Shen did find out, it would be his own undoing. No matter what, Mercenary Tao would be dead today. Then, you will die. Mercenary, Tao shouted. He pulled out a grenade, unplugged the top tip, and threw it at Muyang. Muyang's face flashed with killing intent as he saw this. Mercenary Tao had remained true to his roots for decades as always. But Muyang, who was back to full strength, wouldn't be hit by a grenade. He just lightly leaped up and kicked the grenade back towards Mercenary Tao with the tip of his toe. No. Mercenary Tao let out a hysterical scream. The grenade exploded, and a huge flame engulfed Mercenary Tao's entire body. If it was an ordinary person, he would definitely be lifeless in this huge explosion. However, he was Mercenary Tao, who had lived for hundreds of years. Wouldn't he have any tricks to save his life? This grenade was more for himself than to serve Muyang. Being able to show the enemy's weakness and deceive them, Mercenary Tao's deception was absolutely brilliant. According to the original story, it was known that Mercenary Tao survived the explosion during his duel with Sun Goku. This little trick was able to fool Sun Goku, but it couldn't fool Muyang's eyes. Suddenly, Muyang looked towards a direction in the forest, he he, Mercenary Tao. You're trying to escape, after saying that, Muyang directly fired a key wave towards that direction. Wow! The key wave ran through everything and whizzed away, zipping, destroying all the trees along the way. On the other side of the forest, the severely injured mercenary Tao leaned against the back of a large tree gasping for air. His eyelids were drooping, and his seven apertures were bleeding. Just then, he felt a terrifying energy approaching before he could react. A patch of azure energy appeared in front of him. Puff! A sharp ray of energy penetrated through the chest, then out the back, and mercenary Tato's consciousness grew blurry. 
Cough, cough, it's impossible. I'm the number one assassin in the world, how could I die in, the lack of oxygen in his brain produced uncontrollable dizziness. Mercenary Tao's lips moved slightly, and the words were full of unwillingness. Muyang appeared in front of Mercenary Tao. His cold eyes aimed at him, it's only because you found the wrong opponent. Ha ha ha. I was wrong to take this mission. As your death is approaching, now will you tell me exactly who paid you to take on this mission? Ahem, is, Mercenary Tao answered, a sardonic color flashing across her face. Don't even try to make me tell you. It's the Snake Charmer Legion, isn't it? Muyang leaned into his ear and whispered. After that, he saw Mercenary Tao's eyes widen dramatically, and he laughed, All right, you don't need to say anything. Go to hell in peace. You. Mercenary Tao's consciousness began to fade, and his voice gradually became inaudible. Dead. Muyang went up to check to make sure that Mercenary Tao was really dead. After laughing, Muyang fired another series of key waves at Mercenary Tao's corpse until his body completely turned into ashes along with the key waves. If you cut the grass without getting rid of the roots, the spring breeze would blow and grow it again. Although this era didn't have mature robot technology, to prevent the mechanical Mercenary Tao from appearing in vain, Muyang would still have to destroy the corpses. After doing this, Muyang calmed himself there for a while. He took out a brand new set of clothes from the acceleration space, then leaped up and flew towards the Heavenly Sky School. It was getting late by the time he got back to the Heavenly Sky School. Muyang came to Isaac's cabin and told Isaac what had happened today. After hearing Muyang's explanation, Isaac was completely stunned. He didn't expect his disciple to go out on a trip and not only annihilated the Snake Charmer Legion headquarters but also eliminated Mercenary Tao the assassin, on the way back. This mercenary Tao wasn't an ordinary person. He was one of the top five figures in the martial arts world, and his reputation was even more dreadful. It was unbelievable to think that Muyang had killed such a person. Don't make a fuss about this, I've heard that mercenary Tao is very close to the Crane School. Although with your strength, you may not be afraid of Crane School, you're still young, more is better than less so don't let anyone know for now. At that point, Isaac calmed down and shook his head, well, the martial world is so much worse now that it can no longer withstand a toss. Well, I know. As long as Crane School doesn't provoke us, I won't make a move against them. Muyang said seriously. Isaac smiled at the words, it's a good thing you made it back in time like this otherwise the consequences would have been disastrous when Mercenary Tao found this place. Muyang nodded his head profoundly. The overall strength of the Heavenly Sky School was relatively weak and had no protection against Mercenary Tao. Chapter 57 Running into and killing Mercenary Tao this time could be said to be a complete accident. Muyang had never considered that he would interact with the number one assassin in the world. Although, as he grew up, he would inevitably have to deal with some martial arts figures, it was still a bit much to take out Mercenary Tao directly. It could be said that if this matter were to be announced, it would cause a huge uproar. These were all the Snake Charmer Legion's fault. But the good news was that Mercenary Tao was dead, and the Snake Charmer Legion had annihilated itself. So, for the time being, it had become a headless case. As for whether or not the assassin organization would find out, Muyang felt that it was possible. After all, this mission was issued by the Snake Charmer Legion. Anyone willing to investigate would be able to find out the purpose of this mission. However, this matter was also easy for Muyang. He could just make up his mind and deny it. Mercenary Tao didn't reach the Great Azure Mountain in the end, and there was no battle on that side. Also. Mercenary Tao had killed countless people, and it wasn't surprising that there were a few formidable foes. Perhaps halfway through the journey, he met his enemies. Oh, those enemies were so wicked that they killed Mercenary Tao and almost made the Heavenly Sky School take the blame. Muyang had his dinner at his teacher, Isaac's cabin. His teacher's wife, Alice, 
prepared a sumptuous meal in the kitchen and served it up together with April. There were six dishes in total, along with a bowl of soup with a reasonable mix of meat and vegetables, making it a very fulfilling dish. Muyang, go eat more. At the dining table, Alice was like a mother who kept giving Muyang food. Muyang smiled and handed over the bowl of rice, thank you, madam. Isaac laughed and opened a bottle of long-treasured good wine and poured a glass for everyone, come on, let's all taste the wine. I have treasured it for a long time and have been unable to drink it. Let's try it today. Master, I want a drink. The little girl, April, took a sip from her little glass and quickly stuck her tongue out, ooh, why is this stuff so bad? I don't like it. Ha ha ha, April can't drink wine. Just eat more food. Isaac laughed cheerfully. Well, April pecked her head. Her little face was already turning red and her head dizzy after only one sip of wine. Alice saw April's little red face and grumbled at Isaac, if April can't drink, don't give it to her, see, she's become such a mess. She said, standing up and pouring a glass of water from the kitchen and handing it to April, here, have a glass of water and rinse your mouth. April was feeling thirsty, downing her cup in one gulp and eating her food with her head down, as she vowed never to drink again. Isaac smiled as he patted her head. After dinner, the teacher and his disciple began to chat. He said to Muyang, Muyang, your strength is already above your teacher. What's next, your teacher can't help you. You can only rely on your own comprehension. Isaac was honest. He was already far inferior to Muyang in terms of practice. He couldn't even imagine Muyang's current state, so Muyang could only rely on himself in the future. Our Heavenly Sky School has a martial arts dojo in the village below the Great Azure Mountain, where April is usually staying. I think you can go there to meditate and teach those juniors of yours along the way. When their martial arts have reached a state like yours, it would be good to settle down properly. Muyang nodded his head in agreement. Now he really needed to precipitate his training, and the Heavenly Sky School dojo was the right place. In addition to his own practice, he could also guide his juniors there. Is my brother going to stay with me in the martial arts dojo? April blinked her watery eyes, and her azure eyes were fluttering like sapphire crystal. Muyang smiled and ruffled April's brown hair, yeah. I'll also have to supervise your future training. Although April wants to be a scientist when you grow up, scientists are generally thin and weak. So, you need a strong body to support your research better. April hemmed and hawed, I know. When the family dinner was over that night, April stayed at Isaac's cabin. By the second day, she and her sidekick, the blue dinosaur, Growly, showed up at Makio's place early in the morning. Brother, brother, we're going down the hill. A cheerful child's voice yelled from outside the cabin. Muyang opened the door and saw April and the young dinosaur with its wings flapping. April's things were wrapped up in a cloth bag hanging on the young blue dinosaur's neck. The young blue dinosaur's nerdy big head constantly leaned towards Muyang's belly his mouth made a click, click, click sound. Muyang smiled and said to them, You guys wait here. I'll pack my things. After returning to the house and putting all the things needed into the acceleration space, Muyang clapped his hands and took April's little hand, come on, let's go down the mountain. Along the way, April kept tilting her head to peer at Muyang. What's wrong? Muyang asked strangely. Where are your things, brother? April couldn't help but ask. I put it all away. Ah. Uh, why didn't I see that? Take it out so Growly can carry it. Muyang smiled faintly, I put it away using a special technique. That's why you can't see it. Eh, uh, is that so? April blinked. Ha ha ha. Muyang let out a laugh and didn't continue to explain it to April where he'd put his things, or the little girl would be digging in again. They laughed and joked along the way, the beautiful scenery constantly receding on either side. Soon they turned off the winding path into the main road and entered the village at the bottom of the great azure mountains. 
There were about a dozen villages below the Great Azure Mountain, and the village that Muyang and April had now entered was a relatively large village with about 300 households and nearly 2,000 villagers. The Heavenly Sky Martial Art Dojo was located in the west of the village, not too far away. Due to the Heavenly Sky Martial Arts School's existence, this place had gradually become a marketplace for several nearby villages to sell their goods. Whenever the Heavenly Sky Martial Art Dojo held its training courses for the public, it was also the busiest time for the market. As Muyang and April walked along the village road, the villagers, who saw them all, nodded kindly along the way. Even when they saw the young blue dinosaur following beside them, they didn't show a timid expression. Wow, what a cute dinosaur with a big head! A few children ran down the street, pointing at the blue dinosaur. Oh! The young blue dinosaur raised his head and squealed majestically. Muyang smiled in April, Growly is quite popular here. April said happily, well, Growly is such a good boy, and everyone loves him. Muyang nodded his head. This village of 2,000 people, their usual way of life, was very quaint. The buildings were all short wooden houses. In addition to growing crops in the fields, they also hunted for a living. So many villagers would go to the Heavenly Sky School Martial Arts Dojo to learn a little martial arts skill in their spare time. April and the Blue Dinosaur were already familiar with many villagers after living in the Martial Arts Dojo for so many days. They continued to walk to the Martial Arts Dojo. After ten minutes, they arrived at the western edge of the village. The Heavenly Sky School Martial Arts Dojo wasn't very big. The buildings in the front row were connected with only six or seven indoor dojos, but outside of the martial arts building, a few simple open-air dojos had been fenced off, and those were places for the nearby villagers to practice and learn. Chapter 58 The disciples of the Heavenly Sky School Martial Arts Dojo were roughly divided into three categories. The first was a true disciple like April, who was enrolled in the Heavenly Sky School. This category allowed the disciple to learn all the Heavenly Sky School's martial arts. The second was a martial arts practitioner from the neighborhood or a more talented teenager. This category allowed disciples to learn the Heavenly Sky School fighting techniques by paying a fee to become a dojo disciple. The third was the villagers who listened. For this category, the dojo teacher wouldn't give them any special guidance, and it was up to them to decide how much they could understand. Of course, through selection, the dojo would also recruit several people to become teachers at the dojo and be responsible for teaching the basic martial arts to everyone. At this time, the number of the first category of disciples was the smallest among those who were currently residing in the martial arts dojo. There were only a dozen or so true disciples of the Heavenly Sky School, except for a few who needed to practice and were residing in the martial dojo. The remaining few were children like April. They were still young and needed to learn about the culture in the village. When Wiang and April pushed open the door and walked into the dojo, there were already some disciples practicing in the dojo. Of them were children from a few nearby villages, as there was a regular school not far from the dojo, and the village parents were happy for their children to learn a bit of self-defense. Senior brother Wiang is here. Senior brother Wiang is here. As soon as they stepped through the door, the disciples inside saw their big brother coming, shouting loudly. Soon three or five teenagers ran over. They were about fourteen or fifteen years old. They were the true disciples of the Heavenly Sky School. Besides them, there was also some older martial arts practitioner who practiced in this martial arts dojo. Senior brother Muyang, I heard that you won the World Martial Arts Tournament, can you tell us about it? Yet. Yeah tell us about it. The fellow disciples gathered around and chattered non-stop. Even the other disciples who were practicing in the dojo came together, all watching with admiration. Muyang had a smile on his face. Not many people within the Heavenly Sky School knew about the World Martial Arts Tournament in the past. But since Muyang had won this year's tournament, of course, Isaac and the others were vigorously promoting this kind of glamorous event. It was so much so that all of the nearby 10-mile countryside knew about it. Thus the number of the Heavenly Sky School Martial Dojo's disciples became much more extensive. 
when you listen to the name, the World Martial Arts Tournament, how noble and classy it was. Since Brother Muyang had won this tournament, wouldn't that make him the best martial arts practitioner in the world? This perception was a bit off, but in reality, with Muyang's current strength, he was qualified to declare himself as the best martial arts practitioner in the world. Okay, I'll tell you about it later. Muyang nodded and smiled. Senior brother Muyang, why do you have time to come to the martial arts dojo, is there something you need to explain? The one who spoke was one of Muyang's junior sisters, Ness. She was one of the temporary teachers at the martial arts dojo. Muyang nodded, that's right. This time I come to the dojo to stay here for a while. If you have any questions about your training, you can come and ask me. Really? Great, we have a lot of questions. The teachers often say that senior brother Muyang's strength has surpassed theirs. A few disciples opened the floodgates of conversation, excited that Muyang was able to stay in the martial arts dojo. Because Muyang's martial arts had always been the best among all the disciples, and with everything that the teachers often talked about after the World Martial Arts Tournament. They all had even more confidence in Muyang's strength and wanted to learn something from him. In the same way, the other disciples in the martial dojo also had an excited expression on their faces when they heard Muyang mention this. Most of them were lacking in martial arts talent but desperately dreaming of becoming martial arts practitioners. It was such an honor to have a winner of the World Martial Arts Tournament to teach them now. They made up their minds that they would study hard later, and if they could learn a little bit more, it would be useful enough for them for the rest of their lives. April then pulled one of the older brothers beside her and asked, Hey, brother Yiya, what's the World Martial Arts Tournament? The disciple named Yiya looked at April and said, The World Martial Arts Tournament is an event attended by martial arts practitioners from all over the world, which is said to be held only once every five years. Only once every five years. April listened in amazement and wrestled her hand to count. She was soon shocked as she was just a little over five years old herself. Came to think of it, the World Martial Arts Tournament seemed pretty awesome. Yuya proudly said, Yes, the grand event attended by masters from all over the world. The most recent one was just half a year ago when Brother Muyang participated in that competition and then defeated all the opponents to get the title. Sister April, don't you think it's awesome? Um, awesome. April's mouth was wide open, and she was nodding her head like a little fang girl. Suddenly, she remembered the power her brother had shown when he had rescued her. When he fell from the sky and defeated the bad guys with a few swishes, her brother was undoubtedly the best in the world. Muyang looked at everyone's excitement and pressed his hand, All right, you guys continue your training. I'll go with April to drop off our stuff so that you can ask me any questions later. I'll take you to your room, brother Muyang. A junior brother volunteered to lead Muyang and April to the backyard. There were six or seven indoor martial arts venues in the Heavenly Sky School Martial Art Dojo. A large courtyard with eight or nine rooms in the back provided private residential for disciples and dojo teachers to live in. After Muyang and April left, the disciples began to return from their excitement. Under the direction of the teacher, they swung their fists and kicks in a single motion. The dojo only taught basic punches, but you could still become a formidable fighter if you could integrate them. Chapter 59 Due to Muyang's arrival, the entire martial arts dojo was filled with a different atmosphere. The disciples worked even harder and practiced with great enthusiasm. The teacher was also exceptionally serious today and taught all the disciples in a very serious manner. Everyone was holding a lot of energy, with an indescribable motivation in their hearts. On the east side of the martial arts dojo, the disciples practice basic moves in groups of three to five under their teacher's arrangement. This was the foundation of the Heavenly Sky School Martial Arts Dojo's introduction, which was said to be rehearsed several times a day. However, it was this very normal practice that gave them vigorous strength. In a small corner, April was also taught by her senior sister Ness. With her martial arts uniform and slender waist tied, she was seriously practicing her punches and kicks. 
The punches and kicks were downright impressive, and the training was exceptionally serious. On the other hand, the young blue dinosaur was lying next to her, taking a nap. As for the west side of the martial arts dojo, the older disciples practiced one-on-one -on -one combat, which was considered sparring. Ah! Two older disciples sparred together. They were attacking and defending with their heavenly sky school moves. One after the other, they were profoundly skilled at attacking and defending, and it was extremely entertaining to watch. You could tell that both disciples were very solid in their basic skills. Just then, Muyang suddenly shouted stop. The two disciples looked at Muyang with confused expressions. Stop, you two have studied other martial arts before, haven't you? The two disciples nodded, yes. We both used to study with a master fighter and have been blindfolding ourselves ever since. Muyang was thoughtful after hearing that, no wonder. Fighting was about fierceness and ferocity. It was about putting people to death, giving the audience a pleasing viewing experience, and stimulating hormones secretion, resulting in explosive emotions and excitement. However, compared to martial arts training, it was less about internal control lacking overall coordination, and seemingly inflexible. I watched you guys just now. Every punch had a sense of frustration, a stiff punch that gave you an angular feel, but lacked the coordination to the point it lacked succession, you try again. Muyang walked up to the two disciples and tapped his fingers on their muscles as they punched. Here, right here, swing your arms down a little and raise your legs up, yes that's right. You guys watch, when you punch, it's all about a single blow, which is strength. However, you can't use all your strength, keep some of it for emergencies. While the disciples were training, Muyang constantly corrected their mistakes. With Muyang's current eyesight and cognition, his guidance always hit the nail on the head. A few light words that fell on the disciples' ears were like thunder and deafening, making them feel endlessly useful. Brother Muyang, I have some questions. A junior brother named Aso came up and leaped to his feet. Although Aso was not very old, only 14, and appeared to be short in stature, he was a temporary teacher at the dojo. Just like Ness, he was quite talented. Muyang looked at this junior brother and stretched his hand at him. Come on, attack me. It was only through real battles that problems could be better identified and fixed. Junior brother Aso nodded his head with a hum, and looked at Muyang seriously. At this moment, this junior brother had already entered the state of battle. Perversely decent. Muyang smiled lightly. At his current level, there were a lot of things that he could figure out with a single glance. Especially the lower level martial arts. Muyang was able to detect problems just by looking at their starting positions. Brother, I'm ready. Muyang nodded, let's begin. Yes. At this point, Aso exploded, stepping on the pace to launch an attack towards Muyang. It could be seen that Aso's movements were quite fierce, the stepping was crisp, and without a murmur, it would take at least years of painstaking training to achieve this step. Muyang nodded to himself and moved his body along with it. Aso's attacks were decisive. It could be said that his strikes were clean and not muddy at all. However, his opponent was Muyang, every time he threw a punch, it somehow always seemed to hit a sponge. There was a feeling that the strokes fell short. A few rounds down, not only did Aso fail to attack Muyang, but he consumed most of his physical strength. Don't use all your strength. There are too many unnecessary movements, and physical strength is important, so you don't want unnecessary exertion. Muyang's soft voice was heard in his ears. Suddenly, a light flashed in Aso's mind, as if he had realized something, and as a result, his movements became prolonged. Keep it that way. Your breathing has become a little more even. Ten minutes later, Muyang saw that Aso had met the training requirements and asked him to stop. It's good, that's it for this time. Go back to gain comprehension and adjust your state. Thank you, senior brother. Aso respectfully said. 
Those few words Muyang had just spoken had made him deeply enlightened. Muyang waved his hand, We are brothers, no need to be polite. Aso then walked out of the martial arts venue and went to a corner to comprehend it carefully. Seeing their fellow disciples reaped much, the remaining few fellow disciples couldn't hold back their patience. Yiya, who had spoken to April earlier, came over and he said solemnly to Muyang, Brother Muyang, I want to have a real battle with you. Muyang looked with a smile on his face, Are you sure? The result might be a shock to you. Yuya said seriously, Teacher Clarissa always said that I put too much emphasis on victory and defeat. But I think that only when I have experienced defeat myself can I truly know the difference. Brother, please don't be merciful and let me see the difference between each other so that I can rise to the challenge. Muyang restrained his smile and looked at Yiya, it's good that you have such an awareness, then I'll let you see how much of a difference there is between you and a true expert. After saying that, the smile on Muyang's face disappeared. His entire body emitted an inexplicable aura like a rolling torrent that was endlessly vast and overwhelming. Everyone present turned pale as if they had been crushed by a thousand pounds of weight. Brother Muyang's chi is so powerful. It's about the same as Teacher Isaac. It feels even scarier than Teacher Isaac. It's so powerful. I wonder how many moves senior brother Yiya managed to survive. The disciples were whispering. A few of Muyang's juniors were all staring, watching intently. It was only April who was blinking in hindsight and hadn't felt anything yet. Let's begin. Yiya stepped on his feet. He was slightly short like a running porcupine menacingly attacking towards Muyang. Little did he know Muyang had already seen his movements, and with a shake of his body, all of Yiya's attacks fell short. Hey, what was that? Someone pointed at the shadows in the martial arts venue and yelled. When the others heard the words, they were all stunned for the next second. All they could see were several afterimages that appeared in the place where Yiya had attacked before, vaguely as many as five in a row, which could barely be distinguished, it was Muyang's image. Those were multiple Muyang brothers, yet every one of them seems real. This is called the afterimage technique. It's an image left in place after the body moves at high speed through a special technique. Although these residual shadows have no offensive power, they are perfect for confusing the enemy. Muyang stood to the side and explained. After he finished speaking, his body suddenly accelerated. A dozen more similar afterimages appeared throughout the narrow dojo at once. Compared to those previous afterimages, the ones that appear now were much closer to reality. In funky terms, these afterimages have a higher pixel count and should be in 1080p. Chapter 60 There are 18 shadows right now. Yeah, yeah, can you figure out which one is the real me? It required excellent visual abilities and judgment to find the real body through the afterimage, which wasn't easy for an ordinary martial arts practitioner. Of course, if he could perceive Qi, he could also distinguish the truth from the lie through Qi senses. However, Qi sensing hadn't even been mastered by Muyang, let alone Yiya. Upon facing this strange trick used by his senior brother, Yiya smiled bitterly. He now understood the difference between them. Yiya's face became serious. Since his eyes couldn't tell which one was the real one, he would have to rely on brute strength. Peng peng peng. Yiya swung his fist and attacked fiercely. He was extremely fast, and the dozens of disciples present, including the villagers watching, couldn't see his movements. When Yiya shattered the seventeenth remnant, his face was happy. He clenched his fist and attacked the last one. Wuyu, it was empty. Yiya's fist punched through the last remnant, but the result was the same as before, the fist went right through the remnant's chest. It was another empty one. This one was also false, Yiya's mind screamed. He suddenly felt a hint of trouble. At that moment, Muyang's figure suddenly appeared behind Yiya, raising his palm blade and slashing towards Yiya's neck. One last thing, I want to tell you. Since we're rivals, don't believe anything I say. When I say that I'm among the 18 remnants, 
Do you really believe that? Uh. Yi Ya's eyes rolled back, as Muyang's palm blade landed on his neck. The sudden impact was making him dizzy and faint straight away. Aso, take Yi Ya away. Muyang beckoned to Aso. When Aso brought Yi Ya away, he turned and looked around at everyone and said, Those words earlier were meant for you as well. Always be vigilant when you go out, don't believe everything others say. We understand, senior brother. Understood. All of them had just gone through a realistic version of an education. Everyone nodded their heads in agreement, especially those martial arts practitioners who had made their way outside and knew better that it wasn't an ideal paradise. Him seeing that everyone had taken his words seriously, Muyang nodded his head in satisfaction. If it had been Mexia, she probably wouldn't have been so obedient. After having a word with everyone, Muyang walked out of the martial arts dojo and wandered down the street by himself. Shortly after Muyang left, Yi Ya awoke from his blackout. When he heard his fellow disciple relay Muyang's words, he couldn't help but sigh. Looks like we're far apart from senior brother. Yeah, senior brother Muyang knocked you out with a single hand blade. Ness covered her mouth and laughed. Yi Ya gave her a blank look and said in a bad mood, if it were you guys, it wouldn't be much better. Aso said indifferently, senior brother Muyang's strength is definitely on the same level as several teachers. He may even have truly surpassed everyone in the Heavenly Sky School, just like what the teachers said. Maybe, that's right. The rest couldn't help but be silent. Only April had absolute faith in Muyang's strength. However, she had only practiced martial arts for a few days, so her eyes were dripping. She couldn't understand what some of her brothers and sisters were saying. On the not particularly busy streets, the villagers drove their cattle and sheep across the road, with blacksmith shops and grocery stores on either side. A little further on, there was a restaurant, which was considered a rare place that people used to spend time in the ten-mile countryside. As he walked into the restaurant, he casually found a window seat. When the waiter came up, Muyang ordered a side of fried beans and some meat. The fried beans here were fried in oil and tasted crisp and crunchy, while the meat was brined with special techniques to make it tasty and oily, but not greasy. At this point, Muyang was here to enjoy it. Muyang, it's been a long time since the last time you came here. A sweet female voice sounded, and a girl dressed as a waitress came over with a plate of snacks. The girl had dark blue hair. She was the daughter of the restaurant's owner. Because they used to take Mexia down the mountain for fun, this restaurant was often the place they visited. As time went by, they became familiar with the person in front of them. Sister Marlene, I'm not here to take care of any business. So, please, have a seat. Muyang smiled lightly and pointed down to the seat across from him. Marlene simply sat across from him and smiled, it's been a while. What have you been doing? I went out for a training. Tisk, you've got a great reputation now, the whole village knows you. Marlene was talking about Muyang's achievement of the World Martial Arts Tournament, which was a rare piece of news for the not-so-large village. Muyang nodded proudly and smiled, I even got to meet Mexia on this trip, and that girl is missing her home right now. Speaking of which, Mexia has been away for over three years now. When will she come back? I miss her so much. Marlene's face showed a hint of nostalgia as she thought of Mexia as her little sister. I don't know. It'll be a few years until she finishes her studies, maybe. The two of them chatted like siblings until the restaurant grew crowded with customers, and then Marlene got up to help in the back kitchen. Before she left, Marlene suddenly said for no reason, By the way, when little Mexia comes back in the future, do you have any plans to marry her? According to my sense, you two are quite a good match. She leaned in and whispered, I've heard that several sisters from nearby villages are asking about you. If you don't want to marry little Mexia, talk to me, and I'll find one for you. Muyang was stunned after hearing this, and replied, I won't bother my senior sister about this, you'd better find an heir for your family's restaurant first. 
Hee hee, shame on you. You don't have to tell me, I already found a good man. Did you really find a good man? Of course. Marlene said proudly. Well, big congratulations to you then. So, when are we going to have a wedding treat? Muyang gave his blessing. Soon. So be sure to give me your blessing. Definitely. Muyang nodded, and after Marlene left, he continued to sit alone by the window, enjoying the drink and food. However, what Marlene had just said seemed to have taken root and rippled through his heart for some reason. It had been almost five years since he arrived in this world, and the years to come would be even longer, so it was time to think about it. Well, he considered himself a small success now, so there was certainly no need to worry about that. However, Mexia was a good candidate, she had a good background since she was a child, and the last time he saw her, he thought she was getting prettier every day. Chapter 61 Regarding his future partner, Muyang actually didn't have many thoughts. Two people as a partner, first of all, they must first meet each other. Second, they must feel comfortable with each other, not entangled nor restricted. No one should be a burden to the other, or if they felt I'm okay with you, then it would be enough. It was hard to have a shelf life for passionate love. In the end, when the heat cooled down, it was the blandness of firewood. Then if this blandness remained familiar, as if her scent was the scent of your own body, it was actually the right person to choose. Love and family affection was a thin line apart, and family affection could last longer. At this point, a flexible figure came to mind. Mexia. Muyang smiled slightly as he whirled and frowned. She was a little younger than him. After taking a short break inside the restaurant, Muyang watched through the window as pedestrians on the road carried all kinds of farming tools and set up ox carts and wagons. Some of them were local farmers, while others were passing traders. Thud, putting down the wine glass in his hand, Muyang stood up and walked to the counter to pay the bill. For him, who was currently carrying a huge amount of money, nothing bothered him in terms of money anymore. It should be said that as long as you were a martial arts practitioner, there were countless ways to make money. You could find a treasure trove, exterminate robbers, open a school and teach disciples, or even become a mercenary to uphold world justice. You could have a large source of income and basically wouldn't be trapped by financial problems. Therefore, Muyang wondered why Sun Goku, Krillin, and the others always lived in such poverty. After he continued wandering the streets alone for a while, Muyang entered a blacksmith shop, where the set of weights he used for training was built. Ah, junior brother Muyang, come in and take a look. I wonder what you need this time. The blacksmith shop owner greeted warmly. Boss, you're busy, so I'll just look around. Muyang smiled and nodded to him, then strolled around the shop. This iron shop was stocked with farming utensils and then kitchen utensils like knives and iron pots. A few crossbows were hanging in the corners instead, as well as a few sets of weights for training. As Muyang took it, the owner glanced at him. Muyang didn't expect him not only to be able to use and learn but actually to sell the props he had asked him to build. It was estimated that the blacksmith shop owner had also made a small profit by borrowing this martial arts training style that made him won the World Martial Arts Tournament. After wandering around the shop, Muyang shook his head. These weights made of ordinary metal materials would no longer work for him now. Boss, do you have any metal here that's smaller and heavier? The owner shook his head in embarrassment, Junior brother, we don't have the kind of metal you're talking about in a small place like this. You'll have to look for it in the big city. Muyang nodded and had another polite conversation with the owner before walking out of the shop towards the martial arts dojo. Back at the dojo, the disciples had finished their lunch and were now resting in the backyard. Martial arts practitioners needed to make reasonable arrangements for their training. It wasn't good enough to train all the time, so after lunch, the dojo would arrange a two-hour break for them. Brother, brother. April's delicate and pleasant voice was heard. 
Muyang turned around and saw April sitting under a shade tree in the corner of the dojo facing him and waving, while the young blue dinosaur was lying next to her, napping. April, what are you reading? Muyang saw that she was holding a book in her hand. April spread out the book in her hand, Brother, I'm reading mathematics. Muyang smiled, You can learn these things in class. You've worked hard all morning. You should rest like those senior brothers and sisters. I can't sleep. April curled her lips. Muyang smiled and rubbed April's head with his hand. Children's energy was always high. He didn't know if they were tireless or what. They were making trouble all day long. Compared to other children, April was much quieter and knew how to learn at a young age. By the way, how does it feel to practice martial arts? April's face was bitter, it was so tiring. Muyang smiled, it's okay to be tired, but you have to practice well because it will strengthen your body. Hum April chirped softly. Her attention was then turned to the books in her hands, leaning back against the young blue dinosaur's body to find a comfortable position. Muyang smiled at the sight. He whirled around to stand up and head over towards the other fellow disciples. After Muyang's morning teaching, the dojo's disciples seemed to have found some kind of sense. However, it was a pity that the connection wasn't deep enough, and they were stuck in a layer of mist. So, when Muyang came towards them, they eagerly gathered around, hoping to get the answers they wanted from Muyang. Of course, Muyang knew everything and explained it patiently. After he answered his junior brother's questions, Muyang returned to his room and began his training. With a swoosh, Muyang entered the acceleration space. After he broke the first limitation of his body, the acceleration space's time flow rate had become 4 to 1. The opening time had been strengthened as his strength grew. Now he could maintain opening the acceleration space for 5 hours, which was equivalent to 20 hours inside. In a blank space, a thousand meter radius was filled with a thin layer of qi. As Muyang breathed in the qi filled air, he felt his body was nourished and relaxed. Then Muyang began his training in this vast and boundless space. With a swoosh, the body moved quickly, and the shadow of the man faltered. Another image of himself appeared not far from him, the residual shadow left by the afterimage technique. Heavenly Sky Beam Dancing Air Art Afterimage Technique The various moves were all displayed. The azure-colored light traveled through space, making it colorful for a while. Apart from these few moves, Muyang didn't actually have much involvement in key application. Although there were still some profound things in the Heavenly Sky School's inheritance, it was all theoretical. It hadn't even been figured out by Isaac before. That was why it hadn't been passed on to Muyang. Now that Muyang's strength had already surpassed Isaac's, Isaac had handed over all the inheritance he knew to Muyang some days ago. This was to train Muyang as the next headmaster. According to Isaac, the ancient legacy of the Heavenly Sky School might have originated from the lookout. So for the next move, Muyang was preparing to study it properly. Time flew by, and the days went by like lightning. Half a year had passed in the blink of an eye. During this period, apart from teaching his junior disciples and April in the martial arts dojo, Muyang had spent his time in accelerated space studying the secrets of the Heavenly Sky School inheritance. Of course, in the meantime, Muyang also took the time to attend the wedding of the restaurant owner's daughter, Marlene. She was married to a hunter in the village who had once trained in a martial arts school, so he was pretty skilled. After that, he went to the southern region to see Mexia again. After all, she was the future wife that he had decided to have. So, he had to keep her from being taken away by others. It was necessary to go over there to declare sovereignty without any problem. Of course, it was worth mentioning that this time over, he also got Isaac and his wife's support. In their minds, Perhaps they also decided that Muyang was the most suitable for their daughter to marry even when their daughter was only 14 or 15 years old. After dealing with these trivial matters, Muyang settled down to practice wholeheartedly. 
the Heavenly Sky School inheritance was worthy of being the essence of the lookout. In just half a year, even with the addition of the acceleration space's internal support, Muyang had only comprehended a little. Of course, he had benefited greatly from it, and now if Muyang exerted his full strength, his power level had reached 150 points. It had exceeded Master Rashi so much. It was roughly on the same level as Sun Goku when he killed Mercenary Tao. This half a year could be considered the golden period of the Heavenly Sky School. Not only did Muyang's strength soar, but even a few of his junior disciples had also made full growth. Their power level had reached 40 to 50. Although it wasn't comparable to Muyang, it was actually very powerful. It had already reached the level of those great school rookies. Besides, the disciples who resided in the martial arts dojo were also benefited. Their strength was scuffling up under Muyang's guidance. Chapter 62 One day, after six months, Muyang decided to go out for training again after this submersion period. After all, he wasn't like Sun Goku, who had a special bloodline and could be wretched. Muyang could only keep up his vitality if he traveled more and drew on his knowledge of martial arts to supplement his own. Therefore, after explaining the situation to Yiya and the others, Muyang packed up his bags and prepared to leave. Brother Muyang, I wish you a safe journey. At the entrance of the martial arts dojo, Aso and the others gave Muyang a farewell. Senior brother, when you come back next time, I'll definitely impress you. Brother Yiya said seriously. Ness and April were very reluctant to say goodbye. They kept waving their hands to say goodbye to Muyang, brother, remember to come back and visit often. Muyang almost tripped over and fell. This was a bit strange to say. It felt like he had married someone who lived far away. However, the martial arts training outside was unpredictable. Three to five years might have passed in a flash. It was indeed the same as a daughter who married away and occasionally returned to her mother's house. Don't worry. You guys practice well on your own. Muyang smiled faintly as he waved at everyone. He then leaped into the air and soared straight into the sky with the dancing sky art, quickly disappearing into the vast clouds. In the clear blue sky, Muyang passed through layer after layer of thin clouds and mist. He kept moving forward against the moist vapor, which stuck to his hair's tips and quickly condensed into liquid droplets. There were still quite a few ancient martial arts schools on Earth. They might not be as strong as Muyang, but it's always beneficial to exchange knowledge. Muyang's first stop was the Oran Temple. So, after leaving the Great Azure Mountain, he turned around and rushed towards the Oran Temple. The Oran Temple was located in the Southern Hemisphere. It was a very ancient heritage, just like the Maple Leaf School in the same Southern Hemisphere. Legend had it that the Oran Temple was rebuilt on the foundation of the ancient Shaolin Temple that had burned down. Muyang didn't know whether it was true or not, but he wasn't interested in finding out. However, there was no doubt that Oran Temple was one of the most powerful schools rarely found on Earth, and Master Hulin was a great martial arts master. As a place where Z Fighter Krillin used to stay, the popularity of Oran Temple derived from this. However, it would be fair to say that the impression of Oran Temple was generally not good in Dragon Ball fans' eyes. This, of course, came from the hatred towards Harlequins. Several senior brothers of Krillin, who appeared in the original story, looked more like embroidered pillows that were knocked off the stage after three or two hits. They didn't have much to show, and even the Oran Temple itself was scandalized to some extent. Just after participating in the World Martial Arts Tournament held at Maple Island, Muyang knew that the Oran Temple couldn't be underestimated. There were quite a lot of masters in it. The cold wind whistled, and the seasons changed. A silhouette quickly crossed the sky, as the distant horizon took on a curved shape. Muyang had already arrived not far from the Oran Temple's location, as the quiet mountain forest was already close by. Located on a steep mountain, the Oran Temple was remote and often haunted by fierce beasts. The surrounding area was sparsely populated, with countless dangerous peaks, making transportation very inconvenient. 
The mountain path leading to the Oran Temple was paved with rocks, and it was dug along a cracked rock fault, winding to no end. At the top of that mountain, an ancient and towering temple stood there. My name is Muyang from Heavenly Sky School. I come here to pay my respects. The loud voice spread through the entire mountain with layers of echoes continuously resounding. After a moment of waiting outside, Muyang saw the closed door open. A monk in yellow-colored robes came out. It was Wading who had fought with Muyang at the World Martial Arts Tournament. Ha ha ha, Muyang, what brings you here? Please come in. Wading's spurly body moved to face Muyang and greeted him warmly. Muyang smiled indifferently, like the best ancient inheritance, Oran Temple has always been hidden. I came here today not only to visit Master Hulin, but I also want to get a little gain in terms of training. Wading was surprised, but then he greeted Muyang and led him into the temple. He found a monk and gave him a few instructions. After a year of not seeing each other, Wading found that the gap in strength between himself and Muyang hadn't shortened, but had become even larger. He then said to Muyang, Master is discussing martial arts insight with a few elders, I'm afraid you'll have to wait a little while. In the meantime, I'll take you for a walk around the temple. I hope it's not going to bother you. Muyang nodded lightly. Of course, he didn't object. He then strolled around the Oran Temple under Wadding's guidance. Although Oran Temple was located on the corner of a steep mountain range, the temple's space wasn't small. In addition to the temple for disciples to pray, there was also a large open space in the temple, which was a place for monks to practice martial arts. When Wiang walked past with Wadding, he saw many monks lined up to hone their moves under the martial arts master's command. You have quite a lot of people here. Muyang pointed at the monks in the distance. The monks were neatly lined up in that area, all energetic and vibrant. There were hundreds of them, and the number alone was much greater than the Heavenly Sky School. Wadding smiled and said, These are the newly arrived disciples. Please come this way. Wadding acted as a tour guide as he showed Muyang around, Muyang, how do you practice your techniques? Why do I feel like I have less ability to see through you? In the past, the gap between the two wasn't that big, so how come he couldn't see Muyang's profoundness at all after not seeing each other for a year? If you also go outside to pursue your training and experience, you can also have the same martial arts level as me. Muyang said as he watched, this is the result of my training at the Sacred Land of Korin. Sacred Land of Korin. Wadding was surprised and remembered the name in his heart. As Muyang was strolling around the Oran Temple, Master Hulin came out from the inner hall. When he saw Muyang, a faint and compelling aura suddenly came towards him. Master Hulin felt this astonishing light flashed in his eyes. A look of disbelief appeared on his treacherous face at the same time. This young man, how exactly does he do his training? Compared to when he was at the World Martial Arts Tournament, this young man in front of him was simply a different person in terms of aura and temperament. There was a hint of a master's presence. Master Hulin didn't dare to slow down and went forward hurriedly. Master Hulin, Muyang said calmly. He was a senior the last time they met, but now their identities had been reversed. With Master Hulin's power level was only 105 he could only be considered not bad in front of Muyang's right now. Master Hulin wasn't angry at all at Muyang's calm tone. Instead, he smiled and said incessantly, Junior brother, please come inside. Chapter 63 Strong people always needed to be respected. This was an unchanging truth. Even though Muyang looked very young, his martial arts were already ahead of everyone else. No matter how aloof they were, it was still the dignity of the strong ones. Not only would no one accuse them, but they would take it for granted. Muyang only stayed in the Oran Temple for one day and left on the second day accompanied by Wadding and Master Hulin. In that one day, Muyang fully interacted with Master Hulin and shocked everyone with his astounding strength. Surprisingly, no one in the entire Oran Temple was able to match him. He was so young yet so much stronger than everyone else. 
a whole new legend seemed to be slowly taking shape. And the Oran Temple was just a stop in his path. Looking at Muyang's back as he gradually disappeared between the mountains and forests, Wading was overwhelmed with emotion. The two who were able to fight each other not so long ago, but now he could only admire Muyang. Teacher, I think it's time for me to go out and have some training as well. Wadding's expression was very determined as if he had made some sort of decision. Master Hulin said, Have you thought about where to go? Wadding was silent for a while, but then remembered what Muyang had told him before, Yes, I am preparing to go to the sacred land of Korin. Master Hulin nodded at the words, Well, sacred land of Korin is the origin of martial arts. There is a Korin tower there, you can try to challenge it. Back then, I didn't manage to climb the Koran Tower, so I hope you can succeed. Master Hulin also tried to challenge Koran Tower when he was young. However, with his strength at that time, he fell down halfway up because of physical exhaustion. So, after several unsuccessful attempts, he gave up. Now he pinned his hopes on Wadding's shoulders. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. Wadding clasped his hands together and silently bowed. M.M. looking at Wadding's determined look, Master Hulin recalled his youthful days and smiled. As he looked out over the distant cloud-covered mountains, he was a little lost. On the other hand, after leaving Oran Temple, Muyang continued to visit various schools according to his plan. It wouldn't be an easy task to blend a hundred schools' strengths, and Muyang was ready for a long struggle. Next. He visited the Cross Fist School, which was similar to Heavenly Sky School. There were also many dojos in the area. Muyang came directly to the door. This time he didn't reveal who is he. Instead, he used physical force to fight one on one, pushing the opponent to do his best. It was easy to offend people this way, but the gains were obviously becoming even greater. Muyang didn't care about offending people. That was why the next thing he did was simply and brutally hit the doorstep and learn the best of all. At some point, a rumor began to spread in the martial arts world that a certain mad disciple was challenging all the great schools of martial arts. Several of the schools that were already in the news were all defeated by him, not knowing who he was. At first, everyone thought that the mad disciple wasn't strong enough to win a battle, but gradually, more and more masters were defeated. He defeated even some legendary masters. It only then did they realize that this disciple might be a legend. Muyang's constant challenges had caused all schools to become alarmed and busy closing their doors. They were afraid that they would become the next target. At the same time, many of them also came back to their senses. Something was wrong. If this man was really trying to become famous, why would he hide his identity? It seemed that the rumors were unreliable after all. However, regardless if it was true, it was better not to get involved in this mess. One day, on a beach. The white waves lapped the shore, cracking into tiny splashes of water. Muyang's eyes were slightly condensed, the key in his whole body fused and gathered on his palm. With a new sound, a ball of light appeared on the palm. The bright and flawless color looked as translucent as a night pearl. However, this small ball of key was gathered with most of the key in Muyang's body. After practicing for so long, I've finally managed to build this key ball. Muyang smiled at the corner of his mouth as he looked at the key ball that was buzzing with a piercing sound. Suddenly, his arm shook, and he pushed forward with one hand. Heavenly Sky Beam a surge of key was violently emitted from his waist. The sparkling key ball shook abruptly, transforming into the shape of a crescent moon. It spun and accelerated to its fullest, whooshing straight out along the surface of the sea. The sea's surface boiled with a sudden rush, splitting in half along the path where the heavenly sky beam was flying out. The subtle waves looked like the heat had burned them. It was vaporizing directly under the extremely hot key, accompanied by a blazing ball of fire rising into the sky as the blinding white light wrapped around the furious storm, spreading in all directions. Muyang stood in the storm's sweeping spot, allowing the hurricane to hit him. 
This key attack might be insignificant in the universe, and only equivalent to a normal blow from a martial arts alien. But at this stage on Earth, its power should be no weaker than Mutato's tri-beam, or Thunder Shock Surprise. After watching the sea spray gradually calm down with satisfaction, Muyang took a short break and prepared to leave. Just then, a small boat floated on the sea. There was a figure on top of the boat, shouting at Muyang, Hey, are you the one who just released the key wave? What kind of move was that? Can I see it again? Upon hearing that, Muyang stopped his preparations to leave and swept his gaze towards the small boat. It was an ordinary-looking young man, around twenty years old. He looked similar in age to Muyang. He was carrying a cloth bag bundle behind him and had a remote outfit. However, upon examination, Muyang let out a light sigh as he sensed a slight difference in that person's appearance. Interesting, he doesn't seem to be weak. Muyang's face showed a trace of surprise. The small boat gradually approached. The person on the boat jumped in front of Muyang. After that, regardless of whether Muyang agreed or not, he unexpectedly attacked Muyang directly. Did you just attack me without permission? A cold light flashed across Muyang's face. With a sneer, his palm flew out, grasped the opponent's striking fist, and then threw it with a powerful swing, throwing the opponent out with his belongings. Then his body quickly flickered, rushing to the man before he could hit the ground. As his body floated down, his arm bent, and an iron fist slammed out. Wah! The man shouted wretchedly, but a roar caused his body to pause in the air. Kamehameha! The young man shouted strangely. His palms gathered together, and a beam of shining deep blue light key waves blasted over towards Muyang. Muyang's eyes flashed with surprise but his hands didn't pause. As he was facing the blasted key wave, he immediately transferred his key, his fingers stretched forward, and the faint beam shone slight. Heavenly sky beam. The two key met in the air, rumbling and crashing into a terrifying airfield. The atmosphere shook for a moment, and the key's aftermath turned into an intense whirlwind spreading out. Chapter 64 At this time, Muyang had already roughly guessed the opponent's identity based on his attacking moves. If he combined it with the current era's background, the answer would be even more accurate. Ha, needless to say, this person in front of him must be the Master Rashi's proud disciple, Sun Gohan. However, Sun Gohan had attacked him without permission, which still made him feel very upset. To put it nicely, he must be straightforward, but to put it bluntly, he had no brains and was quite offensive. Did you really think you could just attack people and call it a spar? It was a spar only when both sides agreed. That was why Muyang was ready to teach his opponent a little lesson. After the key wave subsided, Muyang constantly stepped in a void. His body was rapidly approaching Sun Gohan. As soon as Muyang got serious, Sun Gohan couldn't help himself. His body, which was already a bit flimsy from releasing the Kamehameha, could no longer maintain its balance. As Muyang's attack became unsettled, the difficult situation was unbearable. Boom! 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 The waves on the surface of the sea were split apart by a single blow. Sun Gohan's face began to turn pale with astonishment. Muyang's face was expressionless as he fought back and forth with Sun Gohan. He flew into the air, then immediately entering the bottom of the sea, and the whole surface of the sea was being churned up. A little while later, Sun Gohan collapsed on the sand like a dead fish. He was panting, his face bruised and purple, and his clothes were stripped. On the other side, Muyang was much better. Although his face was also a bit pale, his image was much better. Hey, I'm just saying hello to you. You don't have to be so cruel, do you? Sun Gohan cried out as he felt very unlucky. Muyang's face was cold, is that how you greet people, by attacking without asking permission? Sun Gohan chuckled twice, my hands are itchy. I just saw you releasing key waves, so I didn't hold back for a moment. 
I would say that your martial arts skills are not bad. Besides my master, you are the first one to fight me for so long, and you actually defeated me. Humph Muyang snorted and took out his scouter to test Sun Gohan. The data he got was 143. What a great guys, they were all already more powerful than Master Rashi after decades. However, it was still a little bit less compared to his. Sun Gohan was definitely a talented character. In the original story, Sun Goku, who easily defeated Mercenary Tao, was still defeated against Sun Gohan. Although Sun Gohan was aging at that time, his power level was still over 150. This time, he was still very young and wasn't far from his golden age. Upon seeing that Muyang didn't pay any attention to him, Sun Gohan laughed awkwardly, Ha ha ha, I'm Sun Gohan, a disciple of the Turtle School. I'm Muyang from the Heavenly Sky School, Muyang said indifferently. Yeah, are you Muyang, the winner of the last World Martial Arts Tournament? Sun Gohan was surprised, but then he nodded, Hmm, with your strength being as strong as it is, it's reasonable for you to become the winner. It's a pity that my teacher didn't think I needed to participate in the last tournament. Otherwise, I would have met you much earlier. Luckily, you didn't participate last year. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a match for you at all, Muyang said in his heart. His strength had only improved by a huge leap after he had climbed the Korin Tower. A year ago, his power level was only 80, how could he be a match for Sun Gohan? It wouldn't be nice to be tortured back then. Hey, your key just now was so powerful, is it called Heavenly Sky Bram? Can I see it again? Sun Gohan seemed to have a lot to say. His words kept bothering Muyang's ears. Muyang gave him a blank look, do you still want to get beaten up? Sun Gohan smiled and quickly shut his mouth. Anyway, since you're Turtle School's disciple, if you're not training with your teacher, what are you planning to do out here now? Muyang asked. Sun Gohan replied, oh, my teacher thought I was ready to go out so he sent me out to practice on my own. However, shortly after I went out to sea, I saw the key wave you just unleashed, so I rode over here. Oh. Muyang nodded after he figured out that he was the one who had drawn Sun Gohan here. Sun Gohan said he had just started out, so that meant he hadn't planned to settle down in the Mount Baozu yet. Where are you planning to go? Sun Gohan touched his head and said honestly, I haven't thought about it yet. He suddenly thought of something and suggested with interest, however, I have suddenly thought of a good place. Are you interested in going with me to see it? What place? Muyang asked. Fortune Teller Baba Palace. Sun Gohan shouted, I've heard from my teacher before that he has a sister living inside the desert. Fortune Teller Baba knows a lot about the world, and she has five great masters there. I think we can challenge them. Muyang was impressed by the words. Legend had it that fortune teller Baba knew everything about the earth and had the ability to communicate with the other world. Many people would make a special trip to ask her for advice. That was why Muyang was impressed by Sun Gohan's offer. It was just that the masters at fortune teller Baba's place seemed quite average. Are you sure the masters there are great? Sun Gohan was confused at the words, I've heard that there are many other races there, even those from the other world, so it should be very powerful. All right, then, it would be good to go over and take a look. Actually, Muyang wasn't planning to go there, but then he realized no other place could grow his strength on earth except for the lookout. So why not go over to Fortune Teller Baba's palace? Maybe he could gain something. The two of them hit it off and decided to go to Fortune Teller Baba Palace. Fortune Teller Baba Palace was located on top of a dry river. It had once been an oasis, but it turned into a desert all around with the change of climate. When Wiang and Sun Gohan approached the desert, a hot wave of air swept over them. The temperature soared to over 40 degrees. It's just ahead. The two flew ahead according to the map. Soon an oasis appeared in front of them, with a clear lake in the middle. Fortune Teller Baba Palace was in the middle of it, 
with a few coconut trees planted around it. As soon as they stepped into Fortune Teller Baba Palace, the hot air outside disappeared like magic. A pleasant breeze blew in, which felt like a spring breeze. Muyang couldn't help but be shocked. Judging from the changes in the surrounding environment, this fortune teller Baba was indeed good at something. Chapter 65 Hey! After officially stepping onto fortune teller Baba Palace, Muyang and Sun Gohan clearly felt that the air was filled with a mysterious power that they had never seen before. It didn't seem like it was from the earth. Inevitably, Muyang began to look at the fortune teller Baba squarely. It didn't seem like she could live for so many years because she had coincidentally eaten the elixir of immortality. Everyone line up, and don't crowd. If you don't follow the rules, you'll be disqualified. A ghostly thing floated in the air with a pointy hat on its head, directing a group of people at the entrance. Look, it looks like a ghost. Sun Gohan whispered. Muyang took a closer look, what is it? It seems like it's simply a ghost. Fortune teller Baba has the ability to travel between the other world and the world of the living. Her skill is truly remarkable to have a ghost working for her. In the middle of the conversation, Muyang and Sun Gohan walked to the back of the crowd and started to line up. Most of these people who came to Fortune teller Baba Palace were famous and wealthy people worldwide. They were looking for treasure or valuables and wanted to have Fortune teller Baba give them divination. However, no matter how powerful and influential they were, they had to line up and behave properly in Fortune Teller Baba Palace. Look at those two, Tisk, they actually came empty-handed. They really don't know how to be polite. A wealthy man with a suitcase laughed and talked to the next person who was also in line. Yeah, if you dare to come without money, you'll definitely be blasted out by Fortune Teller Baba later. Some others who felt good about themselves laughed disdainfully. They straightened their backs and acted like successful people. Because fortune teller Baba charged a hefty commission for each divination, this wasn't a place where poor people should come. Those who were in line right now were almost all dressed in suits and clanky shoes. Many of them even brought more than one bodyguard with them. Cut it out. You guys don't need to say anything. Maybe people are planning to have their fees waived by fortune teller Baba through the challenge route. A skinny rich man with a crutch sneered out of the corner of his eye. Ha ha ha, with their little arms and legs, they want to pass the challenge too? I don't think anyone in the world could ever pass fortune teller Baba challenge. The reason fortune teller Baba set up the challenge was just to give those poor people some illusions. Ooh. I also saw a two meter tall. Strong man trying to challenge the fortune teller Baba warrior the last time I was here, and guess what? What? It was a complete disaster in the first round. Ha 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 ha. A group of rich people, who were of the same stench, chatted and laughed at each other's jokes. It seemed like they could be superior by making fun of the poor. Those bastards. Anger appeared on Sun Gohan's face. He waved his fist as he planned to go up and beat them up. Muyang looked at them coldly and shook his head gently, don't be impulsive. Why bother with this bunch of trash? Certain people have money to spend anyway. Sun Gohan. What are you talking about, kid? A rich man with a big belly got annoyed. His bodyguards immediately surrounded him. Hey! With a sweep of Muyang's eyes, the cold humming sounded like a thunderbolt exploding in his ears. The rich man's devilish face suddenly turned pale. You, what are you guys waiting for? Go on and teach them a lesson. The rich man yelled in annoyance. However, when he regained consciousness, he suddenly heard a puffy sound, and his bodyguards had all collapsed to the ground. Ah, what are you doing? Don't come here. This is Fortune Teller Baba Palace. The rich man saw Muyang keep approaching. He was scared to death and fell on his ass. Muyang came in front of him and looked at him despicably, didn't you hear what I just said? Some people have money to take, but no life to spend. It seems like it was referring to you. You, want to kill me? The rich man reacted, looking frightened. 
you're the one who jumped out at me. I, the rich man opened his mouth. He was speechless. What? Nothing. The rich man looked at his fallen bodyguard. The other rich men retreated in fear of getting into trouble were in tears. You got a nice case. Muyang suddenly moved his gaze away and pointed at the suitcase on the floor. Sir, since you like this suitcase, I can give it to you. It's not good, is it? Muyang gave him a stern look. Money is a possession outside of my body. It would be my honor for you to see it. The rich man looked righteous, but couldn't hide the guilty sweat on his forehead. If that's the case, then I will not reluctantly to do so. He said and lifted up the suitcase on the ground, heading back to Sun Gohan. He then said to Sun Gohan, Look, there were people who said we were empty-handed earlier. Now that we've stretched our muscles a bit, we have everything, don't we? Ha, it's pretty heavy, Muyang said as he shook the box in his hand. Beads of sweat appeared on Sun Gohan's forehead, You just told me not to be impulsive, why did you rush out yourself? Stupid, I'm telling you not to be impulsive because I'm afraid you're going to beat them up, but don't get anything back. When you think about it, wouldn't that be a real loss? You have to think about everything, and impulsiveness won't solve the problem. Sun Gohan suddenly came to his senses and slapped his head, so that's why. Okay, I understand now. A naive boy. Ugh, you people. Can you please stop arguing at my door? An old sigh came from an old woman in a black witch's uniform sitting on top of a crystal ball floated over. Her wrinkled face drooped somewhat, looking like a ghost from a distance. Fortune teller Baba, help me, please. These two insolent people are trying to provoke the rules you have laid down. They are also stealing the gifts I was going to mourn you in your palace. Seeing fortune teller Baba appeared, the rich man, acting as if he had found a savior. He immediately crawled over. Fortune teller Baba ignored his cries and waved her hand to call guards, someone, drag him away. I don't want this guy here, and the ones next to him, throw them out. Fortune teller Baba, I'm not breaking any rules, please let me go. The several rich men who opened their mouths to taunt earlier suddenly turned pale as they begged for mercy. However, the guards wouldn't listen to them. They picked them up directly and threw them out into the desert. The hot sand suddenly burned those rich men's snot and tears, and they had no choice but to run away in disgrace. Muyang was now staring at that old woman. To be exact, he was staring at the large crystal ball beneath her. It looked like a crystal ball on top of Korin Tower. She is Master Rashi's old sister, fortune teller Baba. A huge figure in the universe called Master Zuno emerged in Muyang's mind. Master Zuno knew everything in the universe, while fortune teller Baba knew everything on Earth. You two boys are very disrespectful. Well, you're the disciple of that Rashi guy, fortune teller Baba looked at Muyang and Sun Gohan and immediately knew a lot. Never mind, you two come with me. As if she had already seen their intentions. Fortune teller Baba didn't ask any more questions. She turned and walked towards the palace. Muyang and Sun Gohan looked at each other and followed her. Wu. It's a good thing we didn't talk much before, or else we would have been disqualified from the divination like those people. After a few people disappeared, the other rich men in line shook their heads in fear. They were glad that they hadn't been as talkative as the ones before. The people who came here were either seeking wealth or looking for opportunities to grow. None of them wanted to lose their chance. Yet, yeah, if I get disqualified, I won't be able to find the underground gold mines. Nellius has lost a lot. The mine in his possession has not yet been contemptible, so it must belong to me. Chapter 66 While the people outside were talking, Fortune teller Baba brought Muyang and Sun Gohan to a ring above the lake's center. Boy, you two are going to challenge my warriors. Hey, there aren't much more powerful earthlings above your level anymore, but you guys have me here. Fortune teller Baba laughed, her husky voice a little creepy, 
if you can defeat two of my warriors here. I'll do a free fortune telling for each of you. Muyang was stunned and asked, don't you have to defeat five people? Fortune teller Baba looked at him with a sour expression, there are only two. I don't have that many experts here. It was still hard for me to find them. Ordinary experts are meaningless to you, even if I have two or three more. That was right, Muyang nodded his head. Let's make an agreement beforehand. Even if you guys succeed in the challenge, I'll only give you one fortune telling. So you can't rely on this challenge to keep me giving you fortune telling. Fortune teller Baba had set up the rules of the challenge just to add a little fun. She was never thinking of giving free fortune telling for people. She is such a person who sees money as life. After listening to fortune teller Baba's words, Muyang had a clearer understanding of her greedy character. She and her siblings, Master Rashi, were really strange. One was greedy for money, and the other was lustful. In addition, Master Shen and his brother Mercenary Tao were sinister and vicious. These four people who had lived long lives, none of them were normal. Fortune teller Baba, the guests have come. At this moment, the ghost man next to her walked closer. Fortune teller Baba nodded her head and said, My guests are already here, so don't be surprised later. After saying that, fortune teller Baba glanced at the palace entrance, as two figures came out of that passage. One of them was not very tall and had a white beard. However, what attracted people's attention, in particular, was that red woo printed on his chest. As for the other man, he looked like an old man, but his body was covered with wonderful ripples, which made it hard to see his face. Are these the masters that fortune teller Baba was talking about? How could they be two old people? Sun Gohan could clearly see the two of them and was really worried that he might accidentally kill them. Don't be careless. We might lose over them today. Muyang looked condensed since those two people came out. Sun Gohan was very surprised at what he heard, What, you mean we can't beat them? Muyang nodded, look at the light circling their heads. That's the sign of the other world people. Sun Gohan sucked out a breath of cold air, you're saying those two old men are dead? Yes. Muyang's gaze swept over those two people. He had already guessed the identity of the one with the Red Wu character on his chest. If he wasn't mistaken, that person should be Mutato, who had personally sealed the great demon King Piccolo over 250 years ago. As for the other person, he was even more mysterious, and Muyang couldn't guess at the moment. Hey, when he was young, the great demon King Piccolo had almost 260 power levels, and Mutato was no match for him. That was why it was only through painstaking training of the evil containment wave that Mutato could seal him off. But then again, Mutato power level that time was over 200, to say the least. Saving the Earth was his great achievement. After entering the other world, Muatato had also retained his physical body and could still continue to practice in the other world. However, after 250 years of hard training in the other world, where there were so many powerful people, how much Mutato's strength had grown. Muyang couldn't estimate. The next battle would be fascinating and exciting. Upon thinking of this, Muyang's blood was faintly boiling. Haha, it looks like someone has already recognized us, Mutato. That old man who was standing beside Mutato said gently. Mutato smiled and looked at the two young men not too far away, that young man is called Muyang, right, his eyesight is indeed good. Fortune teller Baba sat in a crystal ball and floated up to the two men. I'm tired, Mutato said softly. Fortune teller Baba said politely, no problem. Don't worry about it. In front of her, the old man was the teacher of her younger brother, Master Rashi, who was also considered her teacher. Also, Fortune teller Baba had a close relationship with Mutato's daughter, Wu Fanfan, back then. So in every aspect, Mutato could be considered her elder. Kid, you're a disciple of Turtle School, so your opponent is Grandmaster Mutato. Do well, and don't let anyone down. 
Fortune teller Baba floated back to the center of the ring and said to Sun Gohan. Mutato. Sun Gohan pronounced the name confusedly. He felt the name was somewhat familiar. Suddenly, as he remembered who Mutato was, he pointed at Mutato with his trembling fingers, Are you Master Mutato, the one who sealed the great demon King Piccolo? That's correct. You're Rashi's disciple, right? It's great. You're not as jumpy as Rashi, but your strength has completely surpassed him, even me. When I was your age, I wasn't even comparable to you. Mutato laughed lightly. Overall he was very satisfied with Sun Gohan. After all, Sun Gohan was still young. Upon hearing Mutato praise him, his entire body stiffened and stammered, Grand Master. Grand Master, you're too kind. Mutato waved his hand, all right, aren't you going to challenge the warriors here? Now I'll be your opponent, put out your full strength, don't worry about hurting me. I can handle that strength of yours. Yes, yes. Sun Gohan nodded his head repeatedly and said yes loudly. His opponent was Grandmaster Mutato. Winning or losing had become unimportant. He was sure he could learn a lot from this battle. Fortune teller Baba, Grandmaster Mutato is a figure from over 200 years ago. It wouldn't be such a coincidence for him to be here today, did you know we would come over? As Sun Gohan prepared to fight Mutato, Muyang walked up to Fortune teller Baba's side. Souls from the other world could only return to the world of the living for one day. Muyang felt that no matter how lucky he was, he wouldn't just happen to stumble upon the day when Mutato returned to Earth. The only explanation was Fortune Teller Baba prearranged these. Just like in the original story, when Sun Goku met Sun Gohan. Fortune Teller Baba laughed, and her slump skin squeezed together even more creepily. There are only very few things on this planet that this old woman doesn't know about. Isn't it exactly what you wish to get when you want to fight a powerful person? Did you really arrange this? Muyang was stunned. What? Don't you trust fortune teller Baba skills? I also know that you killed mercenary Tao with your own hands six months ago. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. I'm not fond of those two crane school brothers, either. Fortune teller Baba said aside. Muyang nodded. As long as this matter wasn't exposed, it wouldn't attract Master Shen. Then a sudden flash of clarity flashed through his mind. He looked at the old man beside him. Since Master Mutato was Sun Gohan's elder, then the one next to him, could it be he was the elder of Heavenly Sky School? It just so happened that the old man also turned his attention to him. Muyang was shocked, but he quickly smiled. Chapter 67 With a doubt arose in his heart, Muyang looked at the old man beside him, and the feeling became completely different. He didn't care about it before, but now he seemed to see something familiar in that old man when he looked again. Could he really be an elder of the Heavenly Sky School? Muyang pondered. However, he knew that this was by no means a bad thing when he thought about it. Somehow, facing his school's ancestor, even if the ancestor were already dead, his brain was a little numb. Forget it. I didn't want this. Turning his attention to the martial arts ring, by now, Sun Gohan was standing side by side with Mutato. They were both in fight mode. At this moment, the atmosphere on the ring was extremely oppressive. It was as if an invisible cyclone surrounded the two of them in a trance, causing them to become somewhat misty. There was a slight tremor in the air. Neither of them on the martial arts ring took the lead to attack first. Muyang saw Sun Gohan's body start to move constantly, as if looking for an angle to attack, and yet after some time passed, there was no movement. There was even sweat seeping out from Sun Gohan's forehead. He is truly worthy of being Grandmaster Mutato. This composure is simply unmatched. On the martial arts ring, Sun Gohan was panicking. Whenever he met Mutato's seemingly smiling eyes from the opposite side, he had the feeling that Mutato had seen all of his moves, causing him to wonder where to start. Across from him, Mutato looked calm. 
he was always smiling calmly, and with an unruffled face, he turned his body as Sun Gohan shifted. Before the battle had even begun, Sun Gohan was in a predicament. The difference between the two of them is too big. Muyang looked at it seriously. It would be impossible to perceive Mutato's key strength. From what Muyang saw, Mutato's strength and martial arts knowledge were far above Sun Gohan's. This battle would be a tough one for Sun Gohan. Hey! After stagnating for a while, Sun Gohan finally decided to attack. At the same time, Mutato's body started to move just as Sun Gohan attacked him. Then the crackling and fierce sounds of fighting were heard continuously. The rocks on the ground started to crack, bursting out small stones in the surroundings. Click! Click! The two flashes of light collided and staggered apart. With every pause, they exploded into a strong cyclone that blew the surrounding lake into waves. This was a relatively advanced fight. The ordinary martial arts practitioner could no longer see their movements. Luckily, no one present was an idler. Muyang's eyes kept rotating, his vision following Sun Gohan and Mutato's movements constantly switching angles. Sun Gohan's start was good, but the next situation is detrimental. Muyang looked focused, his eyebrows furrowed slightly. Sun Gohan had used all of his strength on the martial arts ring. All sorts of strange tricks were being used endlessly. However, facing every Sun Gohan's attacks, Mutato seemed as if he had predicted it. His figure shifted slightly to dodge them, not to mention that he was using Sun Gohan's key to counterattack. Upon searching for the straightness in the curve, accumulated and then released it, this technique called borrowing the strength to strike people and using it to move a thousand pounds with four twists. The whole process was easy and effortless, giving people an indescribable enjoyment. Pang! 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 There were rumbling sounds of breaking and crashing alternated with each other, coming in rhythm like a music performance. It was like time had lost its meaning over them at this moment. The two often engaged in dozens of battles in the blink of an eye. From time to time, the ground and the air shone with a blinding light, as if there were countless fists intertwined with each other. Fortune teller Baba smiled, it's been many years since I've seen such an exciting battle. Today is a rare occasion. Next to her, the old man named Noah gazed at the ring and said calmly, that young man named Sun Gohan is very good, but unfortunately, he is a bit young. His strength alone is not enough to face Mutato. Muyang nodded, agreed. From the beginning of the battle until now, he also saw some doorways. The battle on the ring was intense. In fact, Sun Gohan had fallen into Mutato's rhythm. This was quite scandalous in a battle. Once the rhythm was lost, it was extremely easy to fall into a beneficial opponent's situation. Both mental and physical energy would be consumed at an accelerated rate. If he couldn't break free and wrestle back, he wasn't far from losing. Seeing this, Muyang sighed. He knew Sun Gohan couldn't win. Compared to Mutato, Sun Gohan was far behind in both experience and strength. He then thought, what would be the result if he were in Sun Gohan's place? I'm going to lose. This answer was undoubted which also made Muyang silent. Even after so many years of training, his strength was only a notch above Sun Gohan's, and to be honest, he really had never experienced such a top-level battle. In other words, if he were to face Mutato himself, it would be the same situation. Well, he was worthy of being a Grandmaster Mutato. The fact that he continued to practice even in the other world was compelling. The battle between the two men on the martial arts ring had reached its climax. Each of them displayed their best moves. Kamehameha! Sun Gohan shouted and launched the key wave in his hand. Mutato was surprised but smiled when he faced the furiously sweeping Kamehameha as if he hadn't used his real power throughout. He only took a step backward, placed both hands gently in front of him, and sipped lightly. Try beam! Correspondingly, more majestic ki than Kamehameha rose into the sky. In front of the terrifying tri-beam, Sun Gohan's Kamehameha was like a weak kindergarten child. 
The tribeam attacked Sun Gohan and instantly devoured the Kamehameha, while the Ki continued to approach him. When Sun Gohan saw this, his face turned pale. He gritted his teeth to make another desperate move. He roared, thunder shock surprise. Wow, a flash of electric light flickered for a moment, an endless pale golden light wrapped around Sun Gohan's palm, probing over towards the tri-beam. Okay. There are two strikes. Mutato's eyes glowed, then shouted, then watch this move. A beautiful arc was seen as his palm turned in the void and pushed forward across the sky. The power of the tri-beam was suddenly strengthened by several times. Sun Gohan's heart ached. The thunder shock surprises Ki directly dissipated, and his entire body was now blasted away. Sun Gohan flipped over a dozen times in the air continuously. He landed in a mess, and at this point, Mutato appeared behind him. Sun Gohan had lost. Seeing this, Muyang shook his head regretfully. In his heart, however, he was satisfied. Although he already knew that the end of this fight was doomed, the process was still breathtaking to watch. Mutato had his hands behind his back and smiled, Kid, you've even learned the Thunder Shock surprise. The key wave you just used is a great technique invented by Rashi. The move is not bad. It's just a pity that the key force is a bit low. Sun Gohan smiled bitterly and said, Grand Master, I've lost. I'm not a match for you at all. Ha ha ha, don't underestimate yourself. I've been practicing only a few hundred years more than you. As soon as Sun Gohan heard that, he would definitely reach this level if he were to practice for a few hundred years. He then regained his confidence on his face and politely bowed towards Mutato. All right, Grand Master Mutato wins this fight, Sun Gohan, you stand aside first. Fortune Teller Baba announced the results of the match, then shifted her eyes to Muyang's side. The old man named Noah nodded and said, It's our turn to play. Chapter 68 Upon hearing this, Muyang nodded solemnly in his heart and leaped forward onto the martial arts ring. Muyang didn't dare to be reckless in dealing with this mysterious old man. Therefore, from the moment he climbed onto the martial arts ring, he fought with all his strength. The whirlwind suddenly rose and surrounded his body. However, in front of Muyang clinging spaddle intent, this old man, Noah, had his hands behind his back. He made no preparations and was as calm and relaxed as Mutato, showing a faint smile. Awesome! Lightly glancing towards his opponent, Muyang's eyes shrank sharply. Just from that clouded attitude, he was filled with a confident style of a martial arts practitioner. With a slight frown on his brow, Muyang deliberated on the timing of his attack. Suddenly, his body leaned forward slightly, and his toe muscles trembled. He exerted a sudden force, cracking the blue and white stone slab beneath his feet with two radiating fractures, and the fine stones flew out abruptly. With this strength, Muyang dived at high speed, attacking Noah, who was not far away. Wow, his body shot out like lightning leaving behind a long afterimage. After that, he raised his fist, the tip of his fist against the air resounded with a muffled sound. Ha ha, come on! Upon facing Muyang's menacing attack, Noah moved his body. His figure swooshed and disappeared as Muyang's attack fell. He reappeared on Muyang's side and threw his palm over as if it was covering the sky. That was fast. Muyang was shocked. His eyes popped out with a brilliant light. He was quickly changing direction to defend his opponent's attack. The purpose of the offense is to react at this critical moment. A little slow, Noah smiled. A pair of arms that didn't look like a palm of an old man stuck out, and suddenly seemed enchanted. Muyang was horrified to find that his opponent's hands unexpectedly carried over his body. Then a palm slapped out. Muyang couldn't dodge it and was struck in the chest with a thud. His chest was in pain, and his body sliced through a beautiful arc in the air. In the air, Muyang hurriedly opened his arms. His body violently vibrated. The powerful strength spread out, 
causing his body to stagnate in the air before leaping downwards and landing back on the ring. Young man, your eyesight is still not good enough. You need to practice. As soon as the words fell, Noah disappeared once again. At this time, Muyang's entire body emitted a bright light. His fist wrapped around a stream of ki. He turned around and fiercely struck in one direction. With a muffled thud, Muyang's fist was taken by a palm. Hee <laughs> hee, not bad with the improvement, but still not enough. The old man named Noah praised as his next attack became even more fierce. Swish, swish, swish. Muyang even flashed his body to avoid Noah's attack. This Noah guy looked dry and thin, with a pale face, but the way he fought wasn't like an old man at all. The waves of attacks came one after another, like a wolf and tiger, constantly roaring and shrieking. Several flashes in a row, making Muyang's forehead seep sweat. He retreated one after another, withdrawing dozens of meters in a row. Still, Noah pursued him relentlessly, not giving him any time to rest. Heavenly Sky Beam Muyang looked gloomy and gave a sullen sigh. As he raised his hand, a crescent-shaped key wave swung out. The thin air blade shined with radiant light and attacked towards Noah. When Noah saw it, the corners of his eyebrows furrowed, and the same attack came over. Heavenly Sky Beam A beam of light pierced through the void and crashed frontally on top of Muyang's Heavenly Sky Beam. The atmosphere above boiled up, spreading endless gales in all directions. Sure enough, it's the Heavenly Sky School's technique. Muyang subconsciously narrowed his eyes. However, he couldn't care about that at this point. Tuck tuck tuck, the two of them were soon battling again after a collision. Only to see two short streaks of light and shadow on the martial arts ring kept clashing, and a shuddering drumbeat shocked the mind. Muyang looked heavy. His eyes were swirling with his opponent's trajectory, and he struck when he saw an opportunity. One punch, two punches, three punches, bang bang bang, swish. When the fist struck the martial arts ring, the sand flew away, and a huge pit appeared on the flat martial arts ring. It was like a thunderous rumble. Not bad. It's a powerful and ruthless shot, but that alone isn't enough. Noah took the iron fist blasted by Muyang over and over again with a smile on his face, making comments from time to time. Okay, awesome. Sun Gohan gulped, unable to see what was happening in the ring anymore. So this is Muyang's true strength. He was merciful before. I don't know who that person across from him is, but he isn't a match even for Muyang. Sun Gohan looked horrified as he spoke with a shaky voice due to astonishment. When he had met with Muyang on the beach, Sun Gohan thought that Muyang was only a little more powerful than him. However, after watching the current battle, he realized how much of a difference it was. Muyang's ki may only be a little higher than his, but whether it was his fighting skills or his grasp of timing, he was far above him. Maybe if he really fought with Muyang, he'd be spiked in a few shots. Sun Gohan swallowed his saliva, his scalp felt a little numb. How exactly did he train himself? Hee <laughs> hee, that young man called Muyang is deeply aware of Korin's essence. He will surpass me in no time. Mutato lamented beside him. Sun Gohan asked, Grand Master, is Korin you are talking about is the immortal who lives above the Korin Tower? You mean... Muyang had received guidance from immortal Korin. Mutato nodded, that's right. If you have time, it would be good for you to go to the Korin Tower as well. As he said that, Mutato was somewhat nostalgic. He seemed to recall the scene when he was training hard on the Korin Tower to practice the evil containment wave. Sun Gohan nodded and took Muyang's words to heart. He then returned his attention to the martial arts ring again. At this time, on top of the martial arts ring, Noah had already seen Muyang's background and nodded, It's okay, I already know your strength. To be able to reach this level at this age, you've already met my requirements. Muyang took the opportunity to ask, Are you the senior of the Heavenly Sky School? 
Although he had doubted in the beginning that this old man in front of him could be a senior in his own school, it wasn't until the old man used his heavenly sky beam that he's sure that Noah was the senior of the heavenly sky school. Oh, you could say that I'm the heavenly sky school senior, but I'd rather you call it the Kami school. Noah smiled. Muyang was astonished, Kami school. Yes, Kami school. Just when Muyang was surprised, Noah shook his head, as for why it's called that, I think you'll know soon enough. In the meantime, I'll let you see the real gap between you and the strongest. As soon as the words fell, Noah's look became serious. He then stopped playing with Muyang. His figure suddenly flickered, disappearing directly from Muyang's sight. Chapter 69 Is he gone? Outside the ring, Sun Gohan wiped his eyes. Master Noah is finally making his move. Mutato's expression was severe. Even Mutato had to address him as master, so it was easy to imagine how great this guy named Noah was. Muyang was busy observing the surroundings, looking for signs of his opponent. However, his opponent seemed to have disappeared with complete invisibility. No matter how hard Muyang searched, he was unable to find his tracks. Senior Noah couldn't have left this ring. He must still be near the martial arts ring. Muyang was cautiously on guard. Since there was nothing around, he could only be in the sky. As soon as this thought crossed from the bottom of his mind, Muyang's eyes hurriedly looked towards the sky. There was none. Apart from a few white clouds in the clear sky, there wasn't a trace of Noah at all. Where on earth had he run off to? Muyang's brain was spinning fast. Suddenly, an old voice sounded in his ears, Young man, I'm here. There was a movement in the void, and Noah's figure suddenly flashed out. Muyang was horrified, he suddenly realized that Senior Noah hadn't actually disappeared. He had been standing right where he was. He was clearly standing right in front of him. He had just been shrouded in a very mysterious atmosphere that made people unconsciously ignore his presence. At this time, Muyang thought of those profound legacies of the heavenly sky school that Isaac had handed over to him, and his mind was suddenly enlightened. This was the heavenly sky school's use of spiritual power, which was also different from the public's training. The martial arts on earth focused on the training of Ki, and other schools were simply practicing Ki. Perhaps Turtle School and Crane School had a spiritual practice portion because they had inherited the Mutato's martial arts, but they were very superficial. Only the Heavenly Sky School had a completely different understanding of Ki, emphasizing spiritual practice and Ki training. At that time, he still wondered if Heavenly Sky School was overly concerned with essence, which led to an over-interpretation of Ki striving for perfection to the point where it was stuck in a narrow alley, nitpicking and unable to extricate itself. Now, it seemed that I was still too young and N.A., V.E. at that time. The Heavenly Sky School wasn't going down the wrong path, but the other people just couldn't understand its depth because they couldn't see the flowers in the fog. Muyang suddenly laughed, so there's still this kind of use of spiritual power. When he thought about it carefully, he should be grateful to the Heavenly Sky School's training. Wasn't it because of the Heavenly Sky School's training that he was able to open the acceleration space? After he figured this out, Muyang's face showed a hint of excitement. He then calmed down and put what he had learned into action, darting over towards Noah with a flash. Noah smiled and shook his head. He stretched out a finger, flicked it in the void, and pounced on it. Although it didn't make contact, Muyang's entire body flew backward. As soon as he landed, Muyang rubbed his forehead, which had been flicked by Noah's fingers, and dived again to accelerate. Noah cut an arc again. This time, Muyang was even worse, he was directly bounced outside the martial arts ring. After falling outside of the ring, Muyang suddenly thought of Mr. Popo on the lookout for some reason. The person in front of him had an extremely similar attack technique to Mr. Popo, both were hitting people lightly. In the original Dragon Ball story, Mr. Popo's character was afraid that he was the most severely overlooked supporting character. Alright, let's end it here. After saying that, 
Noah nodded towards Fortune Teller Baba. Fortune Teller Baba got the message and floated to the center of the martial arts ring with her crystal ball, Oh my, Muyang and Sun Gohan. You all failed the challenge, so it seems that I can't give you any divination. Muyang jumped up from underneath the martial arts ring and asked, Fortune Teller Baba, may I ask them? These two are indeed your seniors. Needless to say, Grand Master Mutato is Master Rashi's master, and as for Master Noah, Fortune Teller Baba looked towards the white-haired Noah, her eyes filled with respect, this one is the master and the founder of your school. He is also the previous Kami. The founder of the Heavenly Sky School? The previous, Kami. Fortune Teller Baba's words fell on Wiang's heart. It was like throwing a boulder at a lake, creating huge waves in his heart. The founder of the Heavenly Sky School was actually a Kami? The sudden news startled Muyang. There were only a few information about the previous Kami throughout the story, which was only mentioned in the current Kami words. This was because the previous Kami saw an evil thought within the son of name Kian Katas, which eventually split the great demon King Piccolo and caused the catastrophe 250 years ago. However, Muyang didn't dare to delude himself by connecting the previous Kami to his school. However, he knew that a senior of his school had once lived in the lookout, either as a disciple of the Kami or, as the Kami himself. Based on the impression that the Heavenly Sky School was decadent. Muyang was, of course, more inclined to the former being able to climb up to the lookout and receive training from the Kami was a legend in the Earth's martial arts world. This was more consistent with the common people's logic. How could they dare to go one step further and covet the throne of the Kami? However, the news he received now was so hefty. How could it not surprise him? Muyang asked in shock, You are the founder of the Heavenly Sky School. Noah, no, the previous Kami nodded, Yes, the Heavenly Sky School was indeed created by me to select a new Kami. Unfortunately, in the end, no one was able to meet my requirements. No wonder he was willing to call the Heavenly Sky School Kami School. It was because he was a Kami himself, and the purpose of creating the Heavenly Sky School was to select a new Kami. It's unbelievable. Muyang shook his head emotionally. Sun Gohan was now dumbfounded. He then asked Mutato, Grand Master, are there really Kami in this world? Muetato said, yes, there is an even more sacred place above Korin Tower, which is the lookout. You can go there to practice later. Then, the previous Kami, Noah, shouted and threw an object towards Muyang and Sun Gohan's side. It was a bell, which Muyang subconsciously caught. He took and saw it was a string of delicate bells. Kami Noah said, I know you have already passed the Korin Tower's test. This is a token to go to the lookout. If you take it to Korin Tower, he will send you to the lookout. As for the young man next to you named Sun Gohan, he can temporarily practice on Korin Tower for a while. Am I qualified to go to the lookout now? Muyang asked. He had previously received a promise from the Korin that he would be allowed to go up to the lookout to practice whenever he was suitable. Now that he had Kami Noah's approval, he could ascend the lookout at any time. Was this the benefit of having a supporting background? His own ancestor, a former Kami, was he giving him a backdoor? Noah smiled, you are qualified. Only the training on the lookout can help you. This universe is so big, the earth is like a drop in the ocean. We, earthlings, have limited potential. It is bound to take a lot more than just uncovering and developing good seedlings. Muyang thought deeply. In the entire universe, the earthlings' physical strength could only be described as weak. However, he possessed the acceleration space as his cheating tool. He was always walking on thin ice, fearing that his strength would be stagnant one day. Grand Master, and Senior Kami, did you come to Earth this time to test us? Sun Gohan, who was beside him, soothed in shock and asked. Chapter 70 Yes, as far as I know, people from the other world can't easily come to the world of the living. Even if they do, it's only for a day. 
Muyang said, as his eyes looked towards fortune teller Baba. He had learned that Mutato and Kami Noah could come to the world of the living because of her. So, was the purpose of their special trip is really to test their junior's strength? At that moment, fortune teller Baba said, Hey, it's all thanks to me. I had brought them here. Sun Gohan asked strangely, Fortune teller Baba, why did you do that? Oh, it's a foretelling. Fortune teller Baba jumped down from the top of her crystal ball, because I've been dreaming of strange things lately, which might be a bad premonition. I went to the other world to seek answers. It just so happened that I ran into Grandmaster Mutato and Kami Noah at that time, so I invited them to come with me to the world of the living. Fortune teller Baba's ability to enter and leave the other world was considered an inheritance. She was very popular in the other world herself. She would often go into the other world to serve as a guide for others there. Legend had it that her abilities were related to Anon from the Mount Five Element, the closest place to the other world. Even fortune teller Baba's crystal ball might have come from there. Fortune teller Baba, what was that unpleasant vision you were talking about? Muyang recalled the details of the original story. The only disaster on Earth before the story started was when great demon King Piccolo dominated the world. However, that was more than 250 years ago. It was long past, and there wasn't any other disaster after that until the beginning of the story. Fortune teller Baba shook her head, I'm not sure about that, maybe it's my illusion. Muyang nodded his head lightly and didn't ask any further questions. Kami Noah then took up fortune teller Baba's words, at that time, Mutato and I happened to haven't been back to the world of the living for hundreds of years. We wanted to come back to visit. When fortune teller Baba extended an invitation to us, we agreed and asked fortune teller Baba to perform a fortune telling to choose the day you came specifically. All right, we only have one day. So, as your ancestors, we should teach you some things that you must remember. With that, Kami Noah and Mutato looked at each other. Fortune teller Baba smiled as well and returned to the main hall with her ghostly servant, giving Kami Noah and Mutato time. Gohan, you come with me. Mutato waved towards Sun Gohan. Sun Gohan ascended respectfully at the words, Yes, Grandmaster Mutato. Mutato then led Sun Gohan under a coconut tree next to the ring to teach him his own martial arts techniques alone. He was leaving the other side of the ring for Kamu Noah and Muyang. After Mutato left, Kami Noah was silent for a while, then opened his mouth to introduce the universe's basic situation to Muyang. There are countless living planets in the universe we live in. Earth is just one of the very weak ones. The people of Earth are inherently weak, so their potential cannot be compared to other races. This is an inherent difference. The heavenly sky is a training technique that I created after becoming a Kami. It aims to improve the physical strength of the earthlings in addition to choosing a new Kami. Unfortunately, it still has many obvious shortcomings compared to the popular training technique in the world, so it has only been spread on a small scale. Muyang listened attentively. This was probably why only the small group of people from the Great Azure Mountains Heavenly Sky School practiced this technique. Kami Noah then analyzed the heavenly sky's wonders a little bit and passed down a brand new training technique. Muyang felt a sudden burst of thatch and figured out many things that he couldn't understand before. The heavenly sky school's training technique was more particular about physical training compared to the training techniques of the turtle school and crane school. Its main idea was to conceive and nourish the body and replenish the vital energy, instead of paying much attention to the power level. It was only now that Muyang realized that this training technique had been created by the last Kami of the lookout Kami Noah to improve the physical strength of earthlings. According to innate talent, the races in the universe were divided into low-level race, middle-level race, and high-level race. Earthlings were only the very slightest of low-level races. According to the classification of planets in the universe, Planets with the highest power level below 1000 were classified as low-level planets. Those with the highest power level between 1000 and 10,000 were middle-level planets, 
and those with the highest power level above 10,000 were high-level planets. Low-level races naturally referred to the races that lived on top of low-level planets. The highest power level of these races would not exceed 1,000 when they reached adulthood. However, like Earthlings, the single-digit power level was so shabby that it was saddening. Of course, low-level planets and low-level races still made up the majority of the universe. The number of middle-level and high-level races wasn't much, and could even be said to be quite rare. This might be a balance mechanism that exists in the universe between the other world and the world of living. Usually, this kind of race with a very low power level will occupy an absolute advantage in population, with billions of people. Kami Noah had seen a race with a power level of only one in the other world. Their number was terrifyingly high, reaching hundreds of billions of people. On the other hand, the higher the power level of those races, the more sparse their population was, just like the Scions, whose entire race did not add up to much, or the Frisia clan, which was even more pitiful, almost on the verge of extinction. Compared to those terrifying races that were born with the power to destroy the universe, the individual strength of the earthlings was too weak. Since entering heaven, Kami Noah had broadened his horizons considerably. As he saw the various powerful races in the universe. It was a shame to look back at his earthlings, whose power level had generally only been in the single digits throughout their lives. The development of the heavenly sky school training technique is not perfect yet. I have tried to perfect it for the past few hundred years that I have been in heaven, but the results have been limited. At this point, Kami Noah's old face revealed a trace of helplessness. Although the heavenly sky school training technique had been perfected by him to fit the earthling's life characteristics as much as possible, it still couldn't fundamentally enhance the earthling's physical strength. In his estimation, even if the brand new heavenly sky school training technique was spread out, it would only raise the earthling's power level miserably under 5 to 20, which was considered the best effect. Kami Noah looked at Muyang, you are the heir to the heavenly sky school. Perhaps even the best heir in all these years. I hope that you can go on and continue to pioneer the heavenly sky school. I want to eventually see it finally evolve to become the Kami school. Kami Noah hoped was to make earthling's power level surpass the 100 mark. Although this still couldn't shake off a low-level race identity, it was a great improvement compared to before. Muyang sighed at the words, I'll try my best. Muyang couldn't give promises, as he didn't have such grand ambitions in mind. He was just a mere mortal, and minding his own business was enough. When he was strong, he would give the earthlings a certain amount of shelter, which was something he could do. As long as he was an earthling, he would have this kind of self-awareness. However, he would have to sacrifice his own interests and set sail with the entire earthlings if he were to do this. Forgive me, but my ability was limited, and I didn't have such lofty ambitions. A poor man was good at being alone, and a rich man took over the world. Muyang always felt that he would only be a poor man. It seemed that Kami Noah had seen what Muyang was thinking. He then sighed. He knew this was a difficult task, and he wouldn't force anyone to do it. Chapter 71 Do your best. When you get to the lookout, tell Mr. Popo I said hello. Mr. Popo is the guardian of the lookout and has served Kami. If you have any questions about training, feel free to ask him. He'll be able to solve most of them. Kami, Noah explained. Time passed and soon the sun was setting at the end of the desert, staining the horizon with the remaining light. That's it. I've taught you everything I can, the rest is up to you. Kami Noah said. He looked back at Mutato's side, where Mutato had already finished teaching Sun Gohan. Since it wasn't appropriate for the other world's people to meddle in the world of the living, Kami Noah and Mutato could only stay in the world of the living for a day. Thank you for teaching me. Ancestor. Muyang was grateful. Noah's pale face smiled and waved his hand, remember, there is no end to a martial arts training. Stay true to your heart, move forward, and improve your strength well. What's next is your time, and it's time for us, old bones, 
to go back to heaven to enjoy our blessings. Ancestor, please rest assured, I know what to do. Muyang nodded his head with a hint of perseverance in his eyes. Kami Noah saw it and smiled in delight. Kami also had emotions, there was no such thing as black and white. A truly desireless Kami didn't exist. Muyang was very good his fundamentals were good. Even if there was a hint of grey in his heart, that would be his motivation to advance, no harm intended. If someone had no desire or ambition, it would be difficult to make progress. Recalling the scene a few hundred years ago when Name Kian Kataza's son worshipped before him, Kami Noah remembered his own disposition at that time. Was Name Kian Kataza's son, who split great demon King Piccolo, was having difficulty in his training because he missed that desire part in his heart? The past clouded, and Kami Noah sighed. Where can there be a true son under heaven? At the time, I was overly demanding. Flash forward to a few hours ago, as Kami Noah was opening a small stove for Muyang. Mutato, on the other side, was also imparting his centuries of insights to Sun Gohan. Under the coconut tree, Sun Gohan and Mutato stood face to face. I have examined your martial arts just now. It seems that Rashi has taught you thoroughly and has not lost his reputation as the god of martial arts. I won't repeat the details because time is limited today. I watched you just now use a move called Kamehameha as well as the Thunder Shock Surprise, which is really good. So today, I'll teach you two more techniques. Please, Grandmaster, teach me. Seeing that Mutato was going to teach him new techniques, Sun Gohan became excited. Knowing that the Kamehameha and Thunder Shock Surprise were both signature techniques, it had to be said that the new techniques Mutato was going to pass on to him would be no worse than them. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but look at Mutato with even more reverence. The moves I'm going to teach you today are called Tribeam and Evil Containment Wave, which are different from your Thunder Shock Surprise. It is extremely powerful but very draining, so remember to use it carefully. Mutato said seriously. Mutato's top two techniques were the Thunder Shock Surprise and Tri-Beam, which he passed on to Master Rashi and Master Shen. Based on these two techniques, they evolved Kamehameha and Doden Ray. However, compared to the Kamehameha and Doden Ray, the Thunder Shock Surprise and Tri-Beam were more overbearing. They consumed more energy, especially the Tri-Beam. If it was overused, it could cause death from exhaustion just like the evil containment wave. I'll keep that in mind. Sun Gohan nodded cautiously. A burning bright light was shining in his two eyes. He had heard about these two techniques from his teacher, Master Rashi. The legendary evil containment wave was a compulsory sealing technique. If it hit a person, he would be powerless to break free even when his key was way stronger than the person who cast this technique. This technique was something that Master Rashi himself could do, but he hadn't passed it to Sun Gohan because it was too risky. As for the Tri-Beam, it was the secret technique of the Crane School, which even Master Rashi had never learned. Its power was definitely not inferior to the Thunder Shock Surprise. Now that Grandmaster Mutato was ready to teach him these two moves, Sun Gohan was very excited when he remembered these two moves' power. After practicing the moves for a while, Mutato was very satisfied with Sun Gohan's talent. As expected, Turtle School did have a successor on its side. Gohan, you have great talent. Go to Korin Tower sometime, it will improve your strength even more. Mutato looked over at Kami Noah and saw that he had paused then started talking again. From there, he knew that the impartation had come to an end so he gave Sun Gohan the final advice. Sun Gohan nodded seriously, then looked at Mutato. Fortune teller Baba came over at this time and said, Gentlemen, your time has come. Please return with me to the other world. Mutato laughed loudly. He was unrestrainedly stood with Kami Noah. Hey, one day has passed so quickly. Well, Earth, it's time to leave after all. As if he was filled with nostalgia, Mutato and Kami Noah lamented as they walked towards the other world entrance with fortune teller Baba. Have a good journey, 
Ancestors Muyang and Sun Gohan stood behind each other to send their ancestors off. Only after Mutato and Kami Noah's figures became blurred did they let out a sigh of relief. Muyang said, I didn't expect to see my ancestor on today's trip. Who says I did? Sun Gohan calmed down and asked, Muyang, where are you going to go next? What about you? Muyang asked rhetorically. Sun Gohan said, I'm going to follow Grandmaster Mutato's advice and go to Korin Tower. Muyang smiled, then we're going the same way. I'm going there as well. To be precise, Muyang's destination was the lookout above Korin Tower. He had already received a token from Kami Noah to enter the lookout. That string of small bells was both a token and an approval. Without that string of bells, even if you knew that the lookout was suspended above the Korin Tower, you would still be repelled by the lookout's mysterious power. Unless you were as strong as a super scion or received other tokens or permission, you would never be able to enter the lookout. Sun Gohan said, so we're indeed on the same road again. Why don't we go over there now? Let's go. After saying goodbye to fortune teller Baba, Muyang's entire body levitated and swooshed off to the sacred land of Korin's direction. Sun Gohan was dumbfounded, hey, why did you fly away? How can I keep up with him at this speed? We were supposed to be on the same road. Why did one person leave before the other? He was a disciple of Turtle School. He didn't even know the dancing sky art. Sun Gohan smiled bitterly, looking at Muyang's back that was gradually disappearing in the clouds. After settling down, he lifted his feet and began to run. Suddenly a series of dusky sands began to rise up in the desert, as Sun Gohan ran towards sacred land of Korin at a rapid pace. The sacred land of Korin. After a long gap of half a year, Muyang once again stepped into the sacred land of Korin's territory. This time, he didn't stop at the bottom of the tower but changed direction as soon as he could get a good look at the Korin tower. He accelerated directly towards the top of the tower. Swoosh, a strong whirlwind, brought up a stream of tailwinds that blew against the Korin tower's ivory-colored body. Muyang rose in a straight line. The wild whirlwind directly washed away the floating clouds floating around the Korin Tower, revealing a turquoise blue void. Soon, the flat, spherical top of Korin Tower came into view. Finally, I've arrived. I didn't expect to come over again after only half a year or so. Muyang lightly chanted and quirked a faint smile. He then slowed down to enter from the second level of the Korin Tower. Chapter 72 the first floor of Korin Tower. Korin was cooking fresh sea fish on the stove. He rolled the fish from time to time and brushed the sauce on it. Since Muyang brought him a hundred tons of seafood, Korin's little life was quite nourishing. His quality of life suddenly improved a lot, every day changing patterns to make different food. He was living an enjoyable life. Suddenly, Korin seemed to sense that someone had climbed up the Korin Tower. He was wondering what was going on lately. Someone had come up again and again. However, when he saw the visitor clearly, he realized that it was Muyang. What are you doing here, Muyang? Do you think you already meet my requirements? Hey, your key has really risen quite a bit. Corin narrowed his eyes. It had only been half a year since the last time they met and Corin suddenly noticed that Muyang's key had actually risen by a large amount. Tisk, it wasn't bad for someone with qualifications that he was optimistic about. Corin stroked his whiskers, secretly proud of himself. Muyang smiled genially and took out the string of bells given to him by Kami Noah to Corin. Hey, why do you have this thing? Corin looked at the string of bells. His eyes widened and he came closer to take the bells in Muyang's hands. He examined the mysterious energy that lingered on the bell's surface, and yes, it was the Kami's god power. Korin immediately made a judgment. There was a string of the same bells he had here, a token to the lookout. The bells contained the Kami's power, which was impossible to imitate. This was odd. How did this kid Muyang get this string of bells? 
was there still a lost bell on earth that he just happened to pick up? This was given to me by Kami Noah, Muyang said. Kami Noah, Corin murmured. His eyes suddenly widened, is the Kami Noah you're talking about, is he a white-haired, white-bearded old man? I thought the guy was dead. Muyang said, I met him at Fortune Teller Baba Palace. Therefore, Muyang explained what happened at Fortune Teller Baba Palace. After hearing that, Corin suddenly said, so, he was at Fortune Teller Baba Palace. If that the case, then there's no problem. That old woman is also amazing. She's very well known in the other Wolard. Geez, I didn't think that Kami Noah was also unable to hold back, and actually came to the world of the living. Corin had lived for more than 800 years and had witnessed several Kamas. That was why he had some understanding of why Kami Noah had come to the world of the living. Corin looked at Muyang and said, Well, since you've already received the token from Kami Noah, the lookout doors will certainly be open for you. By the way, the lookout is suspended above Corin Tower, and now you are qualified to go there. Then how do I get in there? Muyang knew that there were only two ways to get up into the lookout. One was to use the powerful dancing sky art to ascend to the lookout. The other was to use the power of the power pole. However, either way, the process of accessing the lookout would be tested by thunder and lightning. Muyang admitted that his current dancing sky art was not up to the standard to enter the lookout. Oh, it requires the use of something called a power pole. You have to insert it into the top of Corin Tower, and it will send you up to the lookout. Suddenly Corin froze and slapped his head, oops. I forgot that I gave that power pole stick to Rashi. I'm sorry, but you'll have to get this power pole by yourself. I knew this would happen. Muyang rolled his eyes. Immortal Corin, tell me Master Rashi's address. Hmm, Rashi has been living in the East Sea, more than a hundred kilometers from the mainland. He lives in the Kame House. Corin licked his paw and told Muyang Master Rashi's address. Muyang nodded lightly and wrote down the address. However, he didn't go to the East Sea immediately. Instead, he approached the charcoal fire and directly picked up and ate a bunch of grilled fish that Corin had placed on top of it. Corin was angry when he saw his grilled food go into Muyang's stomach. Hey, hey, why are you eating my grilled fish instead of going to Rashi to ask for the power pole? Muyang said indifferently, no need to rush. If I go to Master Rashi by myself, he won't believe me at all. What if he doesn't give me the power pole? So, I have to wait for someone. Corin's ears moved, who are you going to wait for? You'll know who I'm waiting for in a moment. He should be arriving at the sacred land of Corin by now. Muyang knew if he was looking for Master Rashi by himself, looking at Master Rashi's personality, he would not easily hand over the power pole. Moreover, if he asked him to collect pictures or photo albums of beautiful women from all over the world as a condition, it would be bad. The winner of the World Martial Arts Tournament went to collect a photo album of beautiful women. It would be too humiliating if the news spread in the martial arts world, moreover if Mexia knew. That was why he had to take Sun Gohan along with him. At this time, Sun Gohan had arrived at the sacred land of Korin. He didn't know that Muyang was waiting for him on top of the Korin Tower. He was looking at the tower from below with a shocked face. With a gulp, Sun Gohan gave himself a boost and thudded his way up the Korin Tower. Soon, he was disappearing into the clouds. Half an hour later, Korin stood in front of the water tank and looked inside. Is this kid the one you were waiting for? He's much more powerful than when you first came up here. Corin looked at the Sun Gohan in the picture with a surprised face. Judging from the abilities shown by Sun Gohan as he climbed the Corin Tower, even Master Rashi and Muyang couldn't compare to him. This was the result of being instructed by Mutato. Muyang was also standing in front of the water tank, looking at Sun Gohan in the picture. A hint of surprise flashed in his eyes. What a good boy, he had grown so much in a single day. He's a disciple of the Turtle School. 
Let him come with me to get the power pole so that he can convince Master Rashi. Do whatever you want. However, it seems a bit unlucky for this kid to run into you. Corin yawned. Muyang was clearly trying to trap that kid. He then waved his hand, as long as Muyang stopped spoiling the fish, he didn't want to bother with anything. Muyang smiled faintly and didn't reply. Another half an hour passed, and Sun Gohan finally climbed up Korin Tower. He was exhausted. Once he came up, he lay down on the ground breathing heavily, and then Muyang's smiling face appeared in front of him. Wow, very good. You actually climbed up so quickly. Sun Gohan rolled his eyes and gasped, You're so ungrateful. You left me alone and ran away. Muyang laughed, Don't worry. I won't leave you behind next time. Come and accompany me to Kame House. What? I just came up, and you're asking me to go down again. Sun Gohan opened his mouth wide and looked at Muyang incredulously. His two fingers that were pointing at Muyang were trembling slightly. What did this guy mean with his words? Chapter 73 Muyang laughed as he looked at Sun Gohan's reaction, I just happen to need something from your teacher, Master Rashi. I want you to come with me. If you don't believe me, you can ask Immortal Korin. Besides, it's kind of training. How can a little setback defeat a martial arts practitioner? I am sure you know that. You. Sun Gohan's face was pale. He almost spurted out a mouthful of blood. How could there be such a shameless person in the world? On the other hand, Korin nodded his head thoughtfully at the side, indicating that he approved the situation. Climbing back and forth on Korin Tower was a form of training. Korin must have understood this. Otherwise, he wouldn't have thrown Goku's four-star Dragon Ball down from Korin Tower and let him jump down to pick them up just like on the original story again. Although Muyang wanted Sun Gohan to come down with him right after he came up, which he intentionally do it to tease him, this was the truth. It was really beneficial for Sun Gohan's training. On the other side, in response to Sun Gohan's resistance, Muyang completely ignored him and pushed him to the edge of Korin Tower. Hey, 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 what are you doing? It's too dangerous. I'm telling you, jumping straight down is much faster than climbing up. You'll be at the bottom in a few minutes. Muyang laughed lightly. After racking Sun Gohan onto the edge of Korin Tower, he pushed Sun Goku's shoulders directly. A scream of awe grew farther and farther away, as Sun Gohan fell right from the tower's top. Muyang, I'll die, I can't fly. He swore to stay away from Muyang in the future. This guy was too much of a pain in the ass. Just think how many times he had been unlucky since he met him. Looking at Sun Gohan, who was gradually disappearing into the clouds and mist, Muyang turned back and showed a crooked white tooth at Korin. What do you think of this guy? Not bad, much more resilient than you. Korin tapped the crutch in his hand. He was telling the truth. Muyang smiled heedlessly, when he comes back, you can train him well. This guy is not bad. He might be able to become a master of the generation in the future. Corin gave him a blank look and lightly said, Training martial arts practitioners are already my duty. Why do you need to say that? I think I have overstepped my bounds. Muyang smiled lightly and jumped down from the tower as well. Corin watched where Muyang had disappeared and froze for a moment. He then went over to the grill and added a handful of coals to rearrange the fresh sea fish. Honestly, he enjoyed cooking its food more than training others. On the East Sea's shores, the sea breeze is warm, and the sea birds chirp. According to the original story, Kame House shouldn't be very far from the mainland. On the shore, Sun Gohan was distracted. He was holding two dried flat beans in his hand, and then carefully put them away. This kind of thing called Senzu beans was given to him by Muyang. There were only three of them, and he had already used one. Master Rashi's came houses over a hundred kilometers towards the east. There are many small islands there because the ocean floor is covered with reefs. 
large ships can't enter, only speedboats. Don't bother so much. I'll just fly over there. At Muyang's level now, it was no longer meaningful to train in running or repetitive physical exercise without load. The use of the dancing sky art itself is a kind of key control exercise. It could only be said that different levels had different priorities. Sun Gohan was speechless for a moment and sighed, but the problem is that I don't know how to use the dancing sky art. I need to find a boat to get there. Muyang looked at him, despicably, what's the point of finding a boat? You can just have a wooden board. Look at that thing. I think it's perfect. Looking in Muyang's finger's direction, Sun Gohan saw a thigh thin coconut tree, and the corner of his mouth twitched. He said, with a weary voice, Never mind, it will work if you say so. Sun Gohan didn't want to argue any more. As long as there was a place to settle, a tree stump could be used to sail across the ocean. So with key wave in his hand, Sun Gohan dragged half of the coconut tree's trunk into the water like a raft. Let's go. With a soft gulp on his lips, he checked Master Rashi's location, and Wiang flew towards the Kame house. Soon, a wave splashed up, and Sun Gohan jumped into the water as well. The two of them heading further towards the ocean. Shortly after, a black dot appeared above the water. It was a small, lonely island. Sun Gohan pointed at the island and said, Can you see that island in front of you? That's the Kame house. Master Rashi lives on that island. Finally, we've arrived. Muyang looked in the direction that Sun Gohan pointed out. He had seen the island's outline with his excellent eyesight, it was a small island swaying on the ocean, about three to four hundred square feet. Apart from a pink tone house on the island, there were only scattered four to five coconut trees left. I'm going to tell my master about Grand Master Muedito later when I get to the island. You can tell him yourself about borrowing the power pole. Sun Gohan declared beforehand. Muyang waved his hand, okay, you just have to prove my identity to him. Sun Gohan nuzzled his mouth and stopped talking. The two soon entered the one kilometer radius of the Kame house. At this time, everything on the island was clearly visible. On the golden sandy beach, water flowers were lapping against the shore. In a shady spot, Master Rashi was lying comfortably on a small bed with an indescribable book over his head. He was snoring. Master Rashi, Master Rashi. A few shouts woke Master Rashi from his sleep. He rubbed his eyes and looked at the two men calmly in front of him, Ah, it's Gohan. Didn't you just leave? Why are you back again? This. Sun Gohan looked at Muyang with difficulty. Muyang chirped, you must be the legendary Master Rashi. My name is Muyang, a disciple from the Heavenly Sky School. A disciple of the Heavenly Sky School. Master Rashi slammed his mouth. Heavenly Sky School was a name he familiarized with. He had heard Mutato talk about it when he followed that old man a few hundred years ago. He took another look at this young man standing beside his disciple, then rolled his eyes. Hey, this young man is quite extraordinary. Whether it was from Muyang's posture or his key movement, Master Rashi felt a hint of mystery. It was a spiritual intent, a feeling that was quite mysterious as if the person in front of him didn't exist at all. Master Rashi's cloudy eyes suddenly became clear as he looked solemnly at Muyang. Chapter 74 you can actually restrain your key perfectly. Master Rashi was shocked. Muyang smiled faintly, this is because of the training I received from Immortal Korin. You climbed up the Korin Tower. Master Rashi was a bit surprised. Not only me, but Sun Gohan also climbed up there. We came this time to borrow the power pole from you, Muyang briefly told what happened on top of Korin Tower while Sun Gohan added what happened at Fortune Teller Baba Palace. When Sun Gohan told him about their meeting with Mutato at Fortune Teller Baba Palace, he interrupted Sun Gohan. Wait, Gohan, did you just say that you met Master Mutato? Hurry up, tell me in detail. Master Rashi looked serious. Yes. 
Sun Gohan responded, then focused on the story. While Sun Gohan told Master Rashi about his experiences, Muyang was also taking a closer look at Master Rashi. He was an old man with a frail body, a slightly messy white beard, an extremely weak ki. He looked like he was on the verge of death, and his body was fragile. However, Muyang knew that these were only superficial appearances. Master Rashi had trained his body's ki long ago in those nearly 200 years of practice. The reason why it looked so weak was that he had almost completely restrained his ki. Suddenly, Muyang's eyes glanced over and saw a dragon balls hanging around Master Rashi's neck. It was the three star dragon balls. Muyang's eyes glittered. This was the second time he had seen a dragon balls. With the six star dragon balls in Mexia's hand, he already knew the location of the two dragon balls. As his eyes gently glanced at it, Muyang didn't move. It wasn't that he didn't want the seven dragon balls. He also wanted to gather the Dragon Balls to make a wish. However, it was simply too difficult to collect all seven Dragon Balls in this era. Initially, with Fortune Teller Baba's ability, he still had hoped to gather the seven Dragon Balls. However, Fortune Teller Baba had already stated that she wouldn't help him with fortune telling, so he could do nothing about it. If I want to collect the Dragon Balls, it looks like I have to wait until Bulma is born in the future or find Dr. Bridges and have him develop a Dragon Ball radar. Muyang shook his head and waved away the thought of searching for the Dragon Balls. At this time, the conversation between Master Rashi and Sun Gohan had ended. Master Rashi said to Muyang with a serious face, I have understood your intentions. However, I don't know your purpose in borrowing the power pole. That item was originally owned by Immortal Korin, so you should take it and return it to its rightful owner. Please wait a moment, I'll go get it for you. After saying that, Master Rashi leaned on his crutch and walked towards Kame House. Didn't he look like an old pervert on a normal day? However, when he came across a serious matter, Master Rashi would become extremely serious, exuding an aura full of martial arts practitioners. Compared to Mercenary Tao, which he killed before, the two were simply worlds apart. He was worthy of being called the God of Martial Arts by Master Mutato. Muyang exclaimed and chatted with Sun Gohan on the beach. After a while, Master Rashi came out holding a red-colored pole, take it. This is the power pole. I've kept it for over 200 years, but I haven't used it much. Upon receiving the power pole from Master Rashi, Muyang nodded gratefully. Thank you very much, Master Rashi. Master Rashi waved his hand, call me, Rashi. Muyang was stunned and smiled, okay, Rashi, then we'll take our leave. Wait a moment. Master Rashi called out. Muyang looked at Master Rashi with confusion. Master Rashi said, you are also a martial arts practitioner, and I can see that you are still stronger than Gohan. Frankly speaking, I had thought that Gohan was already the best martial arts practitioner I had ever seen. However, I didn't expect that a mountain of talent like you would still exist in the world. Back then, when I was training with Master Mutato, I once visited your Heavenly Sky School. The way you trained was different from ordinary people. It had a hint of being very mysterious. Back then, I could not feel its subtlety because I was still young so can you at least release your key and let me perceive it? Of course, I can. Muyang agreed very quickly. It turned out that as Master Rashi grew older, he was also gradually feeling the innate physical limitations of being an earthling. Seeing Muyang this time had caused him to recall his past years and remember what happened at the Heavenly Sky School. After Muyang agreed, he stayed calm for a moment and suddenly released his control of key. Suddenly, very fierce ki was spread out with Muyang as the center. Unusual ki with a spiritual aspect suppressing it, sweeping towards the people present. Master Rashi and Sun Gohan were the first to be swallowed by this ki. Sun Gohan had seen Muyang's ki before, so he hadn't felt anything yet. However, Master Rashi was different. 
he was over 250 years old and had a lot of experience. Although the current master Rashi was still unable to close his eyes and recognized Tian Shenyan's movements like Sun Gaku did when he participated in the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament, Muyang's unconventional key still brought him tremendous pressure. This feeling is different. It's completely different from the martial arts that circulate in the martial arts world. It's stretched and profound. Although it's harsh, there's no trace of waste, as if everything is under some kind of control. This is the most suitable martial arts for humans. Feeling the enormous power of Muyang, Master Rashi droned on. He had a feeling that if he had practiced this technique back then, he might have achieved even more. But it was too late to say this now. He had taken the elixir of immortality, how could he break through so easily? Of course, the reason why Muyang's ki was able to bring such a great shock to Master Rashi, apart from the fact that Muyang's ki was indeed powerful, mainly because of the unique effect of the spiritual aspect. The ki wave of the Heavenly Sky School was mainly used to nourish the body. The ki wave practice would be combined with spiritual power. This type of training was generally only accessible after reaching the lookout. Moreover, Muyang used a brand new Heavenly Sky School key based technique modified by Kami Noah, which was certainly more mysterious than the previous one. Even if it was called Kami School, it wasn't excessive. After quite some time, Muyang gradually restrained his key. Master Rashi and Sun Gohan were still immersed in the shock of what they had just witnessed. After a while, Master Rashi breathed a sigh of relief. Well. I've sensed the difference in your heavenly sky school. If this entire set of key waves can be popularized, the entire martial world might return to its original peak. In Master Rashi's mind, only the martial world of 250 years ago was considered the peak. As for now, all martial arts practitioners were just loaches swimming in shallow water. Muyang nodded his head without any doubt. In his heart, however, he didn't quite agree. Suppose the brand new Heavenly Sky School he practiced was to popularize. In that case, it was only making the martial arts practitioners go back to Mutato's time. If that happened, it would be an underestimate of Kami Noah's efforts over the past few hundred years. How could a training technique that could push the average power level of earthlings from less than 5 points to 20 points be underestimated? If it could be popularized, surpassing the martial world of 250 years ago wouldn't be a problem at all. Of course, no matter how good the training techniques were, everyone couldn't become an excellent martial arts practitioner. Talent, this was a hurdle that couldn't be overcome. Being able to suffer was an essential element of early training, and it was certainly easy to make small gains. However, how far someone could really go depending on whether or not that person was suitable for this path. Some people were born as martial arts practitioners, some people were born as scientists, and some were born as cooks. Forcing a martial arts practitioner to be a cook, a cook to be a scientist, or a scientist to train as a martial arts practitioner, the end result could be a basket of bamboo with nothing to show. All three would be useless. Chapter 75 Although he was thinking this way, Muyang didn't intend to say it, nor did he have the heart to correct Master Rashi's misjudgment. With this matter out of the way, he generously and ungraciously offered his farewell to the Master Rashi once again, Master Rashi, I'll take the power pole with me. I have something else to do with Gohan so I'll take my leave first. Master Rashi nodded and turned to Sun Gohan, who was standing beside him, go to Korin Tower and listen to Immortal Korin's guidance. He's much more powerful than I am. Yes, Master Rashi. Sun Gohan respectfully said. Right after that, Master Rashi watched Muyang and Sun Gohan leave the Kame House. After they turned into two small black dots and disappeared into the watery skyline, Master Rashi squared up with emotion. Then, his expression turned nasty again. He picked up his small book depicting unspeakable colors, covered his head, and exhaled to sleep. This old man was hopeless. When Wiang and Sun Gohan came back to the top of the tower, it was only one day since they left. 
Corin received the power pole from Wiang and nodded a moment later, that's right. This is the thing. Sun Gohan, you stay on the first floor first. I will take Muyang to the lookout's entrance. After saying that, he walked straight towards the second floor. When Muyang saw the situation, he hurriedly followed. Sun Gohan was curious, but he knew there was nothing for him there. So he simply sat on the floor and rested. The second floor of the Korin Tower. This wasn't the first time Muyang had been here, but it still seemed a bit too empty. The view here was vast and sweeping. There were no walls around the edges. There were only twelve embossed stone pillars supporting the upper and lower levels. Except for a stone table in the middle of more than a hundred square meters that held the ultra-divine water, and a crystal ball suspended above the stone table that served to stabilize Korin Tower. There were no other unnecessary decorations. Muyang asked Korin, how do we get up to the top of Korin Tower now? It's simple. Don't you know how to use dancing sky art? Now, follow me. Corin said as he walked ahead of him to the fence at the edge of the second level of Corin Tower. Stretching out the crutch in his hand and hooking it outwards, Corin nimbly jumped onto the curved arc-filled side of the tower's exterior and then tilted himself towards the top as if he were walking on level ground. Muyang saw the situation and cast the dancing sky art to follow. Immortal Corin looking at the curvature of this tower. The top layer is just as thick as the first layer, is there still a space inside? Floating on the outside of the curved tower's top, Muyang casually asked. Corin casually replied, there is indeed a third layer inside, which communicates the crystal ball's inner space. It is where I planted the senzu beans. I need to use the crystal ball to get in. Muyang nodded his head. It was a solution to the doubt in his heart. Here it is. Corin stopped at a golden curved bump at the very top of the tower. It resembled a small spire with a small hole in the center where the power pole was placed. Just insert one end of the power pole into this small hole and shout for the pole to extend. It will take you to space where the lookout is located. You may have to experience lightning along the way. Corin paused and continued remember to wear your string of bells. They are tokens. The lookout's administrators will only allow you to stay up there if you wear that one. Otherwise, you will be struck down as an intruder. I see. These points of attention Wiang had noticed while reading the original story. Now that Corin had reminded him again, it only made him more impressed. He then inserted the power pole into the empty space at the top of the tower. After making sure it was fixed, Muyang held the power pole tightly in one hand and yelled. Power pole extend. As soon as the words fell, the power pole emitted red light and stretched. It stretched and grew faster. Soon disappeared into the turquoise sky with Muyang. Looking at the sky where he could no longer see Muyang's silhouettes, Corin rubbed his face with his paws and thought to himself. This guy should be able to pass the test. Forget it, don't bother, no one will die anyway. Rather, that disciple of Rashi, I need to hone him. After that, Corin leisurely walked towards the first floor of Corin Tower. The sky was rumbling with dark clouds. As the power pole carried Muyang higher, he was almost out of the atmosphere's range. Yet, miraculously, the air around him didn't disappear. Instead, many dark clouds had gathered. There was a loud rumble, and a crystal lightning bolt struck down, hitting Muyang's body, causing him to shiver and nearly loosen his grip on the power pole. There's something odd about this space. It should no longer be on Earth. Muyang was bitter. His martial clothing had been split by lightning just now. He had long known that the path to the lookout wasn't simple. He would have to endure all sorts of tests, and his heart was prepared for that, but now, he could only keep on persevering. He had crossed this alternate space layer before he could enter the dimension where the lookout was located. Time passed gradually, Muyang couldn't remember exactly how many lightning strikes he had suffered. In short, every time he was struck, he could clearly feel his body crackling like fried beans. 
the numbness all over his body was both unbearable and somehow comfortable. Finally, such a day came to an end. As the space filled with thick dark clouds came to an abrupt end, the azure landscape was once again in sight. I'm almost here. Muyang's heart was surging. He could already see a red dot appearing among his sight. The high-rise space was vast and empty. This part of the world neither belonged to Earth nor the outer universe. The hemispherical temple that looks as delicate as fire floats there unchanged. In fact, the lookout could be moved, but it had remained in the same place for so many years. With a pop sound, the other end of the power pole fits perfectly into the lookout's bottom. Muyang flipped over and climbed up a ladder along the edge of the lookout. Finally, I'm here. So this is the lookout. As he climbed onto the lookout's platform, Muyang took a deep breath. He was preparing to take a look around with anticipation before a black silhouette suddenly appeared in front of him in silence. Yeah. Muyang shouted and jumped back a step in a row, only to discover that the person who was so dark was Mr. Popo. That was right. In addition to Kami in the lookout, there was only Mr. Popo. However, Mr. Popo appeared really fast. Just after he came up, he appeared without any trace. Was this the real state of heart as calm as water and as serene as the sky? It was inevitably too quiet for him to compare. After recovering from his fright, Muyang returned his greeting and said, Hello, this is my token. Muyang knew that as Mr. Popo had lived in the lookout for a long time, his strength might be above the kami. So, to avoid trouble, he took out his token early on. Oh, this thing. Mr. Popo examined the string of bells as if he was trying to distinguish between the real and the fake. This made Muyang panic for no reason. In this state, could he not recognize this string of bells? It made Muyang's heart dropped into his stomach. I know, you're a disciple of the Heavenly Sky School. After a while, Mr. Popo said hello. Chapter 76 I believe this is the bell of the last kami. Have you seen him? Mr. Popo's two eyes were colorless and hollow, but they perceived everything. Muyang nodded, yes, Kami Noah has returned to the world of the living from other world. He asked me to greet you on his behalf. Well, come with me. Let's go to see Kami. Perhaps because Muyang was holding a token from the last Kami, Mr. Popo didn't test Muyang's strength. Instead, he took Muyang directly to meet the Kami. Muyang responded and followed behind Mr. Popo towards the palace entrance on the side of the lookout. As he walked, he observed the layout of the lookout. Just like the ones that appeared in the original story, the lookout located in the heavenly realm was empty. Aside from a few rows of trees and a golden palace, there wasn't even a life trace. This was because the entire temple was floating in another space level, surrounded by faint and quiet environments. People without permission could not enter anyway unless they broke in violently. Just as Muyang was following Mr. Popo's pace, he suddenly said, Your name is Muyang, right? Muyang was in awe and nodded, Yes. Learn how I walk, your pace is too chaotic to calm your mind. It's not good. Mr. Popo spoke in a flat and even goofy tone. Although Muyang had learned how to control his body's key when he was in Korin Tower, he was still far from truly having a heart as calm as water and as tranquil as the sky. Understood. Muyang nodded his head and adjusted his pace. It had to be known that even Sun Goku, who defeated the great demon King Piccolo, had been schooled by Mr. Popo when he first came to the lookout. Now that Muyang's skill was not as good as Sun Goku, he was unqualified in Mr. Popo's eyes. However, Muyang was very conscientious. He would learn whatever Mr. Popo said, and in no time, he found the secret. Mr. Popo walked in front. Although he didn't look back, he could sense that Muyang's pace and heartbeat had been adjusted. He then led him forward. Finally, they stopped at the entrance of a large hall. Mr. Popo said, This is where Kami resides, Kami is a great deity, you should respect him. When he saw Muyang nod, 
Mr. Popo pushed open the door of the main hall. Kami, someone is here. Hum an old voice responded. A green figure emerged from the main hall, and that was Kami. Kami was originally a Namekian who fled to Earth when the planet Namek encountered the challenge catastrophe. Kami came before Muyang and looked at the young man in front of him. He seemed to recall himself from back then and nodded with emotion, it's been many years. You are the first person from the lower realm to set foot in the lookout. Mr. Popo, you go and make the arrangements, let him live in the lookout from now on. His training will also be your responsibility. Yes. Mr. Popo replied. Young man, it's not easy to practice in the lookout. I hope you can follow Mr. Popo and get further advancement. Kami smiled as he looked at Muyang's handsome face. I'll try my best. Muyang's face was sunny and full of confidence. Good. Work hard then. Kami was slightly stunned, he was surprised. He thought that Muyang would be stubborn enough to ask for his guidance, but he didn't expect that Muyang would allow Mr. Popo to train him. He even agreed quickly without hesitation at all. This spontaneity made him have a few expectations in his heart for Muyang as a person. If Muyang knew what was in Kami's heart right now, he would definitely scream at the misunderstanding. He knew from the start that it would be Mr. Popo who would train him. Mr. Popo had served several Kamas in the lookout. His strength was still above the Kami. Knowing that Mr. Popo would be the one who trains him, Muyang was filled with anticipation. After that, Muyang and Mr. Popo left the palace where Kami lived and returned to the outside yard. Because they were at a high altitude, the air was even thinner than the top of Korin Tower. Any movement had to be carefully thought out. No violent movement could be withstood. Young man, now attack me. Arriving at the center of the yard, Mr. Popo began to train without any preliminaries. Muyang's eyes exploded with a sparkle as he heard the words. Mr. Popo's coolness in getting to the point was exactly what he wanted, as Muyang himself wasn't a fan of rambling around. He said loudly, Mr. Popo, look out, I'm going to start the attack. Just call me Popo. Okay, Popo, I'm coming. As soon as Muyang's voice fell, all of his attention was focused on Mr. Popo. With a swoosh, he left a trail of afterimages in place, and in the next moment, he began to look for the direction to attack. However, Muyang was having difficulty as to where to start. Obviously, Mr. Popo was just standing there very casually and not doing any defensive movement. However, when Muyang was ready to attack, he found that Mr. Popo's body seemed full of loopholes. Upon closer inspection, there was a kind of impeccable intimidation as if any attack he launched would never work. He had felt this before when he was facing Kami Noah, but this time, it seemed to be even more powerful with Mr. Popo. It wasn't that Mr. Popo was stronger than Kami Noah. It was just that Mr. Popo had taken his skill to the extreme. Is this Mr. Popo's level? Why is he so calm? Is it because of the difference in strength? Muyang's face became gloomy. Suddenly, Muyang made his move. There was a pause for the constantly flickering afterimage. He bowed his body, bounced up, shot out as fast as a bolt of lightning, and began to strike Mr. Popo's body. A bit slow. Just as Muyang's fist was about to hit Mr. Popo, Mr. Popo moved his hands behind his back, and his face became expressionless. However, his body seemed to shift from one position to another as if he was panning. Muyang's attack sliced through his chest, apparently falling short. To attack me, you need to calm down and comprehend the speed of lightning. Mr. Popo's voice sounded in Muyang's ears. The first half of the sentence was still in his right ear, but the second half reached his left ear. The bizarre switching of sound channels could tell how fast Mr. Popo was. Muyang was astonished, greatly impressed by Mr. Popo's ability. His hand alone had given him a blow to the face. Come on. There was an inexplicable alertness. Muyang didn't have time to react. In the next second, 
Mr. Popo appeared right in front of him again, raising his toes and already kicking at his abdomen. A huge force bounced Muyang off the ground, tracing a path in the sky. Just as he was about to land, Mr. Popo appeared again with a ghostly ping. Over here. Muyang reversed the body and swung out the attack. Pop! A palm grabbed Muyang's leg. Mr. Popo looked at him with a blank expression and threw him out again. Muyang stumbled and fell to the ground, but he quickly bounced up. I'll try again. Not even close. Mr. Popo shook his head numbly, flexing his fingers slightly, and flicked Muyang off again. Wow, that hurts. Muyang shrieked. Don't get carried away. Your level isn't enough. The mind is not as simple as you think, you'd better start practicing from the basics. Mr. Popo said leisurely, then began to direct Muyang on how to practice. Mr. Popo's way of guiding is different from Korin. For Korin, he preferred to let his disciples realize the point of the practice themselves, while Mr. Popo had always been straight to the point. This was because the level of martial arts practice targeted by Korin was relatively low. The points of practice weren't profound. There was still the possibility of comprehending by themselves. More importantly, through this practice, the martial arts practitioner's learning ability was being developed, leading them into the door of practice. As for Mr. Popo, since he lived in the lookout, the level was high. If he didn't point it out directly, his disciples would take decades to comprehend it by themselves. This was like a different stage of learning. Primary school teachers focus on teaching students how to behave and learn how to study independently, which instills the learning techniques. In contrast, in secondary school, especially at the university level, there was more direct teaching of specific knowledge. There were few teachers to teach students how to learn anymore. Because the great waves washed out the sand, those who were not qualified and unable to learn were eliminated. The remaining ones were the winners who could easily accept the existing knowledge. So, under Mr. Popo's guidance, Muyang began his journey of training on the lookout. Chapter 77 In the empty sky, a bright red hemispherical building with Inca culture was floating alone. Light clouds and thin air surrounded it. On the wide yard, Muyang sat quietly on top of the stone slab. His eyes closed and calm without a single ripple on his face. Next to him, Mr. Popo stood quietly, his rippling eyes never blinking. You've already learned to gather your key in Korin Tower. So the next thing you need to learn is sensing key. Just sit still like that, and train your spiritual aspect first. When you have comprehended that quicker than lightning, tranquil as the sky, your speed and movements will be different. Your key will converge to a minimum. Bang, bang, bang. With a soft shuddering sound, Muyang closed his eyes, as if he could hear his heart beating. Following Mr. Popo's words, he sank into Mr. Popo's conception. Suddenly the feeling around him became completely different, and his whole body seemed to fly. He seemed to be on the surface of a calm lake. It was flawless, like a mirror reflecting the scenery in full view. In the tranquility, he saw the beautiful fairy-like reflection of the lake light. In clarity, the gigantic detail reflecting the scene of nature. All this was so clear, tranquil, peaceful. He could clearly feel that his body was being transformed. He could feel that his strength had suddenly increased a lot when, in reality, it didn't increase. It was all a psychological effect and it was simply because his spirit was indeed transforming. Yeah, that's right. Feel your third perspective well. You continue to sit quietly here, and I'll talk about the martial arts spirit in more detail. Mr. Popo said that key sensing was definitely not about standing in front of the opponent and sense their key intensity. That was the crudest and lowest level of key senses. Because when the opponent's key was high to a certain level, even at the level of ordinary martial arts practitioners, they should be able to sense the opponent's strength or weakness roughly. True key sensing, that was the ability to predict the opponent's actions even with eyes closed. 
combine it with nature to perceive all the surrounding scenery. The physical eye's reflexes were definitely not as good as the spirit, so using spirit perception as eyes could be more effective in revealing power. The naked eye had many limitations. Too much light or too dark would affect the martial arts practitioner's judgment. So, transcending the naked eye to use key to perceive the opponent's movements were further enhanced. For most races in the universe, this set was very effective. Mr. Popo took out a ribbon and told Muyang to cover his eyes. Next, try to pinpoint my location while you are completely blind. First, try to feel the key I'm releasing. Mr. Popo said one word at a time. His fingers crossed in front of Muyang, and occasionally releasing a breaking point of key from the fingertips. One point, one point, one point. Mr. Popo's control of key was nearly perfect. When he wasn't releasing it, it was as quiet as nothing, and when he was releasing it, it was as majestic as a waterfall. The calm surface of the lake in his heart made a slight ripple. Muyang keenly sensed that the reflection of the originally quiet and flawless lake beneath his feet seemed to appear distorted in a small circle. The beautiful nature scene suddenly became full of flaw marks. You should feel it. You can make judgments based on sound, airflow, and vibrations. Finally, comprehend from it and learn to sense it with your key. Mr. Popo's voice was as plain as ever. It seemed to have reached the point where he was no longer able to feed on the world. However, Mu Yang could still sense the kindness in it. Mr. Popo was doing his best to guide Mu Yang. Mu Yang listened carefully and memorizing every Mr. Popo's words in his heart. Mr. Popo's understanding of key and state of mind was far beyond those in the lower realms. Every word and action already carried the secrets of this realm. And so, time passed slowly. As Muyang carried out his training on the lookout, his perception ability gradually increasing. In the lower realm, in a particular remote village. The woods were deep, and the lofty mountains were dense. Ruling, the coachman drove the carriage on the winding and graceful mountain road. A stone bounced off the mountain road with a crack and flew down to the bottom of the cliff on one side of the road, quickly disappearing without a trace. Beneath this cliff between the mountains, a grayish-white stone door trembled slightly, and a large amount of gravel peeled off from it. It was a stone gate carved with strange patterns. The surface of which was somewhat cracked, as if it had been standing in the valley for countless years. Suddenly, with a bang, the stone gate shook again. A crack appeared between the two closed gates, and the gate slowly opened a little to the sides. A green creature with pointy ears carefully emerged from the crack while looking at the blazing sun hanging in the air. When the sunlight hit the green creature, it immediately let out a cry of snort and returned to the crack as if frightened. After a long time, a few more of the same creatures grew bold and cautiously walked out of the gate. The small valley became lively. At the lookout. When that doorway was opened, the pale Kami stood at the lookout's edge, and his expression suddenly changed. Kami has something happened in the lower realm? Mr. Popo asked worriedly. Kami nodded with a sigh, a gate in the lower realm that connects to a lesser demon realm was opened. It's a good thing there aren't any powerful demons near that gate. Earth was a magical place connected with the other world, demon realm, and some other mysterious domains. Although these portals were closed one by one with the Earthlings' ancestors' efforts during ancient times, there were still open passages throughout the ages. That lesser demon realm was attached to the subsidiary space around Earth. Kami, do you want me to go and close the gate? Kami shook his head, it doesn't matter, they're all just small demons. They won't be able to stir up a big storm. By the way, how is Muyang's training going? Kami was not too concerned about the demon clan inside lesser demon realm. Instead, he was concerned about Muyang's training. He's already gradually comprehending the true meaning of Ki. Worthy of being the heir of Kami Noah. Train him well, the lower realm needs a strong martial arts practitioner. Okay, I'll train him well. By the way, Kami, Koran sent me a message, 
saying that he still has a very good martial arts practitioner there. He requested to send that person to the lookout as well after a while. Mr. Popo was now talking about the Korin Tower below. Korin had sent him a request to send Sun Gohan to the lookout. Oh well, let him send people up, there's been a lot of talented people lately. Kami held onto his crutch with a smile on his old wrinkle-filled face. In the past 250 years, there hadn't been a single person qualified to ascend the lookout, but now two people had appeared at once. The lookout had been quiet for hundreds of years. The last time it had been this life was when he competed with another person for the Kami's position. At the end of that competition, Kami Noah chose him to become Kami's heir. When he thought of the catastrophe that happened because he wanted to become Kami, guilt showed on his old face. If it wasn't for him, the great demon king Piccolo wouldn't have cholera in the lower realm, and the martial arts in the lower realm wouldn't have suffered a great downfall. That was all related to him. It had been more than 200 years since then. Perhaps he should consider finding an heir. Chapter 78 The mountains had no children and the years were unknown. During this time of training, under Mr. Popo's guidance, Muyang understood they quicker than lightning, tranquil as the sky. He also learned how to use his key to sense his opponent's movements. In order to practice these, Mr. Popo brought Muyang to a small room in the lookout. He used the machine inside to transport Muyang to a special training environment that wasn't a space on Earth, but a virtual space created by the machine. According to Mr. Popo's needs, everything in it was like an illusion and could be manipulated at will. At first, it was the theory, but then it progressed to the actual training. In that illusion, Muyang was fishing in a valley with birds as his companions. The lake's calm surface symbolized his mind, causing him to comprehend the tranquil and distant conception. After completing his spiritual training, he immediately entered another illusionary realm to receive lightning attacks to achieve lightning-like speed. Of course, in reality, his speed wasn't as fast as lightning. Today, after finishing his training, Muyang soaked himself in a cozy hot spring. The water in these hot springs wasn't just any spring water either, but sacred water that had been purified by the lookout's power. Bathing in these sacred water would not only wash away the fatigue of the entire body but also nourish the body and achieve the effect of conceiving and nourishing the body. It would be perfectly compatible with the heavenly sky school martial arts that Muyang practiced. Wow! The fine stream of water flowed down his body. Muyang stood up and walked out of the hot spring with his wet hair hanging as the water dropped. After wiping a mirror that was somewhat blurred by the steamy fog, it reflected a refreshingly handsome and graceful black-haired man with eyes full of intimidation like a falcon. Unknowingly, my power level has exceeded 200. Muyang smiled lightly. During this period, his greatest gain wasn't an increase in power level, but an overall improvement in his whole accomplishment. Having gone through the various training in the lookout, he already possessed a kind of mindset to face any difficulty with ease. He had basically reached a state of invincibility on Earth. This rate of progress made him very satisfied. However, every time he thought that even the Frisia subordinates trash in the universe had a power level of over 1000. He felt a strong sense of urgency chasing him. As he arrived at the lookout's yard, a figure in an orange martial uniform just happened to be knocked out of the sky and landed in front of Muyang. Reflexively, Muyang lifted his leg and kicked the person out of the door again. Ah! There was a scream. Yo, Sun Gohan, you look like a mess. Muyang, it's fine that you didn't catch me, but you even kicked me. Sun Gohan got up from the ground in sadness and anger. He had just come to the lookout and was being trained by Mr. Popo like Muyang a year ago. Not to mention, he was suffering every day and the only person he knew here was actually abusing him. Looking at Sun Gohan's expression, Muyang despised him, this is the most basic training. I'm helping you. I mastered this so fast in the first place. Mr. Popo added, Sun Gohan's progress is not as good as Muyang's. Sun Gohan momentarily choked, I can't learn anyway. 
Sun Gohan had never experienced what comprehending the various realms was. That was why he couldn't understand it fully. Muyang, have you completed all of the training at this stage? Mr. Popo asked bluntly. I have basically mastered it. Muyang spoke with confidence. Mr. Popo nodded and said, then you will start a brand new training from tomorrow. I'll train you into qualified warriors in the shortest possible time. Sun Gohan, you have to do your best too. Oh. Sun Gohan nodded willfully. Brand new training? The corners of Muyang's mouth slightly curled up. He was looking forward to the next training. The sun and moon turned upside down as time flew by. The next day, Mr. Popo led Muyang down the lookout's winding corridor. This was a corridor that Muyang had already walked many times. As the corridor continued to spiral downwards, every four or five meters, a gate would appear. Behind these gates was a small independent space, dedicated to the trial of the practitioner. Imagine how much effort the Kami put to build the lookout. Muyang followed behind for quite some time but still didn't see any intention from Mr. Popo to stop. Popo, if you go further down, you will reach the end. Muyang couldn't help but say. We'll be there soon. Mr. Popo walked ahead, leisurely with his hands behind his back. This is a training place that has been specially opened for you. You should practice well in it. If we continue on, we'll reach the bottom of the lookout. Is Popo taking me to the hyperbolic time chamber? Muyang silently speculated. As he thought about it, it seemed that only the hyperbolic time chamber in the lookout matched what Mr. Popo said. The hyperbolic time chamber's time flow was hundreds of times faster than the outside world. A day outside was a year inside, and the air inside was legendarily thin the temperatures fluctuating between minus 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. The gravity ten times greater than the Earth's, these conditions could be harsh for anyone. To spend a year in a vast and empty, lonely environment was a great test for the soul. People who were mentally weak or unfocused were prone to hallucinations. Also, the food inside was not delicious. Suppose the place that Mr. Popo was heading to was the hyperbolic time chamber. In that case, Muyang could predict that his life would be even more miserable than Sun Gohan's in the following year. Moreover, the hyperbolic time chamber and his accelerated space have some duplicate functions, worried. However, Mr. Popo's next step told him that it was all just his speculation and that their destination was not the hyperbolic time chamber. Well, here we are. This is it. Mr. Popo stopped in front of a huge doorway and opened it, it was pitch black inside. Muyang paused and asked curiously, what is this place? Go in. This is your place of trial. It's vicious and dangerous inside. You will only be able to come out after you defeat the strongest character inside, so you should be careful. Surprisingly, he realized that Mr. Popo actually used the word extremely dangerous to describe the danger inside. It made Muyang's heart flinch, but he still walked in with firm footsteps. Clang! The door behind him suddenly closed the moment Muyang entered. It was now a separate space inside. Another trial space. Suddenly, a feeling of dizziness came over him. Muyang only felt a blackness, no longer knowing where he was. As he opened his eyes again, he discovered that he was in an old forest. Chapter 79 It was an old leafy forest, surrounded by green woods and pleasant air, with some mist between the lush trees. There was a stream clattering beneath the mossy rocks, and from time to time, a bird stopped in the branches and made a long and short squawk. This is an illusion. Muyang frowned. The first thing that came to his mind was the training space that Mr. Popo had virtualized through the machine. He was having experienced practicing in the illusionary world a few times before. Muyang immediately judged that the world he was currently in was also an illusionary world. It was just different from ordinary illusions. The illusions constructed by the lookout room were basically the same as the real world. Muyang didn't use the dancing sky art to float at this time. Instead, he walked down the mountain path. 
First, he had to figure out what was going on in this illusionary world. The test mission that Mr. Popo gave him was to defeat the strongest character in this world. It meant that there were opponents in this illusion world that he was currently unable to defeat. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called a test. Mr. Popo's exact words were, You can only come out after you defeat the strongest character in there, so be careful. Mr. Popo reminded him to be careful. It also meant that his opponent's strength was relatively superior to his. When he thought of this, a fighting spirit of struggle arose in Wiang's heart conversely. Because of their relatively good qualities, Wiang's training had actually been going smoothly in the past few years. Especially after opening the golden finger of acceleration space. Basically, there were no setbacks. However, the most dubious battle was when he faced Mercenary Tao. Even back then, he won through the Senzu Bean's power in the end. It could be said that up until today, the level of Earth's martial arts practitioners had been unable to keep up with Muyang's pace. However, Muyang still hadn't suffered any setbacks, gradually giving him the feeling that it was easy for him to win on Earth. Of course, this was an illusion, but at least Mr. Popo was an exception. He also longed for an evenly matched battle, not with any sense of self-abuse, but rather with the hope of testing his training results. After all, fighting an enemy was different from fighting against Mr. Popo in training. Also, it was more likely to stimulate potential in battle. As Muyang followed the mountain path out of the forest, he entered a not-so-prosperous town. The people on the road were in a hurry, carrying large bags as if they were on the run. Muyang held one of them by the hand, What's going on here, folks? Where are you all going? The man looked frightened, and upon seeing Muyang, he did not forget to remind Muyang kindly. Run! The demon is coming. If you don't leave, it will be too late. Muyang let go of the man's hand and looked at his back as he stumbled and fled. Muyang thought thoughtfully, is the demon he talked about is the target of my trial? That's a little too straightforward. With that in mind, Muyang closed his eyes and felt it. There was indeed an evil scent in the air. Suddenly he opened his eyes, and a brilliant light flashed in his eyes. Secretly, he said, here it comes. Sure enough, there were miserable screams, and children's cries came from the other end of the town. Muyang's figure flashed and appeared at the other end of the town in a blink of an eye. What came into view was a dark green, scaly monster. The monster was covered in scaly armor. It had horns on its head and a pair of wings on its back. It looked like both a dinosaur and a strange bird. It even exuded an evil aura. Is this the demon? The power level is around 100 or so. Muyang sensed it and roughly judged the opponent's power level. As Muyang arrived, he happened to witness the demon was doing evil. Gulp. The dinosaur-like demon opened its bloody mouth and swallowed a human in one bite. It chewed and spewed out a section of flame, which suddenly ignited a few thatch-built houses nearby. Ha 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 ha, what a pleasure. Woo. First, complete the orders of Demon King. How good it would be for the foolish humans to obey the Demon King's order. The dinosaur-like demon raised its head and spewed out blazing flames from its mouth. Suddenly, the corner of the town turned into a sea of purgatorial fire, with countless screams. Help me, someone helps me. I don't want to die. Mother, I'm scared. It's so hot, it hurts. The flames ignited many people's bodies. They were lying on the ground, rolling and struggling for their lives. Those who fled in panic were even more frightened. Some had left their bags behind many even abandoning their wives and children. Damn! A stern voice was heard. Muyang's figure appeared in front of the crowd. He first kicked those cowards who left their wives and children and then came to the dinosaur-like demon's side. As he looked at the wounded miserable state, crawling and howling, a fury flashed in his eyes. A key wave was struck out, so fast that the arrogant dinosaur-like demon didn't even realize it for a moment. With a puff, the key wave poured in from the chest. No, 
how could I die at the hands of a pitiful human? King Piccolo, will not let you go. The demon's ugly head looked incredulous, and its eyes were gradually losing their luster. Humph! Muyang snorted angrily. Another massive key wave hit the air. Countless brilliant lights flashed, and the demon's head turned into a cloud of smoke in the middle of the azure key wave. King Piccolo, is that the demon's superior? From the sight before him, it wasn't hard to deduce that Mr. Popo had sent him into a world that was supposed to be rampaged by demon clan. It was a place where human lives were like straws, full of demonic loaves and fishes, and King Piccolo must be the one he needed to defeat. Hero, thank you for killing the demon and saving everyone. You are a legendary martial arts practitioner, right? Only martial arts practitioners have the power to kill demons. Those town residents who had fled in a hurry saw that the demon had been killed. They came forward to flatter, which made Muyang frown upon their flattering faces. In particular, those people who had abandoned their wives and children to flee for their lives before ran over to kowtow to him, making Muyang feel somewhat unhappy. He snapped, Be quiet, all of you. Now, tell me, what the hell is going on here? Muyang appointed a random villager. The villager's expression was somewhat stunned. He didn't know if it was because he was chosen by Muyang or wondering why the masted in front of him didn't know anything. But he didn't dare to make a presumptuous guess. He was terrified of annoying the master in front of him, so he replied carefully, Master, the entire world is now ruled by the demons. Those demons are ferocious and bloodthirsty, taking pleasure in slaughtering humans all day long. Although the martial arts practitioners have united, they are still no match for the demons. Now that there is no place of peace in the entire world, we can only survive and run around, wherever it is safe to go. Muyang nodded at the words. He didn't think that the villagers would be sloppy with him on this matter because that was really unnecessary. At the same time, he also understood that the humans in this world might already fall to desperation. That demon clan just now had around 100 power level, and there was still an unknown number of such demons. No matter how strong humans were, they were no match for the demon clan. Go on. The villagers swallowed their saliva. They already treated Muyang as an ascetic who had been trained in the mountains for a long time without hearing the world's affairs. Those demons are endless in number. In the battle against them, the martial arts practitioners have retreated. Countless masters have perished on the battlefield. They are unbeatable, especially the leader of those demons, the great demon King Piccolo. Wait, did you say the great demon King Piccolo? Hearing this familiar name, Muyang's expression slightly stunned. Yes, yes. The villager replied apprehensively. Chapter 80 Great Demon King Piccolo Regarding this name, Muyang could only describe it like a thunderbolt. After hearing this name from the villagers, he suddenly realized what kind of world Mr. Popo had sent him to. This place was actually a world constructed with the great catastrophe that happened more than 250 years ago. He recalled the episode in the original story where Sun Goku was once sent hundreds of years ago by Mr. Popo with a machine when he was training in the lookout, so that he could meet Mutato. Muyang knew that he was in a similar situation. I see. Muyang waved his hand at the villagers in front of him. His mind had already been very clear. Afterward, he no longer negotiated with the villagers. Instead, he directly soared into the sky, speedily flying towards this world's core and tower. If this realm was really an illusion built based on the great demon King Piccolo ruling the world, then this must still be Earth with Korin Tower and Korin's existence. As for whether the lookout was existent, he was not sure. However, out of his trust in the lookout room's magic, he believed that this place should be interpreted according to historical facts. So here's the problem. Today's great demon King Piccolo was in a young and robust state. He even has a power level of 260, and Wiang was definitely no match for him. That was why he made a little confirmation of the current situation. Mr. Popo has given me a big challenge this time. 
I'm no match for Great Demon King Piccolo at this moment. Mr. Popo told him that he could only return if he defeated the strongest character in this illusion world. Other than the lookout that he didn't know if it existed or not, the strongest character here was undoubtedly the Great Demon King Piccolo. There was a swish, and a long bright line cut across the void. Everything you saw along the way was a purgatorial catastrophe. Black smoke was billowing, the fire was raging, and the demons were slaughtering countless lives. The air was filled with a sense of hostility. Muyang gently quirked his eyebrows as a thought flashed through his brain, strange, the cataclysms in history don't seem to be as cruel as the ones seen below, do they? Based on his knowledge of the original story, the strongest during the time of the great demon king Piccolo period was Piccolo himself. He alone created the terror that enveloped the world. Still, he didn't have as many demons under his command, as the scene before him presented. The number of demons in this world seemed to have been adjusted. How many times had they been doubled? However, it was useless to overthink now. Muyang concentrated and began to accelerate. Soon the Koran Tower appeared in front of him. Flying upwards along with the tower, Muyang ascended to the top of the tower. At this time, there was another person on the Koran Tower besides Koran. That person had a white beard and a white martial arts uniform. He was Mutato, who was studying the evil containment wave on top of the Koran Tower. Who are you? Koran was startled by the sudden appearance of Muyang, and his fat body shook like a blade of grass. Immortal Koran, and Mutato. Muyang jumped into the martial arts practice space with his eyes fixed on the two. Compared to Koran and Mutato that he knew. The two in front of him were exactly the same in terms of their scent and key attributes. This illusionary world was like an interception of real history and thus cloned. Do you know us? After a brief period of not knowing what to do, Koran sniffed out Muyang's human scent, and his expression calmed down. Kind of. You guys have a tremendous reputation. I know a little bit about it. Muyang replied without any doubt. When he thought about Koran, who looked frightened just now, Muyang wondered if he acted the same in history. Koran narrowed his eyes and looked at Muyang, with a shocked expression. I didn't expect there would be a young man as strong as you in this world. It's beyond my expectations. Perhaps you're the only one who could be a match for the great demon king Piccolo and the other demon kings. Another demon kings? Wasn't it just great demon king Piccolo? Muyang was puzzled. Hey, don't you know, there are two demon kings down there in the chaos world below. What? Muyang's heart was filled with amazement after hearing this. There was actually a demon king other than the great demon king Piccolo. How was that possible? Did the history I knew was a false one? Wait. Muyang suddenly reacted. Was this current world not completely deduced from historical facts, and there was special processing in it? From Koran's words, the speculation was pretty much solidified, and needless to say, it was all Mr. Popo's creation. A great demon king Piccolo had already left him with nowhere to go, and now there was actually another one. Mutato came over. Seeing that Muyang didn't know much about it, he explained, there are a total of two demon kings that are causing trouble in the world below. Besides the great demon king Piccolo, there is also a demon named Maluko Ho. Those demons in the lower realm are mainly the ones he brought out from the demon realm after opening the door to the demon realm. So that's how it is. No wonder there are so many demons. Just great demon King Piccolo alone can't create that number. It turns out there's another demon, King. Muyang suddenly realized and immediately felt intimidated. Great demon King Piccolo alone was something he could not deal with, and now with the addition of a demon king he felt like all he could is to roll up and leave. Young man, I hope you can join hands with me to save this world. Mutato sincerely offered an invitation. Muyang looked on indifferently. Instead of agreeing to it immediately, he asked, when something this big happens in the lower realm, don't the kami at the lookout care about it? In the original story, the great demon king Piccolo and the kami relationship was the same. 
Furthermore, the great demon king Piccolo couldn't destroy the entire world, so Kami and Mr. Popo didn't intervene. But now, after another demon clan intervened, the human race was on the verge of extinction. How could the lookout just stand by and watch? Just to Muyang's surprise, after hearing his words, both Corin and Mutato looked confused. Young man, what is the lookout you're talking about? Hey! The corner of Muyang's mouth twitched. He now understood the layout of the world. It turned out that there was no lookout here at all. No, nothing. Muyang shook his head. He no longer dwelled on the lookout issue and looked towards Mutato. Do you plan to learn the evil containment wave to fight the great demon King Piccolo? I do have the idea, but the move I'm working on can only be used against great demon King Piccolo alone. And nobody else can deal with Maluko Ho. Releasing the evil containment wave alone required a lot of physical strength and was almost a fierce life-for-life -life move. Before Muyang appeared, Mutato was desperate for the future of this world. Fortunately, Another strong man had arisen among the humans at a critical moment. So, there would be someone who could handle Malukoho when he sacrificed himself. Can I learn too? Of course. Mutato brightened and cautiously said, The move I tried to create is called Evil Containment Wave, but it has a fatal flaw. Once the wielder releases the Evil Containment Wave, he can also die along with the sealed target. That's pretty clear. Muyang gave him an unexpected glance. A matter of life and death is at stake. So, of course, I have to make it clear. Muyang listened with a hint of a sigh on his face. Frankly speaking, if he were in his place, there was no chance that he might not have told such a secret at all. In such a comparison, only a martial arts practitioner with a noble character as Mutato would be qualified to ascend to the heavens after death. Chapter 81 So Immortal Korin, how is the strength of that demon named Maluko Ho, and how does it compare to the Great Demon King Piccolo? Great Demon King Piccolo's power level was around 260. Since Maluko Ho was able to cholera the world with the Great Demon King Piccolo and cause such great harm, he must be powerful as well. It's strong. It's probably stronger than Great Demon King Piccolo. Corin shook his head bitterly. As far as I know, the great demon King Piccolo had brief contact with Maluko Ho. Then the two became clear and maintained some sort of understanding, but in terms of territory size alone, Maluko Ho's range of control is much larger, occupying 60%. In other words, Maluko Ho must be a little stronger than the great demon King Piccolo, but it shouldn't be significantly stronger. Otherwise, the two couldn't maintain that understanding. Yes. Corin agreed with Muyang's judgment. Muyang nodded his head and began to organize his thoughts. Mr. Popo's request was for him to defeat the strongest in this world. This so-called defeat definitely didn't mean as simple as sealing, but killing the opponent in an honorable manner. Otherwise, this trial would become meaningless. Of course, Muyang still had to learn the evil containment wave, as well as the Thunder Shock Surprise and Tri-Beam. These moves were extremely powerful and could provide a reference for Muyang's future development. The priority is to rush the training. Killings are happening every second in the lower realm. We don't have that much time. Mutato blew his beard, and his face was eager. Although the matter of training couldn't be accomplished overnight, they really couldn't afford to procrastinate. Yes we can't afford to delay any longer. We must quickly figure out a trick to deal with those two demon kings. Corin reacted and stopped engaging in nutritious repetition with Muyang. He didn't even ask questions about Muyang's origins. In his opinion, as long as Muyang was human, that was enough. The peaceful aura about him indicated that he was an aid to humans. Watching Corin and Mutato turn to continue their learning about the evil containment wave, Muyang stood beside them quietly watching. He managed to put himself in their shoes and understand their feelings. Although he told himself that everything here was just an illusion and that the two in front of them were just special NPCs. 
the reality that even their breath, fear, hunger, fatigue, and pain sensations could be simulated could no longer be described merely as an illusion. This was simply an alternate reality world. He just didn't know if getting hurt or dying here meant getting hurt or dying for real, as well. Even the great demon King Piccolo alone would be hard for him to defeat with his current strength, not to mention adding a more powerful Maluko Ho. Stimulated by multiple nerve senses, Muyang felt the same real sense of urgency in his heart. Perhaps this current situation was the greatest challenge he had ever faced. But even if it was a challenge, he wasn't afraid in the slightest. Since it was a challenge, then let it be more intense. A flame of determination was burning in the eyes. In the following days, Muyang stayed at the top of Korin Tower to train with Mutato. Although his strength had surpassed this current Mutato and Korin, Muyang was still learning from the two. Particularly when developing new moves, the kind of experience accumulated wasn't necessarily related to his strength. Each time the night came, Muyang would open the acceleration space again and continue his training in the acceleration space. With the dense key lingering around his body, it replenished his consumption during the day. At this time, his ability to open the acceleration space was much stronger than before. With four times the amount of time added, Muyang had almost had an extra day of training compared to others. Soon, Muyang had learned all of the powerful techniques, such as the Thunder Shock Surprise and Tri Beam. Evil Containment Wave Without warning, a dark green spiral of key waves appeared in Korin Tower's practice field. Hovering overhead, it seemed to distort the space. However, it only lasted for a moment before the green key wave seemed to take a back seat, dissipating like a dreamy bubble into a mist. Cough cough. Matato was sweating profusely, and his face turned pale. Muyang saw the situation and quickly handed him half a senzu bean to restore his strength. Hurry up and eat it. Thank you. Mutato took the senzu beans and quickly regained his strength after eating it. He then sighed, it's still not enough. This level of evil containment wave won't be able to trap Great Demon King Piccolo or Maluko Ho. It's fine. We can continue. I'm sure you'll be able to perfect the evil containment wave. Muyang believed, as in the original story, Mutato eventually succeeded in completing the training on the evil containment wave. However, this illusionary world had changed dramatically compared to the original world. His memories of those may not be accurate here. Mutato smiled as his strength had completely recovered. It's thanks to your senzu beans that I had the opportunity to cast the evil containment wave. Otherwise, this training wouldn't have been so fast. I didn't expect there to be such a miraculous thing in this world. Korin also nodded beside him, that's right, this thing called senzu beans is really miraculous. I don't know where you got it from. Muyang smiled without saying anything. He seemed a bit profound. In fact, the Senzu beans came from Korin Tower from the real world. Not only was there no lookout in this trial world, but there also weren't even any Senzu beans. Muyang secretly thought that it was a pity. Otherwise, he could have raided some more Senzu beans. He just didn't know if he could get the Senzu beans back after using them on the people in the illusionary world. Muyang You've learned both the Thunder Shock Surprise and Tri Beam, your strength should have increased by a large amount, right? Korin changed the subject and looked at Muyang seriously. Muyang nodded and said, My key has indeed increased, but it is not yet a match for Great Demon King Piccolo and Maluko Ho. Hey! At this point, Muyang suddenly closed his mouth and looked in a direction. His face became gloomy. What's going on? Korin saw Muyang suddenly stopped talking and asked gently, and looked in a direction as well, then frowned. There's strong key approaching towards us. Oh, my god. It's Malukoho's key. Damn it. How did he find out about Korin Tower? Korin sucked in a breath of cold air. The fur all over his body suddenly trembled, and his voice trembled as he spoke. Korin Towers was located in Malukoho's territory and Malukoho was heading towards them. There was no doubt their whereabouts had been revealed. 
Immortal Corin, did you say that Malukoho is heading this way? Mutato couldn't yet sense Malukoho's key, but from Corin and Wiang's conversation, he heard the proper meaning. That's right, Malukoho is here. What are we going to do? The Corin Tower's borders won't be able to stop him. Corin was anxious. The magic of Corin Tower was only capable of intercepting all climbers who used external forces so that they would never reach the top of the tower. But to the powerful Malukoho, this layer of testing was useless. It's too late to say anything now. We need to leave quickly. Muyang's mind was spinning extremely fast. None of them was a match for that Malukoho right now. A hard fight was definitely not a wise choice. Muyang was not a pedantic person. Before he was sure that there was a victory, moving as soon as possible was the most important thing to do. That's right. Let's hurry up and leave. At this time, Corin was less scrupulous. He was busy rummaging through the box to bring some useful things with him, then beckoned a golden somersault cloud and threw them up. Go quickly, run as far away as you can. Corin flew in the front of the somersault cloud, and behind him, Muyang and Mutato looked at each other and followed. However, after flying for a while, they sensed that the evil scent behind them was getting closer. Oh no, Malukoho is going to catch up. Corin's forehead fur was ruffled by the wind, as he kept looking back. Chapter 82 Hula A black shadow chased after them from behind. Soon, it arrived behind Muyang and the others. Red blood hair, green skin, covered with strange tattoo-like patterns, a pair of green eyes emitting bloodthirsty light, Malukujo stopped in front of Muyang and the others with a hoop. Shit! Corin shrieked and cried out like a lost kid. Is he Malukujo? Muyang didn't have much of an expression as he quietly let go of his key wave to test it. However, what he got in return was an icy coldness. What a scary guy! When Wiang felt the burst of coldness emanating from his opponent's body, he shivered. His muscles felt as if they were frozen, and his heart sank, it seemed like a vicious battle was coming next. Hee <laughs> hee, you guys are the last martial arts practitioners on earth, and it was so easy for me to find you. Malukujo licked his lower lips, his cold words filled with killing intent. Suddenly he looked at Muyang, a strange color flashing in his eyes. He felt this young man was the strongest of the three, there is actually such a master among the earthlings. Although it was still a far cry from himself and the demon named Piccolo, among the generally weak earthlings, Muyang's power level with more than 200 could be called astonishing. Kid, are you interested in following and serving this lord? I can spare your life. Malukujo squeezed out a smile and looked at Muyang kindly, as he extended an invitation. No way. Ah, what a pity. Malukujo's face was quite regretful as he spoke apologetically. However, when he said he that, his body immediately emitted a sickeningly dark atmosphere. Spatial fluctuations rippled slightly. Among the ripples like water, the body suddenly flashed. Muyang and the others hadn't even reacted yet, but Malukujo had already arrived in front of them. His green face was almost clinging to them. Die. Like a nightmarishly cold voice, Malukujo slowly lifted his hand as one palm poked forward. The speed wasn't fast, along with a splendid glow soaring through the air, radiant ki covering over towards Muyang and the others. What? Boom. It was too late for anyone to react. Surging key came from all directions. The key was very violent and turbulent. Soon the three of them were drawn into the key vortex. Muyang immediately shouted at the situation and opened his arms to resist. Heavenly sky beam. Countless crescent-shaped key wave blades blossomed out. It puffed out, strangling and destroying the swirling energy. After doing all this, Muyang... Mutato, and Corin leaned close together, watching Malukujo vigilantly. Malukujo was surprised, but his expression didn't change at all. In his eyes, the resistance of Muyang and the others was as ridiculous as a praying mantis. Dot. Wow. Malukujo's figure moved quickly. 
This time his speed became even faster. Muyang's eyes kept rotating to catch his opponent's movements, but this time, the difference in strength between them was highlighted as Muyang could only saw a blurred flash of light that kept appearing and disappearing. He never managed to observe the exact whereabouts. Shoo! A green flash and a creepy, enlarged face appeared in front of his eyes. Muyang's eyes flashed in horror. His body had taken a violent blow. It seemed as if it had been hit by a boulder, injuring its internal organs instantly. He puffed out a mouthful of blood, and his face had turned pale. At that moment, Malukujo began to move towards Mutato and Corin to kill them. Clouds of blood splashed out, scattering like rain from the sky. Malukujo's attack was so swift and brutal that Mutaro and Corin didn't have time to react before the terrifying key penetrated through their bodies. Hehe, he, those two have been taken care of, there's only one left. A pair of green eyes without a ripple twinkle. The killing had become a routine for him. Bastard. Upon seeing with his own eyes that Mutato and Corin had died at the hands of Malukujo, Muyang's eyes turned red, and his anger rose to the limit. Heavenly Sky Beam. Thunder Shock Surprise. Tri Beam. Heavenly Sky Beam. All the tricks that he knew were used one by one. For a time, blue, golden, white, and all kinds of ki swept down in an overwhelming wave. These ki were full of Muyang's anger. They intertwined together, forming a heavenly net that struck towards Malukujo. Upon facing that terrifying ki, Malukujo's eyes flashed with a strange color. Then a sneer crept onto his face, this ridiculous earthling. Did he think that this weak ki could hurt the great lord Malukujo? So, with a wave of his hand, a black ball of ki appeared in his palm. It pushed forward lightly towards the mixed ki and exploded together with the mixed ki. Rumble. A loud sound resounded through the world. A terrifying ball of light was suddenly expanded and generated in the void. The chaotic ki reacted terrifyingly at this time. It was like a megastorm that instantly swept away everything in a radius of tens of kilometers. The terrifying ki wave was still spreading. Because it happened in the high altitude, this key wave was transmitted exceptionally far. It was continuously spreading out towards the rest of the world. Gradually, the glow dissipated, and only a faint cloud of smoke remained. But at this point, only Malukujo was left in the Thousand Mile Dome, and Muang's figure was already nowhere to be seen. Humph! I can't believe he escaped. Malukujo stared at the blank sky in a daze. His face was so gloomy that it was about to drip ink. He thought that his opponent was sharpening his sword to avenge his companion's death. It turned out, it was just a cover. He was annoyed, then sneered, that human boy. Did he really think he could escape me? As he said that, Malukujo grunted, and a dark smoke spread out in his hand. As soon as the smoke appeared, it dissipated into a few wisps of smoke. Malukujo opened his dark green eyes and turned around to disappear into the turquoise blue sky. A hundred kilometers away in the wilderness. Muyang's wretched figure appeared behind a stone wall as he coughed out a mouthful of blood. His face turning pale, and sighed, that Malukujo is actually so strong that even Mutato and Corin lost their lives in his hands. Before the real battle had even started, his team had lost two people first making Muyang's heart very heavy. He's afraid it would be tough for him to defeat Great Demon King Piccolo and Malukujo. Chapter 83 The impression that Malukujo gave to Muyang was a feeling of terror. Although he had never fought Great Demon King Piccolo, Muyang intuitively believed that Malukujo was much more powerful than the Great Demon King Piccolo. As for why they were still able to maintain a good understanding and be distinct from each other, Muyang was not sure. Forget the rest. For Nu, recovering your strength is important. With that thought, Muyang calmed his mind. He didn't use his Senzu Bean. Instead, he opened a passage to enter the acceleration space. In the surrounding foggy acceleration space, Muyang's figure appeared on the flat ground. As soon as it appeared, the fine key air surged towards his body. Here, 
he could wholeheartedly heal his injuries without worrying that someone would find him. Muyang puffed out a little bit of ki into his body, and his face gradually turned red. Muyang was just an earthling and didn't have the scion's constant growing physique. So, the senzu beans were more of a life-saving treasure to him than they were a tool to break through. So as long as it wasn't life-threatening or if he really couldn't get out of a situation, he would try his best to conserve senzu beans. When injured, he would enter the acceleration space and use the key inside to recuperate. To a certain extent, this was also continuously increasing the toughness of the body cells. Twenty hours had passed in the acceleration space, and five hours in the outside world. Muyang's body had recovered completely. He then stood up, his bones crackling all over his body, and the key in his body seemed to have increased a little. With his body recovered, Muyang now had time to consider what to do next. Through contact with Maluko Ho, though he was in a state of being ravaged by him, Muyang was able to see the gap between them clearly. That Maluko Ho's strength was definitely even more powerful than the young Great Demon King Piccolo. Great Demon King Piccolo only has 260 power levels, while Malukoho had a little over 280 close to 300. Compared to his power level that was only 200, this was quite a huge difference. Muyang was confident that he could challenge the Great Demon King Piccolo, who had a 260 power level. Even if he couldn't defeat him, retreating with ease would not be difficult. However, when facing Malukoho, he surprisingly had to use some fraudulent tactics to do so. I'm still too weak. If I don't increase my strength quickly, this trial mission won't be completed. After figuring out their gap, Muyang painfully resolved to find a place to train hard for a while first. Hey, knowing that Great Demon King Piccolo and Malukoho level, if they were placed in the universe, they would be a mere miscellaneous level. He won't even be considered as cannon fodder if he couldn't even defeat them. Probably in this crisis-ridden Dragon Ball world, it would be better for him to change his profession to a chef before it was too late. He could just retire and sleep peacefully. After coming out of the acceleration space, Muyang first observed his surroundings and found the desolate plain uninhabited. He then chose a direction to go through, and soon entered a stone forest. The scene here was dry as a desert. A few pieces of stone pillars like bamboo shoots connected together. A few stalagmites between some holes, which could be used as a shelter from the wind and rain. Such strange shaped rocks and stones can be found everywhere on earth in the Dragon Ball world. Muyang made his decision to train here first. Of course, the real place of training was inside the acceleration space. This was just as a place to stay regularly. After his spiritual strength was restored, his body swooshed into the acceleration space again. Every time he felt deprived, he would come out of the acceleration space. Day after day, Muyang felt that his strength was slowly increasing. One day, in a bright space, a unique small world was formed within a kilometer radius. Muyang stood at the central location. Suddenly, he opened his eyes then took a stance and shouted loudly toward a direction. Tri-beam. Buzz. Bright pillars of ki emitted from the two overlapping hands, sweeping towards the front, its power was magnificent and tremendous. After the tri-beam was released, Muyang flashed again in successive instantaneous movements. He appeared in the position where the tri-beam was passing by and assumed a defensive stance. Heavenly sky beam. The crescent-shaped key blade was like a silver moon, ghostly in the air, suddenly bursting with terrifying light under that beautiful silver glow. Rumble. The two terrifying key waves met in the air, and violently exploded into a massive explosion. The terrifying explosion hurled out a ring of shockwaves visible to the naked eye like a collapsing star. As the smoke dispersed, Muyang raised his head to look at the sky not far away that was constantly tumbling with aftershocks. He patted his chest to flick off the ashes produced by the explosion. A brilliant light suddenly flashed in his eyes, and his body slammed fiercely. Click! A golden arc of electricity covered his palm and danced between his hands. Thunder shock surprise! 
a wave-like rise and fall were suddenly created in the void the golden palm brought forth an intense flash of electricity, creating a terrifying wave in the air. When everything calmed down, Muyang stood on the spot to recuperate his body. He then used the scouter to probe himself. The data displayed after a soft tick-tick-tick sounded. Power level 246. Muyang nodded his head. He's getting closer to the great demon king Piccolo and Malukoho. At this time, a burst of tiredness came, so it was time to open the acceleration space. Outside of the acceleration space, a round moon hung in the sky. It was nighttime outside, and the white moon was as bright as a plate. It shone brightly, surrounded by flickering stars. A Milky Way hung from northeast to southwest, like a gauze dotting the night sky. After taking out one of the animals he had hunted during the day and finding wood to set up a fire, Muyang used key waves to ignite the wood. He enjoyed a dinner with high nutritional value. He then lay down to sleep with a piece of animal skin under his pillow. The next day, the sun rose high. Muyang once again began a new day of training. He was practicing a punching technique, which almost became a habit, to calm his mind. Suddenly, a piece of evil aura appeared in his perception, fast, and had already emerged in the wasteland sky. Is he coming? With a gleam in his eyes, Muyang raised his head. He indeed saw a bright red figure appear in his sight. With long blood red hair and green skin. It was Maluko Ho, the demon king. His power level was 285. Hey, Earthling, I've finally found you. Malukoho squinted his eyes with evil intent. Muyang calmly looked at Malukoho, secretly moving the key in his body, ready to attack at any time. After this period of training, Muyang felt that he already had the strength to fight Malukoho. You always call me Earthling. You are a demon who lived on Earth, aren't you Earthling too? Muyang frowned and asked. The Earth was connected to many strange worlds but most of those were spaces attached to the Earth. Even the Demon Realm area that was close to Earth was too remote from the Demon Realm center, so most of the demons living in it were from the Earth. Chapter 84 Ha 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 ha, Malukoho laughed. He landed from the sky and stood three meters away from Muyang. Ridiculous, how could a king like me be a creature from a reckless planet like Earth? This king comes from planet to command which is far more advanced than Earth. A planet like Earth only deserves to be a colonial planet ruled by a king like me. The words were full of disdain for the Earth as if only planet to command that he spoke of was of the highest class. Planet to command. Muyang shook his head. He hadn't heard of this planet's name, but judging from Malukoho's 285 power level value, it wasn't much more advanced than Earth. According to the universal standards in the universe, it could be considered a low-level planet, so there was nothing to be proud of. How did you get to Earth? Did you come here alone? Well, there's no harm in telling you. If it wasn't for the malfunction of that aircraft I was riding in, I wouldn't have descended to this backward place. Without caring whether his opponent knew the truth or not, Malukoho made his point. If you're an alien, how did you become a demon? Well, Malukoho was about to say when suddenly his face changed. It seemed a little scrupulous, and he said grimly, Why are you asking, boy? I definitely won't be able to escape anyway, so what do you have to worry about? Muyang looked at Malukoho and calmly said, Humph, seeing as this king has worked hard to find you for some days, there's no harm in telling you. The reason why I became a demon is that back then, the corner of Malukoho's mouth curled up with an indifferent smile. He recalled the past, he was about to explain why he became a demon when a brilliant light came out of nowhere towards him. Muyang seized the opportunity and attacked decisively. Tri Beam Without any more reservations, a vicious attack swept in. After releasing the Tri Beam, Muyang bashed the fallen demon and launched several more rounds of attacks in a row, only to hear a loud puffy sound resounding through the sky, as a terrifying tornado running from the sky all the way to the ground. Ah! 
Malukoho was caught off guard and let out a miserable and angry roar. The blood red key was holding open a shield to ward off Muyang's attack. Surrounded by pitch black key, Malukoho's figure was wretched. His face began to contort with rage, as he spat out a few words coldly, You have truly angered Lord Malukoho. I will break you into pieces. The response he received was silence and an even more frantic attack. Upon facing Malukoho's threat, Muyang didn't pay any attention to it. He knew the truth of an anger attack, and he had no intention to answer. He only wanted to defeat Malukoho by all means now. Even if he couldn't be defeated, it would be fine if he was seriously injured. As Muyang's body quickly traveled through the void, the places he passed became blurred like flowing water. He stretched out his palm and unleashed another attack. Thunder Shock Surprise This was a domain-level attack, accompanied by a golden electric light rising from the sky. Muyang smirked and continued to attack after a successful strike. Pfft, a smear of blood spurted out of Malukoho's mouth, and his body was blown away by Muyang's attack. In terms of power level, Muyang only had 246, while Malukoho had 285. However, in terms of level, Muyang was much higher than Malukoho. The two cancelled each other out, actually causing them to fight on equal footing. Although it was still Muyang who fell short, it no longer had the same cloudy difference as when they first met. Damn it! Malukoho's face turned grim as he wretchedly found his opportunity. After all, Malukoho's strength was above Muyang's. So, after the initial beating he took, Malukoho, who was gradually recovering, began to find his fighting rhythm. Peng peng, boom. The two silhouettes quickly flashed in the sky. Both of them extremely fast, only a few streaks of electricity flew. Muyang slammed into Malukoho, a light blue arcing key wave swooped down. It landed an accurate attack right on top of Malukoho. An angry fire flashed in Malukoho's eyes. Click. Click. Malukoho wore his hair loose and smiled grimly. After taking Muyang's attack hard, he turned around and leaned up, his palm slicing through the air with a snorting sound. Cough. Muyang's face changed abruptly. His throat constricted, and a mouthful of blood spilled out of the corner of his mouth. Bang! All his defenses crumbled. The key in Muyang's hand was reduced to a bubble in an instant. It was like a falling meteor emitting a brilliant and colorful luster. Hee <laughs> hee! Damn humans! Go to hell! Malukoho laughed arrogantly. His spewing black energy spread out as he laughed. Then with a point of his toes, Malukoho flew through the air, chasing toward the place where Muyang had fallen. However, at this moment, a sneer appeared on Muyang's face. Hoo hoo! A soft sound of beans shattering. Muyang quietly bit into the senzu beans that he had held in his mouth beforehand. Suddenly under the effect of the senzu beans, Muyang's strength returned to its peak. Facing the swooping Malukoho, Muyang clenched his fist tightly, all the key gathered in his fist, shining with a bright white light. You're the one who's going to die. Muyang shouted loudly and appeared in front of Malukoho with a swoosh. He clutched his entire body, and he smashed down towards Malukoho with his key. Malukoho's face suddenly changed dramatically as he watched his dying enemy suddenly resurrected in place and launched a full attack on him. At this point, Malukoho didn't have time to think. He retracted his hands and rested them on his chest, feeling a hint of fear from the incoming attack. The loud rumbling and thunderclaps pierced his eardrums, and a new sun suddenly rose in the sky. Bang! A glittering crack appeared from Malukoho's chest. His body seemed to blast like a cannonball, flying over a thousand meters in the air. He then hit the ground and kept sliding for hundreds of meters before plunging deep into the rock layer. A huge impact trail several meters deep and wide, with a hundred meters long, was left on the surface. Ahem, Earthling, you really impress me, but you're too naive to kill me like that. Even the great demon King Piccolo wouldn't dare to make such a faux pas in front of me. So, how could I lose at your hands? 
Malukomo ricketed his body. Blood hanging from the corners of his mouth, and his whole body crackled. However, his appearance had changed drastically from the previous one. A reddish glow clanged on his body's cracked stripes surface, like a mysterious spell that looked disturbing. He sneered, I'd like to see how many times you can recover. After saying that, Malukoho ignored the injuries on his body and bounced up from the impact crater, attacking Muyang like lightning. Muyang's face became ugly when he faced Malukoho, who was attacking once again. Chapter 85 Muyang didn't expect that this Malukoho's skin was thick enough that he could actually stand up after taking such a massive attack. He even knew how to make this weird move, similar to power up. A reddish glow mended the cracked streaks on the body, giving him a brand new body. His strength, which had been greatly decayed, was also fully restored to its peak after the power up. This skill was similar to the great demon King Piccolo and even the name Qian, except that the name Qian consumed Qi, so Muyang wondered what the price Malukoho paid for it. Thirty years after the River East, and thirty years after the River West, everything seemed to be back to the original state. This situation, this had the same effect as taking the Senzu beans. Muyang didn't have time to think. He took a deep breath and responded to Maluko Ho, who was attacking once again. Come on! He roared. Rumble! A loud sound reverberated in the sky. The impact from a key wave paired with a bombardment spread out, brilliantly illuminating the entire sky. The battle had lasted for half an hour. Peng peng peng. The two sides continued to fight. Their attacks were coming one after another, often just after a move fell, the follow-up attack immediately trailed. Each strike was ruthless and decisive, as if they did not leave the opponent a single chance to breathe. Muyang did so because he knew that Malukoho couldn't use that power up again. It was probably some kind of secret technique that could be performed to restore his full strength. Although there may be a price to pay afterward, against a full-blown Malukoho, there was still a hammer. Malukoho was even more so. He knew that Muyang had a full recovery weapon and that Muyang knew his affairs. His secret technique had a drawback that he couldn't hide. I must kill this kid. He can't stay here. Kill. The two of them coincidentally had the same thought. Almost at the same moment, both of them attacked simultaneously, their bodies transformed into two lightning bolts constantly exchanging in the sky. Boom boom. In the blink of an eye, countless more rounds were exchanged. At this time, Muyang's entire body was incinerated in the battle. His upper body was bare, a piece of muscle taut and hardened, as his muscles were trembling. His breathing became heavy, and after several rounds of intense consumption, Muyang's ki had been mostly depleted. His rhythm began to slow down a little. However, with his level and ability to use his moves in a watertight manner, his ki consumption was much less than Malukoho. After enduring several rounds of Muyang's strong attacks, even though his overall strength was higher than Muyang's, he couldn't do anything about his opponent's cunning way of dodging like a loach during the fight. So, he was now on the verge of exhaustion. Compared to Muyang, Malukoho was even more exhausted. The last time he recovered his full strength, he didn't really recover to his full strength, it was only 90% at best. He would definitely lose if the fight continued. Damn, damn, damn earthlings, how could I lose to you? After several successive wild bombardments, his opponent was still standing firm in front of him, making Malukoho's face darkened a bit. His conviction began to crumble. He even wondered if his guess was correct. Did his opponent actually possess more strength than he did? This couldn't go on, he would only die if he continued to fight. When he thought of this, Malukoho's face became gloomy. Does the great Lord Malukoho have no choice but to run away? His face was torn. He really didn't want to take this shameful step, but his heart was hardened. He knew it was the only way he could go. Ah! <laughs> what a painful choice! Malukoho roared furiously, looking like a maniac. On the other side, when Wiang saw him roaring furiously, his heart tightened, 
and he began to defend with all his strength. Who knew, maybe Malukoho fiercely blasted a key wave towards him. However, Malukoho unexpectedly turned around and ran away. Muyang was dumbfounded. How could he just run away like that if he really wanted to run away? Why bother making such a big scene? Those who didn't know would think that he was going to fight for his life. Such a drama queen. Upon seeing the black dots continued to fly away and get smaller, Muyang didn't chase after him. Instead, he breathed in his spot and prepared to recover his strength. If he failed to defeat Malukoho in this battle, there would be another one. He didn't have to end it right now because time was on his side. After a while, Muyang felt that something was wrong. The black dot that flew far away and became smaller had actually become bigger again. Did Malukoho return? What was going on here? Weren't he going to leave me alone for now? Muyang fixed his eyes, and sure enough, he could see it was Malukoho. He was back. This is impossible. How can I, Malukoho, be easily defeated in your hands? In front of him, Malukoho's face was stiff. His eyes stared blankly at Muyang. Muyang, hey. After Malukoho finished his words, suddenly, his face became distorted, and his body began to bulge. I'm going to kill you. Let's all die together. Those who killed by the demons will not have peace even in the other world. Malukoho said mechanically. His body grew more bulbous as he spoke. The cracked red streaks on his torso gradually became brighter. This is not good. As he looked at the determination and evil intent on his opponent's face, Muyang felt a hint of coldness for no reason. Suddenly, he immediately realized what his opponent was thinking, this fool, knowing he couldn't win, he wanted to blow himself up. Even if he were to die, he would have to squeeze his back. What kind of torture did this Malukoho commit? He was just escaped, now he returned and wanted to die along with Muyang. This wasn't the result that Muyang wanted. He was afraid of being stunned, and he also didn't want to die. The first thing he thought of was retreating. However, it was already too late, Malukoho's body had already swelled up. In the next second, terrifying ki that was enough to destroy a 10 km radius exploded out. Damn it! The sudden ki coming from behind swept Muyang in. Muyang turned pale. He couldn't disengage in time and was still covered by the key from Malukoho's self-destruct. Ah! The sharp pain of his flesh hit his brain. In the next second, it was as if his brain had stopped working. A moment later, the explosion ended, but at this time, the entire world also seemed to fall into a strange stasis as Muyang died. In a spiral, the world began to collapse, and everything dissipated like a dream bubble. The world seemed to begin reforming. Well. He didn't know how much time had passed. Muyang's fingers moved, and when he climbed up, he suddenly found that the scene around him was very familiar. The mountains were clear and beautiful. The water was flowing in the dense forest, and birds stopped in the trees from time to time, making a long and a short call. This was the place where he had entered the illusionary world before. How did he return here by himself? Oh yeah, he was dead. Malukoho's self-destructing key had strangled him. Muyang touched his head as he recalled what had happened. However, the last scene was only a bit of a blur, and Malukoho's departure and return were also quite confusing. Forget it, let's not think about it for now. Muyang looked around with some doubts. This was indeed the place where he descended. He shook his fist as the surging key made him feel incomparably real. His strength didn't weaken. It was still the same strength he had when he fought with Malukoho. As he walked along the mountain path out of the forest, Muayang entered a town that wasn't too busy. The people on the road were in a hurry, carrying large bags that seemed to be running. In the meantime, Muayang raised his eyebrows and said, this was the village that was attacked by the demons. Sure enough, what happened next to this place was exactly the same as what happened before. A demon covered in scaly armor with flames spewing from its mouth was torturing the villagers here. 
Chapter 86 Was this what it meant to be in the place of trials? As long as the trial mission's object was not defeated and killed, even if you were dead, the entire world would start over an infinite number of times? Wasn't that like a never-ending prison of time? Of course, this was not necessarily bad for the determined martial arts practitioners, perhaps even a dream place for them to train. Mu Yang thought as he walked towards the demon in the village. He ignored the urgent shouts and discouragement from the villagers and walked up to the demon. Ha ha ha, there's actually a self-surrendering human. The scaly monster saw Mu Yang approaching and laughed proudly. He was about to open his bloody mouth and swallow him, but Mu Yang lightly raised his palm. Electric light flashed, and his line of sight broke. It split in two, then moved up and down in a dislocation. No, no way. The demon's face was filled with astonishment. It suddenly realized that its head had been split in two by the opponent. Its consciousness gradually plunged into darkness. History is repeating itself. Muyang smiled indifferently. Now that he already knew this illusionary world would not actually threaten his life, Muyang was completely unleashed. It seemed like an illusion, just like a dream, perhaps this was the illusionary world's true meaning. Ignoring the horrified and adoring gazes of the people around him, Muyang leaped into the air. This time, he didn't head towards Korin Tower, instead, he sought out another key that permeated the air and flew towards the south. There was the lair of the great demon king Piccolo. He had already made contact with Maluko Ho. This time, Muyang planned to meet the great demon king Piccolo. As for Maluko Ho, Muyang already had a rough understanding of him. Maluko Ho said he came from planet to command. Although he didn't know why an alien would become a demon after descending to Earth, the life in this illusory world had evolved based on the history of 250 years ago, which meant that, in the real history, Malukoho must have been a character as well. As Muyang thought of what Malukoho said about the aircraft malfunction, the first thing that came to Muyang's mind was the wreckage aircraft that had crashed in the valley inside the primitive mountain. The scouter on Muyang's hand was discovered from that pile of wreckage. It was already a bit strange that no corpse was found on the ship at that time. It turned out the alien who came to Earth didn't die on the spot, instead, he lived on Earth, which could be Malukoho. As to why there was no record of Malukoho in later history, he guessed that it might have been disposed of by Kami or Mr. Popo after Malukoho became a demon. Because Malukujo was different from Great Demon King Piccolo, there was a reason for Kami or Mr. Popo to take direct action. This world didn't have the lookout, Kami or Mr. Popo, which naturally evolved into a situation where the two demon kings were running the world. A town in the south. All the humans in the town had died, so what came into view was a pale and desolate scene. In the northwest corner of the town, there was a mountain peak. The grass and trees around it were falling off, and crows were singing. The place was covered with white bones, and there was a palace made of white bones standing there. At night time, the cold wind whined and chirped, which appeared incomparably frightening. Suddenly a flash crossed the sky. Muyang sought the evil scent of the great demon King Piccolo and when he landed at the entrance of the White Bone Palace, the demon guardians immediately spotted him. Those demons were all subordinates created by the great demon King Piccolo, they had green skin and scales. Who are you? The demon guards shouted forward. However, what greeted them was a radiant key wave. Boom. Boom. Brilliant key exploded at the entrance of the palace. Muyang's key wave was not something these demons with 100 power levels could resist. In a split second, countless demons died in the key wave's explosion, and the palace's door was blown open. Muyang stepped into the palace with dignity. The inside of the palace was dimly lit, with shadowy bonfires lit on both sides the choking smell of kerosene permeating the corridors. Muyang frowned and walked until he reached the innermost part of the palace. In the middle of a spacious hall, he saw the great demon king Piccolo was sitting on top of the throne. It had green skin, black eyes, dark red muscle stripes outlining its arms and abdomen, and two tentacle-like things on its head. 
This was the young great demon King Piccolo, whose real identity was the name Kian. At this time, great demon King Piccolo slightly closed his eyes, and his hands were on the white bone throne. When he saw Muyang come in, he opened his eyes, and his expression was indifferent, what an ignorant human. How many batches of you are coming to die? But that's okay, a constant battle will only give me a lot of fun, and watching you all come one by one to die will give me some relief. Humph! Muyang responded to him with a cold snort. This great demon king Piccolo, in front of him, really thought he was the great demon king. Didn't he know that the great demon kings in fairy tales like this would all be killed by the brave ones in the end? Oh, you're quite strong, though. The great demon king Piccolo shook his head with a faint smile. Great demon king Piccolo. Without saying many words, Muyang directly let go of his key. Suddenly, overshadowing key filled the entire palace, and the great demon king Piccolo abruptly opened his eyes wide, his smile stagnant, and his face turned ugly. This world actually has a strong human like you. The great demon king Piccolo was shocked, and his eyes flashed with killing intent. Let's fight. If this were to face a real enemy, it would definitely not be a sensible move for Muyang to be the first to reveal his cards. However, this was the illusionary world, death would just be a do-over for him, plus the great demon king Piccolo's overall strength might not be stronger than his own. Of course, he had to take advantage of such a good trial opportunity. Therefore, using this place's characteristics, he had to enhance his combat ability and constantly identify his problems. You're looking for your own death. The great demon king Piccolo said coldly. An icy coldness was released, instantly cancelling out Muyang's key. The great demon king Piccolo stood up, and the real battle finally began. Chapter 87 The world spun around, and the illusory world restarted once again. In the battle with the great demon king Piccolo, Muyang was eventually defeated. The great demon king Piccolo was split from Namekian old Kami. His natural racial talent made his combat skills equally high. At least from Muyang's point of view, the slightly understood why Maluko Ho, who obviously had a higher power level than the great demon king Piccolo, didn't dare to attack him casually. It should be said that two demon kings shouldn't have fought without clearing the external obstacles. They might accidentally lose to a master among humans, such as Mutato, who might pick up the advantage. It would be better to strangle all the masters among the humans first, then engage in a fight between the demon kings. Of course, with only 260 power levels, Muyang was confident that the great demon king Piccolo wouldn't easily defeat him. However, what he didn't expect was that the great demon king Piccolo in front of him was definitely didn't have 260 power level as he had previously thought, instead, it was at least 300 power level. It was a serious miscalculation. Although Muyang was still fighting against him for a while, he was eventually killed by the great demon king Piccolo in his full glory in the White Bone Palace. Over the next few restarts, Muyang kept challenging the great demon king Piccolo and Malukoho like a stimulant. After failing seven times in a row, he finally figured out one thing. Well, every time the illusion was restarted, it would increase the target of the challenge by a certain amount. This increase could be in strength or skill. In other words, if you didn't make progress in one try, the situation you faced next time would be more complicated and difficult. At the same time, each illusion only had two chances to challenge the same target object. Like the last time when Wiang fought Maluko Ho, although he had an actual track record of defeating the opponent, he failed to strangle the opponent. That was why he had the opportunity to start the third battle. As a result, the illusion struck, causing Maluko Ho to return and reenact the illusion through self-destruction. After several illusionary experiences, Muyang steadily improved himself in the battle against the increasingly powerful enemies. Finally, he had the strength to defeat the great demon king Piccolo and Maluko Ho. However, in the eighth restart, an accident happened again. He was actually struck by the great demon king Piccolo and Maluko Ho's combined attack and ended up suffering a bitter end. 
it's a pity that this time, he was actually struck by the combined attack of the great demon king Piccolo and Malukoho, which had never been happened before in the previous times. Before his consciousness plunged into darkness, Muyang lamented. It seemed that as Muyang's power increased, the illusionary world was gradually changing its state. At this point, Muyang's power level had reached 290, close to 300. Individually, neither the increased great demon king Piccolo and Malukoho was a match for him anymore. It was only logical that he should be able to complete the mission given by Mr. Popo easily. As the ninth restart began, the illusionary world returned to its original state. However, unlike the previous times, Muyang didn't return to the forest he had landed in before, instead, he appeared near a hot spring. With water gurgling in the distance and a layer of smoke rising from the hot spring, Muyang walked in and saw a set of a lady's clothes hanging as a tree. Someone is bathing. With this thought in his mind, Muyang retreated toward the direction he came from. Muyang is a normal male, he also has a desire for women. However, voyeurism is not something that he can do as he considers himself a decent man. If he wanted to see, he could go back and discuss it with Mexia, maybe there was no need to peep. As he stepped aside, he saw a figure creeping up from a tree trunk, and then hid in a corner, not moving. The man was dressed in purple, had a pair of sunglasses on his face, and was drooling for voyeurism. How dare you peek over a women's bath? Muyang shook his head. He was suddenly despised. He casually picked up a stone and threw it over towards the hot spring. Hey, for this kind of guy who casually peeked at women taking a bath, he just couldn't help but want to give a little trouble. The stone fell into the water with a plop. Everyone was in shock for a moment, and soon a woman's voice was heard. Who's there? Miss, I caught a man over here peeping at you. Muyang appeared behind the peeping man without a sound and caught him in the act. Hey? Someone's peeping. The woman in the hot spring was so shocked. She quickly lifted up her clothes above the treetops and got dressed, while the peeping man struggled and begged, Hey, hey, let me go. Everything is negotiable, let me go. I can't decide. You have to wait until the rightful owner comes. Muyang shook his head righteously. The man burst into tears, No, it will be too late if you don't let me go right now. I don't care about that. At this time, the woman came out from behind the hot spring. Her lavender hair stained with water droplets. Because it happened so suddenly, the woman was obviously panicked, and when she saw the man who peeped at her, her fair face flushed with a hint of anger. Well, Rashi, you're such a pervert indeed. Watch me, I'll tell father about this matter. Don't do that, Fanfan. I was wrong, please don't tell the teacher, or I'll be expelled from the school. The man who was addressed as Rashi immediately hung his head and begged when he heard the woman's words. Chapter 88 Rashi, Fanfan after hearing these two names, Muyang was stunned. The name Fanfan was very common and less recognizable, it belonged to the more popular names. In the Dragon Ball world, there were several people with this name. Certainly, the most famous Fanfan was Son Goku's granddaughter, but the young girl in front of her was obviously not, so Muyang didn't care about it much. What made him care was the name Rashi. It was actually Master Rashi who was peeping at someone's bath. Is this the future god of martial arts? The turtle immortal known as Master Rashi? After a closer look, the outline of the face vaguely had traces of Master Rashi. It was now confirmed that he was the young Master Rashi, and the woman named Fanfan, with her lavender hair was somewhat similar to the auburn color of fortune teller Baba. Came to think of it, Master Rashi had a crush on a girl named Fanfan when he was younger. Was she that Fanfan girl? In other words, does it mean that it's a long time before Great Demon King Piccolo appeared this time? Gentlemen, thank you. Otherwise, I would have been taken advantage of by this big pervert again. The young girl named Fanfan was blushing slightly. She was still a little shy. 
Muyang smiled and waved his hand, no need to thank you. I'm just not used to see some people's certain behavior. Hey, how can you talk like that? Master Rashi yelled in discontent. Rashi, if you scream again, I'll go tell father that you're peeping on me. Fan Fan immediately glared up in discontent. Under Fan Fan's great outburst, Master Rashi immediately became quiet. He was like a withered grass that turned wilted as he hung his head and stopped talking. There were two people that Master Rashi feared the most in his life. One was his teacher, Mutato, and the other was Fan Fan. Even towards his sister, Master Rashi wasn't that afraid of her. Of course, for Fan Fan, Master Rashi was not only afraid but also fond of her. That was why he often couldn't help but do things to attract her attention. Upon watching Master Rashi and Fan Fan fight, Muyang smiled, Where is Mutato Training Academy? Are you here to learn martial arts, sir? Fan Fan said with a surprised expression on her face. She then took the initiative to lead the way to Mutato Training Academy. Muyang smiled and followed Fan Fan towards Mutato Training Academy under Master Rashi's envious and jealous eyes. Kid, I'm an entry-level disciple of Master Mutato, and I need to pass this hurdle if I want to learn the martial arts. Do you know that you almost ruined my career just now? Master Rashi squeezed over and whispered to Muyang. Is your big career to peek at girls bathing? Understood, Muyang nodded without commenting. He knew that the Master Rashi had been this way since he was young. The group walked through the woods for a while longer and soon came to the martial arts dojo's front entrance. This is my father's dojo. Fan Fan pointed at the door of the dojo and said. Mutato Training Academy wasn't very big, there were only about a few dozen students inside. It was inferior to the Heavenly Sky School but that didn't prevent Mutato himself from becoming a martial arts master known worldwide. This young man, you. Mutato was sitting on the floor in his white martial uniform. When he saw his daughter and disciple coming over, followed by a young man, his martial arts practitioner's intuition made him feel something. He was carefully sizing up the person, and a fearsome pressure greeted him. Mutato's face changed suddenly and an incredible sight appeared in his eyes. Master Mutato. Muyang gave a salute. It was neither humble nor overbearing. This Mutato in front of him was only an image in the illusion. He wasn't the Mutato that fortune teller Baba met back then. Nonetheless, courtesy was still to be given. Mutato got up hurriedly and returned the courtesy to Muyang, it's not necessary, you are the true senior. Just call me Muyang. Okay. Mutato nodded in response. Father. Fan Fan was confused by the scene in front of her. What the hell was going on? Why would father call this young man senior? Was the young man in front of her actually a master from a deep hiding place? But he was still so young. Fan Fan, father has important matters to discuss with Mr. Muyang, so you guys go out first. Despite all the doubts in their hearts, after hearing Mutato's words, both Fan Fan and Master Rashi obeyed. They looked at Muyang in amazement as both of them retreated out together. After they left, Mutato asked, Mr. Muyang, I felt a great natural aura in your steps. I don't know which school you are from. Muyang smiled lightly and said, Heavenly Sky School. Mutato sucked in a breath of cold air and admired it. It turned out you're from the Kami school. No wonder Mr. Muyang has such great strength. Although Mutato's strength hadn't reached the point where he could see people with his eyes closed, he could still sense the most basic strengths and weaknesses. So, the first time he saw Muyang, he knew that he wasn't a match for Muyang. I wonder what Mr. Muyang came for this time. Muyang looked serious, it is indeed for a big matter. Shortly, Two very terrifying demons will appear in this world. One of them is called the Great Demon King Piccolo, and the other is called the Demon King Malukoho. Their appearance will plunge the entire world into purgatory. I am telling you this to remind you to prepare early because no one in the world is a match for them. Does that mean, not even you are a match for them? 
Mutato was slightly stunned, and his face grew pale. That's right. In fact, Muyang's current strength was already enough to defeat Great Demon King Piccolo and Maluko Ho. However, in order for Mutato to develop the evil containment wave so that he could learn something from it, Muyang intentionally chose to conceal it. Muyang's answer silenced Mutato. Then after a while, he said, what should we do now? Go to Koran Tower and create a technique to seal the demons. M.M. Mutato nodded his head. He didn't have any doubts over Muyang's words. In the following days, Muyang stayed at Mutato Training Academy. In the meantime, Mutato and Muyang had a few sparring sessions, but without exception, Mutato was defeated by Muyang with a few moves. Until Muyang adjusted his key to the same strength as Mutato, the two fought evenly. Thinking of what Muyang had said about not even being a match for the great demon King Piccolo, Mutato felt the time was running out. Finally, one day, Mutato closed the training academy and put on his backpack to prepare for the journey to Koran Tower. Behind him, the young Master Rashi, Master Shen, and Fan Fan stood at the door to see him off, Master, I wish you a safe journey. Be sure to find a way to save this world. Wait for me to return. Mutato nodded firmly and set off on his journey. Chapter 89 At the top of Koran Tower, Mutato trained hard. Under Koran's guidance, he created the evil containment wave specifically used to seal Demon Clan. During this time, Muyang was not idle. While Mutato was studying the evil containment wave, he also recreated several very practical techniques based on his understanding of the Dragon Ball world in his previous life. Those techniques, for example, Solar Flare, Destructo Disc, and Spirit Ball which were naturally easy to create as long as the key accumulation reached a certain level. Slowly, time passed until one day, a loud noise was heard from the lower realm, and an alien ship crashed down on top of the Earth. On Koran Tower, Muyang and the others noticed this appearance. Sensing powerful ki appearing on the earth, Muyang opened his eyes, here it comes, Malukoho has arrived on earth. Does the ki that just appeared is one of the demon kings you mentioned, Muyang? As he felt the powerful and aggressive ki, Koran's throat shifted and dried up a bit. Muyang nodded, although the character of the ki is different, it is indeed Malukoho. At this time, Malukoho was still simply a Tuk commander. Although it was unknown why he had turned into a demon when he arrived on Earth, he was still an enemy anyway. Mutato said with a gloomy face, if this is the opponent, I'm afraid my evil containment wave won't be able to seal him. Muyang said, leave this bastard for me to deal with. Mutato, you continue to learn the evil containment wave. There is still some time before the great demon King Piccolo arrives. You have to perfect your moves as soon as possible. Okay, I'll get ready as soon as possible. After seeing Malukoho's scent, Mutato became even more attentive to the great demon King Piccolo. After seeing Mutato nodded, Muyang smiled and waved his hand towards them. He then jumped straight off the edge of Koran Tower. A cluster of flashes of light streaked past heading towards the spot where Malukoho had landed. Hey! I hope Muyang can defeat that alien. Korin leaned on his crutch and looked out over the cloudy blue sky. Yet. Yeah. As he looked at the clouds where he had lost Muyang's figure, Mutato sighed, his eyes filled with worry. However, after a while, he cheered up, all he could do now was to learn the evil containment wave quickly. The primitive mountain from over 200 years ago was no different from the future. In this vast and rippling forest, the age's power didn't seem to affect it too much. There was a spot in the dense forest where smoke was billowing. The violent impact had changed the terrain, turning up the soil and rocks buried countless years, creating a crescent-shaped landslide. At this time, the red-haired Malukoho crawled out of the aircraft's wreckage with a gloomy face. He looked at the surrounding scenery's pristine state. He cursed obscenely, damn it, those bastards from the aviation center actually sold a faulty aircraft to me. I'll definitely skin them when I go back. He then took a look around, probing the area with the scouter that he carried. 
Tick. Tick tock. Numerous sets of single digit data appear on the mirror frame display. Few of them reach double digits. The database of the two commanders was hexadecimal, and its single digits had 16 parameters. Hmm, such a low level planet. I hope I can find a way to return to the universe. As he turned off the scouter, Malukoho glanced down at his mouth disdainfully. Although the two commanders were not considered a powerful race in the universe, their individual power level still exceeded 100. Malukoho was the more outstanding among the clan, possessing a power level of over 250. So, a natural sense of superiority and disdain was generated in his heart when he detected that the Earth's individual power level was actually only in the single digits. Next, he searched along the primitive mountains, and the results were very disappointing to Malukoho. He found out that the planet's technology was still only nascent. Even the developed areas were just learning how to use electrical energy and were incapable of creating spaceships. Upon knowing this, his face became even more gloomy. Damn it, this planet's technology is too backward. It doesn't have the ability to repair spaceships. As he knocked on the scouter worn on his ear, it was surprisingly the same low-grade one that didn't have a cosmic contact function. Those traitors. How dare they deceive the masses of consumers with substandard products. To put it another way, Malukoho was now trapped on this backward planet. How could this be acceptable? Malukoho was an aggressive to commander and had ambitions to rule other planets. How could he be willing to be trapped on this tiny planet? No, I have to find a way to get out of here. Malukoho would never be willing to waste the rest of his time here. Just as he was about to envision another way, the heavens didn't give him a chance. A black figure flew in from a distance and reached Malukoho's head in the blink of an eye. Muyang arrived at Malukoho's location and confirmed the silhouette below. With red hair and green skin, although no pattern on his body represented the demon clan, Muyang could confirm that it was, indeed, Malukoho. Recalling the situation when he encountered Malukoho in the previous eight trials, a hint of killing intent flashed in Muyang's eyes. Then, he stopped thinking about it and condensed a key wave ball in his hand and cast it straight down. Destructo Disc A disc-shaped key ball was whistling to attack as the Destructo Disc cut through the air with a sneeze roar. Krillin originally developed this technique, and Muyang simulated it with his own knowledge. Although it was a little less powerful than the original, it was enough to deal with Malukoho. The sudden odd attack hit Malukoho. However, in the moment of crisis, Malukoho's instincts made him turn sideways and puff out. There was a sound of flesh tearing as blue blood splattered all over the floor. Malukoho howled in pain as the key disc cut off one of his arms. He dodged it. Muyang sighed under his breath. With a turn of his palm, he controlled the destructo disc to change direction and attack Malukoho again. Damn it! Who the hell is that? Malukoho shouted furiously. His heart trembled wildly in response to the incoming destructo disc again. A cloud of crimson key was flung out to meet the destructo disc. Chapter 90 A loud rumble erupted over the forest. The surrounding giant trees either crawled to the ground or snapped in the aftermath of the blast. The places closer to the center of the blast were even instantly reduced to bare charcoal. Thick smoke spread out. The scene after the battle was shocking. The key of the destructo disc was finally eradicated along with the red key after several depletions. Malukoho finally had time to examine his attacker. A white martial arts uniform danced in the windy, the sky, and a young man's eyes stared at him with cold eyes. Your Honor, I don't seem to have offended you, do I? Malukoho grimaced. He was trying his best to suppress the anger in his chest, but his chest's constant rise and fall indicated that his anger had reached an extreme point. Muyang looked indifferently and did not reply. This Malukoho in front of him hadn't turned into a demon yet. His body wasn't as strong as the ones he had encountered before. Still, the tyranny in his breath let him know that if Malukoho was given time, he would eventually embark on the path of enslaving the people of the earth. Muyang had never thought of showing mercy to the enemy, 
even if they were still weak. He would always cut down the roots first and cleanse the ground. Malukoho saw his opponent didn't reply for a long time, instead, staring at him with a pair of dark eyes. For some reason, it suddenly gave him a chill all over his body. When he was about to say something, Muyang moved in the sky. His body slicing through a blurred shadow, clattering, cutting through the air, Muyang arrived in front of Malukoho in the blink of an eye. That's fast. How could there be such a master on this planet? Malukoho's green pupil shrank. His face was horrified, and he subconsciously tried to retreat. However, Muyang's attack had already decisively begun. Thunder shock surprise. The light golden palm gently crossed the void, as if dancing, and a sinuous arc of electricity burst out with a sizzling sound. Under the horrified gaze of Malukoho, the palm covered in lightning came down, followed by a thunderous sweep of pale golden millimeter light. Malukoho tried to move his body but desperately found that his body had been entirely imprisoned by the thunder shock surprise field and was unable to move. What kind of technique is this? There was a glimpse of fear in his eyes. Malukoho's body seemed to be penetrated by coldness as if he were in sensual purgatory. He was unable to speak. Bang! The electric current of the thunder shock surprise flowed through Malukoho's muscles, completely paralyzing his body as it knocked him far away. This made him lose the ability to resist for the next period of time. Now Malukoho was terrified. His opponent's strength was unfathomable. He was definitely not a match for his opponent. His previous disdain for this planet and high ambitions had suddenly turned into a bubble, leaving behind nothing but boundless fear. Bastard, what kind of a crouching tiger and hidden dragon planet is this? He seriously doubted that the vendor who sold him the scouter wasn't just selling them for a cheap product, but they even sold him some broken ones. That traitor, that damned traitor, had killed Lord Malukoho. If I had known this planet was so terrible, I wouldn't have been descended here even if I had to crash into a star. Malukoho was literally in tears now. Although you haven't turned into a demon yet, I'm sorry, but my mission is to defeat you. Now that Piccolo hasn't yet shown up in the world, you'll be on your way alone first. There was a faint coldness in his voice. Muyang appeared beside Malukoho, placing a hand on his shoulder. This action caused Malukoho to break out in a cold sweat. Even more so, to understand the gap between them, your honor, is there some misunderstanding between us? There should be no hatred or grudge between us, he asked with a sour face. Muyang wasn't interested in answering Malukoho's confusion. Instead, with a click, Muyang yanked off Malukoho's other arm with force. Ah! Malukoho, who had lost his arm again, let out a yell of pain. Why did you do this? I didn't offend you. Malukoho sprawled on the ground. He looked evasive, and a cold sweat broke out on his forehead as he looked at his disconnected arm in pain. A broken arm could regenerate, but a life lost would be nothing. Don't ask questions because I won't explain it to a dead man. Now, feel free to die. The faint voice fell, and with that, a patch of azure key fell from the sky. For a moment, the entire world seemed to go quiet. Malukoho felt his brain freeze as death approaching him. Rumble. The azure key erupted with bright white light. A huge mushroom cloud rose from the primitive mountain, and when everything died down, a nearly hundred meter deep crater was left in place. I have defeated one, it means half the mission is done. Muyang sensed Malukoho's key and confirmed that his key wave had blown up Malukoho. In terms of individual power level alone, after going through the previous rounds of trials, Muyang's power level had actually surpassed that of either Malukoho and the great demon king Piccolo. The last time he made a mistake was when Malukoho and the great demon king Piccolo actually teamed up and caught him off guard. This time the trial restart didn't give them a chance to join forces at all. Muyang felt confident this time. However, Muyang also felt a bit upset that he didn't understand the reason Malukoho had turned into a demon. Is it because the demons have come to Earth? Of course, 
The demon realm he was referring to was not the edge demon realm next to Earth, but the demon realm where real demon kings lived. He remembered that the egg that sealed Majin Bu was once stored on Earth. According to legend, the demon realm king, Dabura, had sent people to Earth to find out. If Malukoho would turn into a demon, could it have something to do with the people sent by Dabura? Forget it, there was no use thinking about it so much. After all, this was just a world where illusions reoccurred, and all history had actually ended. When he thought about this, Muyang shook his head, leaped into the sky, and flying back towards Korin Tower. Next, he only needed to help Mutato defeat the great demon king Piccolo again, so that he could finish the trial and get out of this world. On the Korin Tower, Korin and Mutato looked surprised at Muyang's performance. The scene that had just happened in the lower realm could be seen clearly through the water tank in the middle. Korin was filled with amazement, that Muyang boy actually has such a strong power. I'm afraid no one in this world will match him. Mutato nodded approvingly, I'm so much worse than him. If he's so strong, why does he need you to learn the evil containment wave? He's fully capable of defeating that great demon king Piccolo, Korin asked in puzzlement. Mutato also showed confusion, that might be the strange character of a master. Maybe. Corin could only think so. There were all sorts of personalities in this world, maybe Muyang liked to sit on the mountain and watch the tiger fight, rather than get off the field himself. In fact, Corin didn't know that the reason why Muyang had asked Mutato to learn the evil containment wave was actually to get the theoretical principles of this technique. From the two moves, which were the evil containment wave and the thunder shock surprise, it could be seen that Muedito's reputation as a generational master was not unwarranted. He had extremely high attainments in coercive command techniques. If he could obtain the theory of the evil containment wave through this trial, he might be able to create his own compulsory command technique in the future based on it. Although Sun Gohan in the real world also knew how to use the evil containment wave, he wasn't the one who developed it. That was why he didn't know the details like the original creator did. However, now that he was in the illusionary world, he thought of asking Mutato to learn a ready-made one. Chapter 91 Time passed quietly along with training. Mutato had been pondering over the Korin Tower for a full half-year in order to develop the evil containment wave. Half a year after Muyang had destroyed Maluko Ho, the great demon king Piccolo finally appeared. As soon as he appeared, the great demon king Piccolo showed his ferocious side. In just one day and night, more than a hundred towns were destroyed. Millions of people lost their lives under the demon race's claws and teeth, and just in a short period, the fierce name of the great demon king Piccolo was spread to the entire world. It was just that compared to the tragic experience of the two demon kings who had raged together, this world was much luckier and closer to the actual history. Muyang, please do something to stop the great demon king Piccolo. Seeing the lower realm in distress, Korin was so anxious that he had no choice but to ask Muyang for help. Muyang looked at Mutato, have you learned the evil containment wave yet? Mutato nodded solemnly, the basic principle has been completed, but we won't know the effect until we've actually tested it against the demons. Muyang waved his hand, if the theory is done the testing can be skipped. You can put together the principle of the evil containment wave on a booklet, and leave the great demon king Piccolo to me. All he wanted was the theoretical principles of the evil containment wave, nothing else mattered. He saw Mutato nodding his head and recording the evil containment wave's main points in the booklet. Muyang took the manual and looked at it for a few moments. The training manual written by the original creator was different, all the main points and creative ideas were recorded in it. Muyang had a smile on his face. He hadn't come in vain just because of this booklet. The harvest this time was really great. He greeted them in a good mood and then headed straight to where the great demon king Piccolo was. It was a desolate and neglected part of town. The air was curdled with the smell of blood. The surrounding farmland and houses were deserted, and the collapsed buildings breathed an unexplainable decay. The sky was so gloomy that it seemed as if it was going to collapse. The cold wind, 
which kept blowing on the bare land, was filled with an evil smell. Looking at the town that had become decrepit due to the great demon king Piccolo's destruction, Muyang's furrowed slightly. He passed through the path with an indifferent look and soon arrived at the great demon king Piccolo's palace. There were still inferior demons stationed here. As for these cannon fodder-like existences, being born in the Dragon Ball world and still standing in the villain's camp doomed them to tragedy. With a few swooshes and a few random key waves, Muyang walked all the way into the palace as if no one was there. Bold guy! How dare you trespass into the palace of a king! At the main palace entrance, a dinosaur with wings on its back blocked Muyang's way. Compared to those cannon fodder with only dozens of power levels, this demon race's warrior in front of him had a power level of over 100, which was considered an elite subordinate of the great demon king Piccolo. However, for Muyang, whose power level had reached 300, it was already quite inadequate. In the Dragon Ball world, if the difference in power level between the two opponents was within 30%, the difference was relatively small and could be made up by skill, so that the weak could win. However, with a 50% gap unless one possessed some special ability, such as an extremely high realm, a keen perception of ki, and other extra powers, one could barely fight. In the end, they would be unable to escape defeat and would have to run away in ashes. Basically, those who were 50% apart but still managed to win against the strong were masters who had brought one of their personal strengths to the extreme. As for the difference in power level being more than 100%, it was already a huge difference. To some extent, if the opponent made a move, there was a possibility of a spike. Although nothing was absolute it was roughly the same reason. Right now, Muyang's power level was more than three times this winged dinosaur. With a calm look that swept the opponent away, the corner of Muyang's mouth curled up in a cold smile and said grimly, I'm looking for death. As soon as his words fell, Muyang's figure disappeared with a swoosh. Then a puff sound was heard. Muyang leaned out in front of the winged dinosaur, and a wave of ki turned the winged dinosaur into ashes. After taking care of the demons at the entrance, Muyang pushed open the main hall's door and saw the great demon king Piccolo in the palace's center. Tisk, just like the previous times, the great demon king Piccolo was still sitting like a world ruler, only slightly widening his eyes at his arrival. Human, who are you? The great demon king Piccolo's voice was cold and indifferent, with killing intent in it. Great demon king Piccolo, we met once again. Muyang stepped forward with a faint smile on his face. We've met before. The great demon king Piccolo was a little confused. Muyang shook his head, but that's not important. The great demon king Piccolo listened with his chin in his hand. Just when he thought Muyang would continue, Muyang suddenly stopped talking, and it made the great demon king's face change suddenly. At that moment, a flash of light and an electrical shock hit him it was Muyang. As he was about to respond, a hard fist had landed on his body. Puff! The sound of steel smashing into the ground. The great demon king Piccolo's body and Muyang's iron fist came into close contact. His chest took a huge impact and caved downwards. The white bone thrown beneath him was blown into tiny pieces with a clatter. Ah! The great demon king Piccolo had never experienced such provocation. Without knowing whether it was anger or pain, his eyes filled with blood, and he let out an angry roar. Muyang looked on indifferently but didn't give the opponent any chance to gather his key. Suddenly, he punched out. The vast power of his fist was as powerful as a bamboo tree, dispersing the great demon king Piccolo's key at once. Boom! Even more powerful key rose to the sky and exploded calmly. Under this maddening atmosphere, even the great demon king Piccolo broke out in cold sweat, unconsciously developing fear. With Muyang's strength this time, he had no problem dealing with great demon king Piccolo alone. How is that possible? Upon facing Muyang, who had suddenly exploded with great strength, the great demon king Piccolo looked horrified and roared. This guy's power was even stronger than his. Escape. It would be too late if he didn't flee. 
The thought instantly arose in the great demon king Piccolo's heart, and once it popped up, it would be hard to suppress it. Here was no shame in the running away. For the sake of his ambition, he would have to accept the result. If you want to leave, don't even think about it. After seeing through the great demon king Piccolo's intentions, Muyang pushed his palm forward and slowly struck out an attack heavenly sky beam. A flawlessly colored key ball that was as transparent as a night pearl blossomed out in a flash, along with the sky's radiant light. The small key lit up dazzlingly into a sharp arc shape. With a loud crash, the calm space suddenly boiled. Violent energy whistled past, carrying tremblingly powerful key towards the great demon king Piccolo. The great demon king Piccolo's eyes narrowed abruptly, and he shrieked madly, No, no one can kill me. You're so noisy. With a cold snort, Muyang increased the key in his hands. The diffuse starlight turned into a sliver of crescent blades, and Muyang's attack hit the great demon king Piccolo. The raging and tumultuous key continued to squeeze and burn the great demon king Piccolo's body to the point where even his body, which was like molded steel, couldn't bear the impact and crumble apart. In a big explosion, the unstoppable great demon king Piccolo's life ended without even making a decent counterattack. Wu, I finally killed it. The mission explained by Mr. Popo should be considered complete. After killing the great demon king Piccolo, Muyang thought this in his heart. Although Mr. Popo said that he could return when he defeated the strongest character inside, Mr. Popo didn't seem to tell him the exact way to return. Could he go back just by standing still? So, he tried it, but nothing happened. Chapter 92 How to Get Back He didn't think much about it before. However, it was quite tricky for Muyang to do it now, which was embarrassing. Upon taking a glance around the deserted and uninhabited surroundings, the originally cold palace had collapsed. The air was filled with a disgusting smell. Muyang covered his nose and walked out of the great demon king Piccolo's palace. He then hailed the sky and flew up to a certain height, condescendingly releasing a huge amount of ki towards the ground below. The ki beams descended from the sky. After the earth shook, the great demon king Piccolo's palace completely disappeared from the earth. After doing all this, Muyang's mood became a little more relaxed. He suddenly accelerated into a black dot and disappeared. After returning to Korin Tower, he still couldn't find a way back. Hence, he took out the booklet he received from Mutato that recorded the principle of the evil containment wave and came to the second floor of Korin Tower alone to study it. Even if the target wasn't a demon, as long as the power didn't exceed the level of the person who released it, it would still have a very good effect. Therefore, Muyang was very interested in the principle of releasing the evil containment wave. He hoped to learn from it so that he could create his own compulsory techniques. Today, the sun was shining, and the sky was blue. Muyang was still studying his moves. He had been on top of Korin Tower for many days, but he still hadn't found a way to leave. This situation made Muyang wonder if there were even more powerful characters in this world other than Malukoho and Great Demon King Piccolo. Could it be that? he still hadn't completed the task assigned by Mr. Popo? In the middle of his thoughts, Corin walked over step by step with his crutch. His fat body approached Muyang and sat down next to him. Muyang, you've been here for a long time, and thanks to you, this world was saved this time. Is Mutato already gone? Muyang raised his head to look at Corin. Usually, at this time, Corin and Mutato would be discussing insights on martial arts, and Muyang dominated the second floor as they didn't come up here much. Hm Muyang nodded and voiced his doubts, I was wondering if there was anyone on earth stronger than Malukoho and Great Demon King Piccolo because I think there is. What do you think of your own strength? Corin looked at him and asked. My strength, it's not bad. At least countless people who dream of it would find it difficult to reach my level now. At this point, Muyang sighed, but if you look at the starry sky and step into the middle of the vast universe, these achievements are not worth mentioning. Those who can easily defeat me are probably not even countable. Well, 
there's no end to learning. You have to keep a humble heart at all times, and you're good at that. After saying that, Corin was also silent. However, he took out a string of bells from nowhere and spoke, Muyang, although I don't know who you are and why you have such a strong power, for the sake of saving the world, you should go to the top of Corin Tower. It might be able to help you out. The bell. Looking at the distinctive golden bell in Corin's hand, a hint of surprise appeared in Muyang's eyes as he asked, Does the lookout exist in this world? Corin looked at Muyang in surprise, You know about the lookout? You seem to be a person with a great origin. Yes, of course, there is a lookout on top of Corin Tower. It was then that Muyang suddenly realized. This ninth trial was indeed different from the previous ones. It turned out that in the eighth trials before, Muyang's strength had already surpassed the great demon king Piccolo and Malukoho. It was only when he finally suffered a combined attack from the two that he suffered hatred. At that time, he had actually completed his mission. This ninth trial was actually creating a channel for him to leave. Oh, Mr. Popo, why didn't you tell him clearly in the first place? How long would he have to wait to leave if Corin hadn't taken out its bell? After thinking about this, Muyang had a genial smile on his face. Thank you. After taking the bell from Corin's hand, Muyang flew straight upwards using the dancing sky art. This time, it was so easy that he didn't use the power pole to go to the lookout. Soon, he flew through the lightning-filled space and entered the higher realms. Phew! Muyang flew up to the lookout. The familiar palace appeared before his eyes. At this time, a silhouette in Arabian clothing appeared in front of Muyang. Its skin was dark as if dyed with ink. Upon seeing the silhouette, Muyang showed a smile on his face. Yo, Popo! When Popo heard the voice, his expression didn't change at all. His eyes were dull, like a puppet's. Please follow me. After saying that, he turned around and walked towards the entrance of the palace. Muyang was stunned for a moment and hurriedly followed Mr. Popo. Muyang walked through the winding corridor and came back to the door of the trial room. Unlike before, this time, Muyang didn't see any other doors on either side of the corridor. There was only one door in front of him, and Mr. Popo didn't say a word. Perhaps it was because this was an illusionary world, and Mr. Popo and the lookout were, in fact, fake. Mr. Popo opened the golden door, revealing a dark illusory place inside. Go in, you have completed the trial. Okay. Upon taking a deep look at the illusionary world, Muyang's expression became serious as he stepped through the door. As soon as he entered, the scenery inside immediately changed. The dark curtain disappeared, and then the entire world seemed to be turned upside down in a whirl. Opening his eyes abruptly, Muyang found himself back in the long corridor, with the golden door behind him. Am I back? Muyang searched all around with some suspicion. Only when he saw the densely packed gates on both sides of the corridor did he become certain that he had indeed returned from the trial. The trial mission was really hard enough, he died eight times in a row inside. Even when he almost couldn't come back, he also gained a lot. Not only did he get the principle of the evil containment wave, but his power level increased to 310 in one go. Oh, Muyang, you're back. Arriving at the lookout's yard, Mr. Popo walked over with his hands behind his back. His two copper-like eyes had no extra luster. Popo, it's all because you didn't make it clear, I almost couldn't come back, Muyang said in a bad mood. With every death, the opponent's strength inside the illusionary world rises a step, and so on. Not to mention completing the trial mission he might even be stuck there forever. This is also part of the trial. The trial is not only testing strength but also testing the mind and judgment. Even if you never find a way to come back, the illusionary world will automatically send you back after three years. Mr. Popo said without panicking at all. I've been in the illusionary world for so long, how long has it passed outside? Exactly one year. A year. 
it meant the inside and the outside were in sync. Chapter 93 After knowing that one year had passed in the real world, Muyang understood that the time in the illusionary world was the same as the outside world. It didn't have the time acceleration function like the hyperbolic time chamber. However, this was right, the illusionary world was initially used for trials, if it also had the function of time acceleration, it would be too unorthodox. Such an unbalanced world. Muyang was afraid only God of the universe level would be able to create it. Including the illusory world, the hyperbolic time chamber, and the training space used to understand the quicker than lightning, tranquil as the sky, there were quite a few strange rooms in the lookout. Muyang was not sure who the Earth's ancestors were when they built such a miraculous palace in the sky. During the few years of crossing into the Dragon Ball world, Muyang realized that this world wasn't just a world of manga as he knew it. It was a self-consistent and logical world. What was shown in the original story was only a small part of it. For example, if he hadn't discovered the wreckage aircraft in the primitive mountains and known what had happened in the past when he was in the illusionary world, he might have been drowned in time, and no one would have known about it. The more he delved into this world's mysteries, the more Muyang felt that what he saw was only the ocean's surface. Whether there were rushing whirlpool undercurrents beneath or a treasure trove of rich life from fishing, only after exploring it himself could he know. Until he possessed a strong physique, he better keep it low profile. How far has Sun Gohan's training progressed? Muyang turned back to Mr. Popo and asked about Sun Gohan's training. Sun Gohan's potential was already good. Now that he had been training on the lookout for a year, he had definitely become even stronger. In fact, from the time he killed Mercenary Tao, his brain's memories could only be used as a reference and weren't accurate. Not to mention, now that even Sun Gohan, who was initially destined to die at the hands of the great ape transformation Sun Goku, had ascended to the lookout, the future had become even more unknown. Mr. Popo replied, Sun Gohan is working very hard on his training. Although it's not quite as good as you were a year ago, I think he'll catch up soon. Oh. Muyang lightly nodded his head. In the original story, Sun Gohan was able to achieve higher results than Master Rashi. It could be seen that his comprehension was actually not bad, and what was lacking was a suitable environment. Shallow water couldn't raise a dragon. If it was the late Dragon Ball era, Sun Gohan might be even more powerful than Korin, Tian Xinyan, and others. The training in the lookout was his chance to fly. Ending the conversation with Mr. Popo, Muyang came to the place where Sun Gohan was practicing. As he looked at Sun Gohan, who was sitting quietly, hammering his mind, Muyang nodded his head. At this time, Sun Gohan's key intensity had already reached 180 power levels, which wasn't inferior compared to the first appearance of Tian Xinyan. Without disturbing Sun Gohan's practice, Muyang casually found a place and began to train. Came out of the illusionary world this time, not only his power level had been greatly improved, even his awareness of battle and combat skills had been greatly improved. The actual battle had sharpened people, it was not a lie at all. More importantly, he had obtained the principle of the evil containment wave, which provided a reference for him to develop his own moves based on it. He would have to spend some time carefully studying it. A few days later, Muyang finally figured out the principle of the evil containment wave. He was now standing at the edge of the lookout overlooking the lower realm. White clouds were floating and drifting as if he was incomparably at ease. Muyang looked on in fascination, immersed in it for a moment as if he had nothing to do. What of you? It's quite nice to be carefree. Suddenly, a young girl's smiling face appeared in his mind. With bright-eyed and loving faces, made his heart suddenly rippled with thoughts. Mexia. Muyang shook his head. He was remembering Mexia. By the way, they hadn't seen each other for more than two years. The last time they met was when he saw her before coming to the lookout. He thought it would only be a year and a half before they met again, but unexpectedly two years had passed in the blink of an eye. Hey, long-distance relationship wasn't a good situation. 
Although Mexia was a simple girl who was stubborn about her feelings, not contacting her for a long time seemed too much, right? Luckily, this was a world of simple people. Also, growing up in a martial arts dojo, Mexia was raised by Isaac and Alice to be tolerant toward martial arts practitioners. However, if he didn't see his girlfriend for a few years, whether he was a martial arts practitioner or not, he would have been pried out of the corner in minutes. Of course, Muyang's looks were not bad. He even had excellent martial arts skills and was extremely competitive. So if you wanted to pry a corner from him, you shouldn't even think about it. Now that the lookout's training had been completed, Muyang had great freedom. He could simply go to see her and get closer to her. After all, she was his chosen future partner, and he needed to take good care of her. With this thought, the longing in his heart could not be calmed down. So, Muyang immediately flew and jumped down from the lookout. The Southern Part of the Earth, the Superpower Academy. A group of superpowers was gathered together. These superpowers came from different parts of the world. After being trained by the Superpowers Academy, they were a group of people who were different from martial arts practitioners. In the upper training field, a dark green-haired Mexia held her knees as she floated in the air. Her loose black robe hanging on her body, and her hem scattered like the wind into several paths. Around her were hundreds of fist-sized stones suspended, constantly rotating. With a buzzed and clattered, the stones sounded and shone with a glittering green light. Suddenly, Mexia opened her flawless eyes like jasper waves, and the ghostly green light flashed. Her superpower acted hugely on the surrounding stones. Click, click, click. Hundreds of stones spun faster, then collapsed together, instantly shattering into powder. The scattered powder spread out and enveloped a radius of a hundred meters, staining the entire training field with a hazy color, causing countless senior students to cry out in awe. Mexia is so powerful. She was actually able to crush so many stones at the same time. If it were used in battle, that power. If this power were to act on a human body, it would send shivers down people's spine just by thinking about it. It's only been six years, and you've already surpassed us, the senior students. Mexia had already been promoted to the advanced class in just six years after entering the Superpowers Academy. She could even already compare to the teachers in the academy. Compared to Mexia's talent, the senior students could only felt out of reach. If it wasn't for the fact that the Superpowers Academy had a minimum academic limit of eight years, she might have graduated early. People wondered if she would have chosen to stay on as a teacher after graduation. Oh my! Not only Sister Mexia is pretty, but her superpowers are also one of the best. I like her so much, but she's a bit cold, and I never see her get close to a boy. I heard that she still doesn't have a boyfriend. The younger superpowered student's eyes glowed, not hiding his admiration for his senior sister. Humph, don't even think about it. How can senior sister Mexia be attracted to you? The student next to him scowled. I've heard from my senior brother from the last few years that senior sister Mexia seems to have a fiancé, who is said to be her childhood friend. The two are very close, which is why she doesn't give her feelings for other boys. I don't believe it. Senior sister Mexia is our goddess. That's right. My senior sister doesn't have a fiancé. Don't flatter yourself, you fool. Mexia's charm drew countless students to fight each other. However, many of them also knew in their hearts that Mexia would never belong to them. Just then, Turquoise eyes peered over towards them, and a spirit permeated through, several students stiffened and were all stunned. Don't let me hear such words next time, or I'll hit you with stones. The cold but nice voice faintly sounded, the tone was unquestionable. Ah! Senior sister, we're sorry, we were wrong. Several people apologized in unison. Mexia looked at them lightly and gave them a few lessons before she let go of their bodies. Ah, it felt so gentle when senior sister just spoke to us. A certain student was enthused. I'd love to get another whipping from senior sister. Haha, 
just kidding, it's still a little scary when senior sister is on the move. At this moment, a young woman came from outside the training field. It was Mexia's best friend, Shabella. She walked straight in front of Mexia and said with a mysterious face, Mexia, I knew you were here. You know what, there's someone out there looking for you. Mexia was stunned, who's looking for me? Amen. Shabella squeezed her eyes shut and looked ambiguous. She had seen Mexia's photo album, and there was a photo that Mexia kept on the writing desk in front of the window. She had just recognized it carefully, and it was the man in the photo who came looking for Mexia. Oh my, why are you still standing here? Go and take a look. Seeing Mexia standing there and frowning, Shabella grabbed her shoulders and pushed her towards the outside of the training field. Ah, something wonderful might be about to happen. Chapter 94 Who the hell is looking for me? Being pushed out of the training field by Shabella, Mexia was confused. Shabella was her roommate. The two of them entered the Superpower Academy at the same time and later entered the same Superpower Department. Because of their similar personalities, they quickly became friends. It was just that Shabella was acting a bit strange today, which was really not like her usual behavior. As for a man looking for her, Mexia felt that it probably wasn't a joke. As she thought about it, besides her father and a few elders from Heavenly Sky School, it only seemed like it could be that person. After all, she had been staying inside the academy and didn't know many people outside. Is the person looking for me young and handsome? Yeah, it's a really handsome guy. He calls himself Muyang, and he says he's your. Before the word senior brother was uttered, a pale green fluorescence suddenly rolled up in front of her eyes. A tornado whirlwind rose into the air, leaving Mexia nowhere to be seen in front of her. Hey, where is she going? Shabella cried out in surprise. She then smiled and quickly chased after her towards the entrance of the academy. A group of people around them was caught in confusion. What just happened? Why did the goddess leave in such a hurry? Ambus, you have the ability called the direction of the sound, didn't you hear what they said? Ambus said hesitantly, it seems like a man came to see senior sister. Ah, don't you dare tell her it was me who said that. Who do you guys think the man who was looking for senior sister Mexia was? Do we need to say more? Don't you guys see how the goddess is so attentive? It must be someone she likes. The few boys from before cried out at sight over this. I don't believe it. How can the cold senior sister Mexia casually look at any other man but me? Why don't we follow and take a look? Mexia's classmates who admired her were heartbroken and even planned to investigate. When she learned that Muyang had come to visit her, she was pleasantly surprised and flew outside the academy with all her superpowers. From far away, she saw Muyang outside the academy. He was tall, with short, medium-length hair, a casual outfit. He looked even more handsome than two years ago. She flew over happily. There was nothing taboo between them. When Wiang saw a green-haired woman flying towards him, and the moment he looked at her, he saw those deer-like eyes widen instantly. They flashed with surprise and unexplainable emotion. Still the same old Mexia, so windy and fiery. Wiang lightly smiled and opened his arms. He was ready to catch Mexia's body like before. However, the green-haired woman suddenly stopped when she was only five meters away from him. She then moved her hand, and a ten-ton rock immediately flew off from the surface and smashed over towards Muyang. Muyang was stunned. Today's meeting, was quite refreshing and unique. If he were an ordinary person, he was afraid he would be smashed into a pulp. It was a pity that he wasn't an ordinary person. This was clear to Muyang and equally clear to Mexia. In the sky, the boulder fell down like a meteorite. When it was a meter away from Muyang, Muyang stretched out his right hand towards the front. With a clanking sound, only a bright light flickered on his fingertips. In the next second, the rock shattered into countless tiny pieces in response to the sound of a knife cutting and exploded. However, 
this obviously wasn't the end. At this time, Mexia's green hair fluttered in the air. These broken rocks suddenly came under the control of some kind of power again and continued to smash towards Muyang. Bang, 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 countless radiant key waves were sent out. Without blinking, the stones in front of Muyang were all shattered by the key waves. And while he was busy dealing with the attacks in front of him, an even larger stone block quietly rose from behind Muyang and slammed towards him. A loud bang came from the entrance of the Superpower Academy, as dirt and rocks splashed everywhere. Half of the stones had been plunged into the dirt. Shabella and the other students of the Academy who arrived afterward looked dumbfounded. What's going on? Why are they suddenly fighting? They gulped as they witnessed the whole thing as they thought to themselves that the man was powerful, but obviously, their goddess was still a bit more violent. Needless to say, he was definitely smashed to death, cool. Oh my, is this how you greet your senior brother? Muyang's voice suddenly sounded beside Mexia. Before she could react, her body was already held by two hands from behind. The young girl's soft body attached to his body bring him a different feeling. Her green hair fluttered, lake-like eyes were clear and flawless. Mexia's entire body was beautiful, with an unexplainable temptation. Looking at Mexia's clear and beautiful face, Muyang lamented. In the blink of an eye, Mexia had grown into a big girl. Although her figure was still as petite as ever, her body had become even more alluring than before. Well, she was considered mature too. She was 18 years old. According to the standards of his previous life, she was already an adult. Mexia was struggling a little in Muyang's arms. As she looked up at her older brother, she curled her lips, who told you not to visit me for more than two years? You promised to visit me from time to time, but you didn't keep your word. The words were quite deep in resentment. I was negligent and careless. Muyang was busy apologizing. After all, he had been training on the lookout for the past two years. So, this was indeed his fault. Humph. Mexia looked away unhappily. Geez, is she really angry? Muyang's eyes rolled. He had no experience at all on how to make a girl happy. In his previous life, he was in his twenties and almost thirties. He had never had a serious relationship, and now this situation was really a head-scratcher. There was a certain kind of scandalous yet exhaustively silent in the air. Down below, those classmates of Mexia's, especially the boys, arrived late to see their beloved goddess in someone else's arms, uh, it looked like she was being held. She was resisting, wait, no, she didn't seem to be resisting. Don't tell me how bitter it felt. It's over, the goddess had fallen. If they could, they'd love to have a duel with the man holding Mexia. Damn, he was so handsome. How romantic. That man must be Mexia's lover. It was as if Shabella had seen a prince and princess from a fairy tale. She held her two hands together with sparkles in her eyes. Did you miss me? After a long while, Muyang didn't know how to persuade and came in dry. Of course. Mexia's lips were slightly curled. Her jewel-like eyes contained infinite tenderness. Ha ha ha. Muyang was in a great mood. Sure enough, this was his kind of deal. Landing on the ground, he took Mexia's little hand and walked outside. He came to see Mexia this time to get along with her and nurture his feelings. Now that both of them were so obviously revealing their hearts, everything was on the line. The expected drama of the male interfering did not appear, and no ungrateful seniors jumped out to oppose the marriage. However, there were some of the girls present whose eyes revealed a strange color, as well as the boys. Although they cringed at the thought of what had just happened, they threw admiring glances at him. Life is boring if you don't follow the script. Let's forget about what happened later. Muyang had already taken Mexia to the Superpower Academy teacher to ask for an extended vacation. He wanted to use this time to renew his relationship with Mexia. The Academy's teacher was very understanding and seemed to be aware of Muyang's identity, so he gave them a month's vacation in one big stroke. 
Muyang and Mexia were, of course, very satisfied. They happily pulled hands together, and then, at Muyang's suggestion, he took Mexia to a small town nearby. Chapter 95 The small town was close to the southern capital. It was a town that had just emerged, and the facilities inside were all newly built. Muyang held Mexia's hand and entered a leisure park with a circus and entertainment facilities, one of the better developed areas in the current era. At this time, they forgot all their worries and enjoyed themselves. When they were tired, they sat on the park's lawn and looked out over the shimmering lake in the distance together. Senior brother, so you've been practicing in the lookout for the past two years. Mexia leaned next to Muyang and quietly listened to him talk about his experiences in the past two years. The scent emanating from Muyang's body made her feel very at ease. Muyang said, yeah, the lookout's training is very strict. Hey, senior brother was already stronger than me, and now he's leaving me behind even more. Mexia's sullen face was amusing to Muyang. As he sensed her key, she hinted at 100 power levels. However, Mexia's power mainly came from superpowers, and Wiang's key sensing wasn't able to accurately know her strength. You're about to graduate, right? Mexia blinked, I still have two years to graduate, but I'm already good enough that many teachers in the academy are no match for me. Pop! Wiang slapped Mexia's back. The sudden attack caused Mexia to grumble and roll her eyes at him when Wiang said, do you want to find a place to test it? I also want to know how your superpowers are. So let's release it this time. The previous meeting ceremony was just a chance for Mexia to show off her pride. He could probably understand what the girl was thinking. It was actually a chance for him to show his strength and declare his sovereignty. Although this kind of thing didn't have to be done deliberately, obviously the effect was quite good. At least to Muyang's presence, there wasn't much complaint from the school's side, whether boys or girls. It was accepted quite naturally. Of course, on the other hand, this was an opportunity for Mexia to brag and reveal her skills. Well, in the past, senior brother couldn't resist my superpower at all. She was such a certain scheming woman who remembered her childhood. When she used her superpower ability, Muyang was no match for her. When she said that, she couldn't help but looked proud. The green light shone brightly, and Mexia floated leisurely in the air. Her black skirt was fluttering and shattering into several pieces. But I won't fight you for nothing. I can punish you if you lose. Muyang held a smile in his eyes, and his gaze kept aiming at Mexia's petite body. Mexia blushed and said unconvincingly, Humph. I'm not afraid of you. Ha ha ha, you're going to lose. Muyang laughed, and next, they flew into the air together, finding a gravelly shoreline. This is it. Muyang landed. Then let's begin, senior brother. Mexia was standing on top of the void. Her two slender arms were placed behind her back, and without making any movements, her body was lit up with radiant light. As Mexia's superpower power became stronger, a spherical green shield appeared around her. In the next moment, the world changed color as a raging tornado connected the sea and the sky, and the wind howled. Mexia was now like a goddess controlling the sky, holding the power of the world. Muyang looked at her with a faint smile, the power is quite strong. As he was about to move his body, he found that his body was stagnant as green key wrapped around his body imprisoning him. At this time, Mexia's finger pointed upwards, and the stones all over the ground floated up, densely occupying the view. In the meantime, Muyang got a taste of Mexia's superpower. It was amazing. If the key in his body was less than 200 power level, he would really be unable to break free from Mexia's bonds. From this point of view, Mexia's superpower ability was actually several levels more powerful than Tiutsu. As Muyang looked at Mexia's skirt fluttering and overbearing appearance, Muyang's mind could not help but flash the image of a superpower called Terrible Tornado. If she shrank a little more, she would be similar to a Terrible Tornado. But right now, 
it was more like an immature blowing snow. Brother, I don't think you'll be able to move, right? A confident voice came out between Mexia's parted lips. She was quite a rampant queen. Mexia, you're getting a little flaky. Oh, is it because your senior brother can't lift his palm and spank you, or do you think you've grown up and I can't touch you? Looks like you need to be disciplined. Muyang smiled lightly, his face becoming serious. In the next second, the overpowering key exploded out. With the clicking sound of the air vibrating, Muyang moved step by step. The sky was thudding loudly with each step. Mexia's face was pale, and her body's superpower was dangerously close to being out of control. Hey! When she thought of the punishment Muyang had said earlier, and what else was there to discipline, Mexia's small face blushed. She held her hands open, her hair shaking, and exploded into a bright emerald glow. The result of the competition between Muyang and Mexia was obvious. With Muyang's combat power reaching 310, even though Mexia had excellent superpower talent, she had no choice but to lose and waiting for her to be punished by Muyang. Brother, what did you bring me here for? Under the setting sun, Muyang and Mexia were walking down the street. The night market hadn't started yet, and the whole street was empty. You lost the match, so of course, I'm punishing you. Punish with what? Mexia asked guiltily. She was anticipating what was going to happen tonight, and her little heart was pounding indignantly. You tell me. Muyang smiled proudly and pointed to a small hotel in front of him. He moved his mouth close to Mexia's ear, and the hot air he exhaled tickled, causing Mexia to feel timid. What do you think of that small hotel? It's pretty secluded. Mexia's body suddenly became stiff and squirmed. Well, isn't it too early? No, it's not too early. Mexia, you're almost 18, you're an adult, you should understand a little bit. After he said that, without giving Mexia any room to resist, he directly took Mexia, who was still hesitant, and walked into the small hotel together. Boss, I want to get a room. Okay, please wait a moment. The innkeeper looked at Muyang and Mexia in amazement. This pair of men and women, the man was handsome, and the woman was pretty. They were really well matched. Acting nimbly to register the room, the innkeeper took out the key, Sir, here's your key, please keep it. He said as he gave a thumbs up towards Muyang, revealing a smile that only a man could understand. Mexia was confused during the whole process until Muyang brought her into the room, her brain was still dangling. In one spring night, Muyang ate Mexia's entire body directly. Actually, Muyang just wanted to tease and flirt with Mexia. Everything was just a joke, and there were even two beds in the room. Muyang still overestimated his own fixation, but Mexia, who was brought into the small hotel by him, took it seriously. When she came out wrapped in a towel after taking a shower, she was greeted by her desire to resist, exposing her shy appearance as a woman. However, it suddenly triggered the wolf inside him. It was nowhere near the point of rutting and stopping, so Muyang rolled right into a bed with Mexia and crossed out the last step. The next day, the sky was hazy and bright. Muyang rested one hand on the pillow, the other hand hugging the girl sleeping soundly in his arms. He saw the girl lying on her side towards him, one hand hooked over her lips, the other arm outstretched and curled around his chest. Ooh, Mexia's green eyelashes moved slightly. Her body shifted uncomfortably, and now Mexia's entire body was lying on top of Muyang's body. Her soft hair was falling in disarray on Muyang's shoulders. The sheet was slipping off a large area, revealing the girl's slender arms and the fair, fatty skin behind her. Isn't this leading to a crime? Muyang's throat moved, feeling a little dry. With a flip, he directly pressed Mexia underneath him again. Senior brother, I'm physically exhausted, so I'm very sleepy. Mexia frowned uncomfortably. When he heard that, as if a bowl of cold water had been poured down, Muyang's head suddenly roused, he looked at Mexia's delicate and weary face. 
his heart was filled with self-recrimination and pity. Last night's rain was delicate and cloudy. Mexia was tossed around for quite a while at a young age, and now she was exhausted. Uh, sorry, I was impulsive. If you're exhausted, go back to sleep. I'll go and prepare some breakfast for you. MMM Mexia squinted her eyes and hummed. After gently pulling the bed sheet and covering Mexia, Muyang smiled softly at her lazy appearance. He then walked out of the room to prepare breakfast for her. From this day on, Mexia's wife. When he thought of the fact that Mexia had just turned 18, which was actually a few days away, Muyang felt that he was still too rough last night. Besides, he hadn't even formally proposed marriage to Mr. Isaac yet. It was always a bit guilty to roll over with his daughter like that secretly. Although Isaac was definitely happy to give them a blessing, Muyang still had to follow the proper etiquette. This way, in two years, when Mexia graduated from the Superpowers Academy, he would go to propose to Mr. Isaac and marry Mexia. At that time, Mexia's age would be perfect, and the two could be officially married. Chapter 96 After officially breaking through the last boundary between men and women, Muyang and Mexia's feelings rapidly changed. They were getting tired of being together every moment. As someone said, the emotions between a man and a woman were always covered up initially. Still, once they take off all their clothes and get into the same bed, there were no more secrets between them. Life was sublimated by banging. That couldn't be entirely true, but for a hot unfulfilled love like Muyang and Mexia, who were straight into bed, it was indeed worth for them to get bored for a long time. After all, this kind of leapfrogging back to the past was always necessary to fill the gap in between, but it was good that Mexia had a month's vacation, and Muyang had plenty of time to get on the train first before filling the ticket. Their relationship was on a straight upward trend. During the daytime, they would fight together and grow their skill. Muyang's martial arts skill was far superior to Mexia's, who considered to have very good superpowers. Every time she exerted her full strength, the fluorescent green light lit up. There would be a feeling of the world discoloration. And once it was nighttime, the two of them would sleep on the same pillow, recounting their hearts and communicating deeply. After that, some delightful things were naturally inevitable. They were both young men and women, after the first taste of the forbidden fruit, they naturally couldn't stop. Almost every night, they would play the harmonious music of the miracle of life. The clueless Mexia had managed to unlock different positions as a result. Of course, Mexia was still young and didn't want to conceive the next generation. That was why they would actively avoid their cycles when it came to harmony. During this period, Muyang would prepare nutritious meals every day so that Mexia could refresh and recuperate her body. He gradually tended to shift towards being a chef and family man. Mexia, do you still have that crystal ball you picked up before? Mexia was lying down on the sofa in the hotel room with her upper body naked and a lazy face, while Muyang used his flexible fingering to press on her body and the crackling was sounded. This was the sound of orthopedic. Mexia let out a soothing whisper. It's in my bag. Why is senior brother asking this? Mexia laid on the couch with half-lidded eyes. Her naked waist was so slender it seemed boneless. Muyang said, bring it to me. Mexia rolled over and pulled the sheet over herself. She then rummaged through the pile of clothes and pulled out her bag from which she took out an orange-red crystal ball. Inside the crystal ball was six round of five-pointed stars neatly arranged. It was one that Mexia had found when she was a child near a stream in the primitive mountains. Brother, what exactly is this crystal ball? Handing over the dragon balls to Muyang's hands, Mexia smoothly wrapped her hands around Muyang's neck and asked in a petulant manner. This dragon ball had accompanied Mexia for many years. However, she had never understood what this was. In the past, Muyang had told her that it was essential, so she often carried it with her from time to time. This thing is called a dragon ball, and there were seven of them. According to the number of stars inside it, it is divided into one star dragon ball to seven star dragon ball. 
The one you are holding has six stars in it, so it is a six-star dragon ball. The dragon ball is a divine object made by the Kami of the Lookout. It is said that if you find all seven, you can summon Chenren, and Chenren can grant any of the summoner's wishes. This thing is actually so magical. Mexia's turquoise eyes flashed with a hint of surprise. She didn't doubt Muyang's words. After all, her senior brother was practicing in the lookout, knowing these hidden secrets were perfectly normal. Just by summoning Shenren, could it really fulfill any of the summoner's wishes? Somewhat it was promising. Muyang smiled, that's how the last person who collected the seven dragon balls made a wish to Shenren and became king. Mexia said, the person you are talking about wouldn't be the founder of Central City, right? Muyang said, it's very likely. Central City was founded over 50 years ago. Somewhat, it roughly coincided with the time when the Dragon Balls flew apart. Hence, the creator of Central City was likely the one who collected all seven Dragon Balls. Nah, brother, shall we try to collect it too? Mexia stuck to Muyang's ear, her voice somewhat freckled. It's not as simple as you think. After the Dragon Balls are wished for, they will be scattered all over the world. Trying to recollect them is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. That's why I want to use this six-star dragon ball of yours as a reference to see if I can have someone create a radar to find the dragon balls. In the past, when his strength was still weak, Muyang's mind was focused on training. Right now, after the lookout's training, his strength reached the peak of an earthling, and he began to consider the dragon ball. Taking a trip to the Dragon Ball world, you have to collect the Dragon Balls, right? It's just that with Earth's current level of technology, he was afraid it was a bit difficult to create a Dragon Ball radar. Hmm. I'm sure with my senior brother's ability, it'll be possible. Mexia gave a thumbs up. She trusted Muyang unconditionally. Feeling the profuse affection in Mexia's words, a hint of emotion surfaced on Muyang's face. This little girl, not only was she pretty but also had such a sweet mouth. After putting the dragon balls aside, Muyang removed Mexia's hand around his neck and pulled her into his arms. Mexia, I just loosened your bones, and you enjoyed it. As promised, it's time for us to have a deeper physical fight. Mexia's eyes lit up, and she was not afraid, who is scared? Ha ha ha. Muyang laughed and carried Mexia to the bed. He then began to communicate with life again, unlocking more poses. This was the moment when Muyang, who almost changed his name to Mu Live's winner Yang, fell into the lover's lap again. While Muyang and Mexia were having a great time, and everyone was envious of them. And things weren't so peaceful anymore in thousands of miles away. It has been a long time since the opening of the Demon Realm Gate that was observed Kami. Fortunately, those who came out the Demon Realm Gate were some small demons. However, they still caused a lot of trouble for the local villagers. As a group of martial arts practitioners passed by, these small demons were all killed, and even the Demon Realm Gate was closed by inserting a sword. However, no one knew that this opening the Demon Realm Gate was only the beginning. More than 2,000 kilometers away from the valley was vast pasture land located on a plateau. The entire pasture being a fractured belt formed by the uplift of two plates. At this time, a corner of the pasture near the mountain range. Hoopla, a sound like a crow's low cry, came from the bare mountain's depths. Immediately, a bad smell gradually filled the air. The herdsmen who were driving their yaks from afar looked up to the sky, wondering what was going on. Suddenly, the yaks began to run, and soon, the ground began to tremble as well. Click, click, click. A sudden earthquake shattered the calm of this highland region. Stones shifted with a screech. The ground trembled, and a few rocks rolled down from the dry, weathered summits of the mountains where they had fallen, sinuous cracks appeared. Dark smoke spread out from the mountain, from which an ancient gate was revealed. Click, click, the sound of the stone cracking. The gate had gone through countless years, and a slit appeared above it. The winding cracks grew more and more, 
the stone peeled off and finally opened a large hole in the door panel. Haha, <laughs> the passage to Earth is finally broken. Buddy, come with me to the outside world. A winged demon stepped out of the hole in the demon realm gate. Subsequently, the demon named Buddy also followed him out of the gate. Chapter 97 Kanglu, I heard that the ruler of the region where this earth is located is a guy named Shula. After all these years, he hasn't even conquered this place yet. The demon named Buddy looked around, sensing the signs of human activity. Kanglu snorted coldly. His face visibly indecisive, don't mention that Shula in front of me. He's such rubbish. He was a member of the demon realm, who was actually surrounded by earthlings in a slapdash place. He even appointed himself as a demon king. Hmm, demon race must be humiliated. Kanglu's words were filled with disdain for Shula. But it's better to be careful. I've heard that earth is not a simple place. Buddy's eyes flickered, he was still a little worried. Kanglu grinned widely and patted Buddy's shoulder. Don't worry. Don't we still have Lord Garlic backing us up? That man has been coveting Earth for a long time. This time the gate is open, we need to inform him of this news. Lord Garlic will very be happy to hear it. He <laughs> he, yes. When Lord Garlic finds out, he will definitely reward us heavily. Kanglu convinced Buddy, a greedy light flashed in his eyes. He then carefully examined the outside environment. There weren't any mighty creatures to be found, and the whole area was calm. The two of them flew with their wings flapping with a hoop, gradually heading towards the crowded area. The owner of the ranch lived not far away. The two demons, Kanglu and Buddy, appeared at the makeshift home where the shepherds were grazing. They brutally killed the shepherds' family and absorbed their flesh and blood. While enjoying the essence of Earth's life, Kanglu began to search for useful information about Earth. They soon learned that the Earth's technology was still in an era where it wasn't very advanced. The martial arts practitioners weren't as active as they had been in ancient times. Kanglu scornfully said, such a low-level planet. Just send any demons over, and they can trample this place down. Let's put that aside for now. We need to report the situation here quickly. If someone else takes the shortcut, we'll lose a lot. Buddy narrowed his eyes and urged on Kanglu. Kanglu nodded immediately, and the two of them returned to the Demon Realm Gate's location. Buddy, I'll keep watch here. You go and report this to Lord Garlic. Tell him this credit is only for the two of us. Kanglu guarded the gate. He did not forget to make it clear to his companion that no other demons would credit their work. Good. Don't let the other demons find this place either. Buddy nodded vigorously as they divided the work. The lookout. Strong demonic key had been transmitted to this space. As the central point of managing the entire earth, the lookout had the ability to censor all parts of the earth. At this time, the kami was observing the lower realm. Suddenly his body shook, and his face became heavy, this is not good. This disturbing key comes from the gate to the dark demon realm that has been destroyed. Mr. Popo asked, how is it that the gate to the dark demon realm still exists on Earth? Wasn't that sealed long ago? I don't know, but that disturbance key is indeed from the dark demon realm. The gate must be repaired as soon as possible. Unlike the previous demon realm gate, the gate that appeared now led to the real demon realm. This part belonged to the outer region of the Dark Demon Realm. Kami did not know the Dark Demon Realm's existence, so he called that outer region. This part was different from the Earth Demon Realm and the Greater Demon Realm. There were many strong demons in the Greater Demon Realm. The slightest mistake would lead to a great disaster. Earth was a magical place with several gates that connected to the outside world. The Earth Demon Realm was the closest to Earth. The Earth Demon Realm was attached to the Earth, where drought and hardship prevailed all year round. It was a place that many big demons in the Demon Realm despised. That was why some demon race that couldn't make it in the Greater Demon Realm chose to come to this bitterly cold land. Further inside the Earth Demon Realm, there was a narrow passage leading to the Greater Demon Realm. 
the environment there was relatively superior. The demons inside were stronger, as it belonged to the periphery of the dark demon realm. Even if it was the nook and cranny, a random demon coming out of it was not something that Earth's power could handle. Generally speaking, the demon realm gates on Earth was connected to the Earth demon realm. Kami had basically eradicated the gate of the greater demon realm over the generations. So, the one that suddenly appeared now was probably a fish out of the net. Mr. Popo, go and repair that gate immediately. Kami's face was solemn. His priority was to repair the demon realm gate first, then he said, also go and get Muyang and Sun Gohan. The greater demon realm is very complicated and can't be engaged easily. However, I think the earth demon realm should be relatively simple there, so let them poke around a little bit through the earth demon realm to find out what's going on there. While Mr. Popo was repairing the gate, Muyang and Sun Gohan could enter the earth demon realm to poke around the greater demon realm situation along the way. They could learn about the situation and make preparations in advance. Because once the news of the damaged demon realm gate spread in the greater demon realm, then the earth would be in danger. Muyang is in the lower realm, so please bring him here. Kami was serious. Okay. Mr. Popo nodded. His two bronze eyes widening a bit, and then went to find both Muyang and Sun Gohan. The small town in the south belongs to a newly built city. Because of its proximity toward the southern capital, it was well developed, and prosperity could already be seen in the streets. After a night of fighting, Mexia's entire body was almost dehydrated. Her dark green hair was sickly and spiritless. With a hiss, the fluorescent green light flashed a few times as if it had gone out. With no more response, Mexia's mental energy was drained. Senior brother, I'm thirsty. I need some water. Mexia languished on the bed, her mouth dry and a little overindulged. Muyang saw the situation and took out a sense of bean. He stuffed it into Mexia's mouth. The next moment Mexia was revitalized and looked at Muyang with a provocative look again. Patting her head speechlessly, Muyang pulled Mexia up and got dressed. Get up. I'll take you out for a walk today. By using the Senzu beans as medicine for anything, Muyang's approach was also unique. If the Z fighter of later generations knew that he was so wasteful, he would get a grudging look. But to be reasonable, the effect of Senzu bean was indeed great. Even if it was for something in the room, the effect was immediate and very effective. On the street, the re-energized Mexia was holding Muyang's hand and chattering non-stop. Her lively nature was like a little child, completely devoid of the coldness she had when she was at the Superpower Academy. If the other younger students saw this scene, their jaws would have dropped in shock. Senior brother, what do you think of this dress? Mexia tried on a tight black jumpsuit. It suits you. Muyang's eyes brightened. Mexia's height wasn't short, but she wasn't too tall either. Her hair was long, and if she cut it a bit, she would be like a hell blizzard. However, Muyang always felt as if something was missing. Muyang touched his chin to look at Mexia's appearance. Needless to say, Mexia was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen, especially under the nourishment of love, she was more delicate and soft. At this time, he noticed a white tweed jacket on the hanger next to him, which looked very luxurious and furry. He draped it over Mexia's body, her graceful figure suddenly gave off a quiet and elegant aura. This is even more perfect. Muyang took a few steps back and nodded in satisfaction. Mexia quirked an eyebrow and was very happy. Boss, I'll buy these clothes. Just as Muyang and Mexia were leisurely enjoying their time together, they saw a black dot flying in the sky. As it got closer, it was a brightly colored carpet. Hey! Muyang, who was shopping with Mexia, suddenly looked up to the sky. What's wrong? Mexia saw this and looked to the sky as well. Popo! Muyang looked in surprise as Mr. Popo came down from above the flying carpet. Muyang, please come with me to the lookout immediately. Mr. Popo said calmly. Is something wrong? Muyang asked in surprise. 
Mexia whispered in Wiang's ear, Senior brother, who is this person? Mr. Popo looked at Mexia without fluctuation on his face, I'm Popo, a servant of Kami. I came here to get Muyang on behalf of Kami. Mexia was startled. She remembered what Muyang had told her about the lookout. So he is Mr. Popo. He really is indescribably black, and from what my brother said, his heart is also crystal black. Chapter 98 Muyang was actually a little surprised at Mr. Popo's sudden visit. Normally, Mr. Popo and Kami always stayed at the lookout and wouldn't normally descend to the lower realms. What happened this time? Looking over at Mexia on the side, Muyang smiled and introduced her to Mr. Popo, Popo, this is Mexia, my fiancé. Mexia blushed uncontrollably at his introduction, but came forward to greet him, Hello, Mr. Popo. Hello, Mexia. Mr. Popo responded to her meticulously. Popo, why did you come to see me? Is there something going on at the lookout? Muyang got down to business. It's not the lookout, but one of the demon realm gates in the lower realm is broken. The situation is quite serious, so Kami sent me to find you and Sun Gohan to come over. With that, Mr. Popo briefly introduced the situation and told the demon realm gate's history in the lower realm. After hearing Mr. Popo's introduction, Muyang was startled. The demon realm gate was no small matter, it might be a disaster for the entire earth. It only made him feel strange. At this time in the original story, there shouldn't have been any major disasters. Perhaps this disaster wasn't obvious, or it was successfully dealt with by Mr. Popo and Kami. Muyang's thoughts flew up. Soon, he realized that he seemed to be thinking a little too much. Senior brother, are you going back now? Mexia listened to the whole thing, so of course, she knew that Muyang would go back. Therefore, she bit her lip and was a little reluctant. Muyang sighed. He didn't want his honeymoon with Mexia to be interrupted like this. It shouldn't be a problem if he said this was a honeymoon. However, the situation forced him to take part in this big event. I'm sorry but it looks like I can't keep you company. He apologized. If you go to the demon realm, I'll go with you. Mexia's eyes gazed at Muyang. They were a husband and wife now. Don't be ridiculous. Muyang glared at her. He also knew that Mexia was worried about him, so he said kindly, the situation of this trip to the demon realm is unknown. That's why I won't let you take any risks, no matter what. Feel free to wait for me in the academy. But, Mexia bit her lower lip. She wanted to speak again, but finally nodded, All right then, but you have to come back to accompany me when you're done with this. Looking at her pitiful and aggrieved appearance, Muyang smiled and assured her, Don't worry. I'll double compensate you then. After that, he turned to Mr. Popo and said, Let's go. Since he would be traveling with Mr. Popo, he didn't choose to use dancing sky art. Instead, he got on Mr. Popo's flying carpet and enjoyed the rare treat of having an exclusive driver back. Mexia watched in silence until she couldn't see Muyang's shadow anymore. She then nuzzled her mouth and flew off in the direction of the Superpower Academy. This time, her senior brother wouldn't let her tag along. It must be because her strength was too weak. If she raised her superpowers, her senior brother wouldn't be able to stop her. Mexia secretly made up her mind to work even harder on her superpowers when she went back. The lookout. Muyang and Sun Gohan came along with Mr. Popo. Kami. Muyang greeted, then stood aside. You already know about the matter. There is a demon realm gate on earth that was broken. I will send Mr. Popo to the Demon Realm Gate later to investigate and see if we can patch the gate back on. Kami nodded and went over the following in detail. In the end, he said, I've called you here because I want you to enter the Earth Demon Realm and investigate what's going on inside along the edge of it. Although the Earth Demon Realm is connected to the Greater Demon Realm, there aren't many powerful demons race in it. So you don't have to worry about any danger. 
Muyang felt a little surprised at what he heard. How could the gate of the dark demon realm open? And for the greater demon realm, according to Mr. Popo and Kami, it should be a corner of the dark demon realm controlled by the demon king Dabura. If this incident was not handled well and the dark demon realm's demon race entered the earth, the consequences would be unthinkable. Why don't we just go inside the greater demon realm and take a look? Muyang asked. Kami thought about it and shook his head seriously, there are dangers in the greater demon realm. Do your best, just investigate the edges, don't go deeper. Okay. I understand. Muyang and Sun Gohan shrugged their shoulders. After seeing the two nodded, Kami's aged face revealed a smile. He then half crouched on the ground and placed his palm on the stone slab of the ground. With a buzzing fluctuation, a power inherited from Kami began to work. The entire sky became solemnly silent, and the clouds in the distance seemed to become illusory. Beneath the lookout's red building, the power pole that connected Korin Tower and the lookout rapidly retracted. At this time, Muyang and the others suddenly felt a tremor. Then, an acceleration acted on their bodies. The lookout actually resembled an airborne carrier, rapidly moving up through the clouds. Phew! The lookout moved at high speed, and in the blink of an eye, it was over two majestic mountain ranges. There was a yellow-orange pasture below. This is it. Below is the greater demon realm entrance, Mr. Popo, I'll leave it to you then. Don't let anyone from the demon realm walk out the gate. Kami fixed his face as a seriousness showed on his pale face. If you can, try to close the gates or annihilate them. M.M. Mr. Popo nodded with a flat expression. He looked at Muyang and Sun Gohan and directly jumped down from the lookout with his hands behind his back. At the same time, a flying carpet urgently followed, carrying Mr. Popo towards the gate of the greater demon realm. Looking away from Mr. Popo, Kami once again controlled the lookout to shift its location. Next, I'll send you to another gate, which is the entrance to the earth demon realm. After saying that, Kami shifted the lookout again to 2,000 kilometers away. Almost in just an instant, they arrived at their destination. Here we are. Muyang was very surprised at the speed of the lookout. It was much faster than the flying Nimbus. Muyang, Gohan, the gate to the Earth Demon Realm is inside the valley below. It was just sealed not long ago. You can enter through that gate. Remember to pay attention to your own safety. If you encounter an accident, just exit and don't hold back inside, got it? Kami wanted them to return safely more than investigating out what was going on inside. After all, Muyang and Sun Gohan were the ones he saw with the potential to surpass himself. Sun Gohan was now standing at the edge of the lookout. He was looking at the white clouds floating below. The dense clouds stretched at times, yet they couldn't see the ground at a glance, indicating they were extremely high. Do we really have to go down from here? If you jump straight down, you would fall and get hurt if you didn't die. Don't dawdle, just jump straight down. Muyang stood behind Sun Gohan and pushed his shoulder. Sun Gohan screamed wow and fell right off the lookout. Ah, that feeling comes again. The miserable echoes became more and more blurred, as it gradually became inaudible. Nodding his head towards Kami, Muyang also jumped down from the lookout. With the dancing sky art, he then launched and swooped like a blinding bolt of lightning. He quickly caught up with Sun Gohan, who was descending in the air. I think it's time for you to learn dancing sky art. Muyang faintly said to the descending Sun Gohan. But that's Crane School's technique. Muyang scoffed, Mutato has passed on his secret techniques to you, and you still care about this? If you don't learn from the sea and the world, your path will end here. Sun Gohan thought carefully, and it seemed to be true. He then sincerely said, I understand. Thank you. You are my true friend. Okay, I'll meet you down there. Hey, don't you care about me? Sun Gohan came back to his senses. Muyang showed his white teeth and gave him a thumbs up, you were fine when you jumped off the Korin Tower. So, 
as your friend, I'm sure this little difficulty won't be too difficult for you. After saying that, Muyang no longer cared about Sun Gohan. With a burst of acceleration, he disappeared from Sun Gohan's sight. Chapter 99 The last time Sun Gohan jumped off of Korin Tower, it seemed like he didn't do it willingly, just like this time, he was pushed off by someone. Sun Gohan's face was a little green. His fingers shivered and pointed at Muyang's back. It was true, this was only a superficial friendship. This was the first time Muyang had pitted himself. Sometimes Sun Gohan thought that it was really his misfortune to meet him. The speed of falling became increasingly faster. The towering mountains gradually became clearer, and Sun Gohan had no choice but to gather his hands together as he was about to land. Kamehameha An azure-colored key wave impacted out from between his palms, and with this impact, Sun Gohan stabilized his descent. Muyang, don't fool me again in the future. Sooner or later, you'll fool me to death. Muyang stopped. He looked at Sun, Gohan up and down. Suddenly, he thought of something and said to him thoughtfully, Actually, I think it's good for you to die, you'll have a beautiful woman by your side in the future. What are you talking about? Sun Gohan was at a loss for words. Was he cursed me to die early? You'll understand later. Muyang hitched up and continued walking towards Sensan Mountain. In the original story, Sun Gohan entered the Mount Five Element after his death. He lived with a beautiful woman named Anan to manage the passage to the other world. But unfortunately, at that time, Sun Gohan was already a rotten old man, otherwise, an incredible story might have been born. In the densely vegetated forest, Muyang and Sun Gohan kept going further until a valley finally appeared in front of them. The gate to the demon realm is nearby, right? Sun Gohan looked around and muttered on his lips. Muyang observed the surroundings and pointed to a small path, there's only this one path here. So, it should be around here, let's split up and look for it. They separated and searched in different directions. Soon they found a stone door in a canyon. It was a huge stone door about four meters high, with two outward opening panels, covered with strange and bizarre patterns. One door panel was locked tightly, and the other door panel was open a little bit. However, it was stuck at an angle by a sharp sword. This is the gate to the Earth Demon Realm. Sun Gohan took a few big steps forward and squatted down to observe the sword stuck in the ground. The hilt of the sword was golden, and the blade was all inserted into the soil. Muyang's eyes narrowed as he looked at the scene in front of him. His mind suddenly thought of the animated image of Sun Goku encountering Shula when he entered the demon realm. From all the circumstances, this seemed to be the place where Sun Goku entered the demon realm. Let's go in and take a look, Muyang said, directly pulled out the sword and opened the door to the demon realm a little bit. An evil, dark, and blood-smelling smell came out. It smells awful. Muyang frowned and walked into the demon realm with Sun Gohan. The demonic key in the demon realm made them feel uncomfortable. No matter how powerful the character died in the Dragon Ball world, their souls would go to the other world to repatriate. Only those who were killed by demons would have their souls tormented for eternity and unable to transcend. However, with Muyang and Sun Gohan's strength, there was no need to worry about safety in this small earth demon realm. Then, through a narrow tunnel, Muyang and Sun Gohan gradually entered the small earth demon realm area. Their vision became wider. What came into view was a very desolate landscape, just like the desert on earth. The sky of the demon realm was reddish brown, and the ground was barren. Although there were hills, there was no plantation at all. It was filled with intense black smoke, and the ground was cracked. Sun Gohan, who saw such a scene for the first time, said unexpectedly, Is this the demon realm? The conditions are callous. This small demon realm is attached to the Earth's vicinity. It's actually a bitterly cold land. Upon taking stock of the surroundings, Muyang's eyes glanced around. The key he felt were weak, so he could roughly judge the strength of the area. 
The Dragon Ball world was a world with an extensive system. Not to mention the Grand Minister of Zeno, the Angels, and other administrators of 18 universes led by Dragon God Zalama and others who strayed from the Zeno system and the world they founded. It was within the Universe 7, under the framework of the Gods of Destruction and Sacred World of the Kai, which also contained the other world, Hell, Heaven, Kai's planet, and many more. The Dark Demon Realm was another system of worlds relative to the Gods system. Strictly speaking, it also belonged to the scope of Universe 7 and should be under the jurisdiction of the Gods of Destruction and the Sacred World of the Kai. However, because of the different levels and energy properties, it had considerable independence, led by the Demon King Dabura, with countless strong demons. The God of Destruction was too lazy to care, and the Sacred World of the Kai was powerless to care. Hence, creating an almost independent system in the Dark Demon Realm. To put it simply, it was like the Emperor ignoring the Imperial Government. The ministers hugging the group couldn't control the Imperial Government. The local power grew bigger and ignored the Imperial Court completely. The lesser demon realm near Earth was connected to the greater demon realm, while the great demon realm was another corner of the dark demon realm. This was similar to a hierarchical relationship of Kami, Kai, and Grand Kai. Muyang could ignore the powerful demons inside the Earth Demon Realm. Still, he had to be careful with the powerful demons inside the Greater Demon Realm and even the Dark Demon Realm. Especially the Demon King Dabura, who was almost comparable to the Super Scion 2 level. Even the Supreme Kai had to be careful with him. Mr. Popo is now repairing the gate to the Greater Demon Realm. Let's be careful to detour through the Earth Demon Realm and not alert the powerful demons inside. Muyang was clear that his and Sun Gohan's priority was to investigate the demon realm situation. Of course, he didn't want to attract the powerful demon's attention in the greater demon realm. Understood. Sun Gohan nodded solemnly, unable to agree more. His power level was only 180, and entering the greater demon realm would be life-threatening. In the demon realm, the sun was high, and the blazing vision was scorching the earth. Muyang and Sun Gohan took a glance towards the distant hillock, as it was their first time entering the demon realm. They were unfamiliar with the place. They needed to find someone who knew the location if they wanted to find the gate to enter the greater demon realm. Now, Muyang closed his eyes and sensed for a moment. The invisible sense of Qi spread out, and he quickly caught the scent of life nearby. The demons among this earth demon realm were weak. The strongest kind of key reaction in it didn't reach Sun Gohan's intensity. A while later, Muyang opened his eyes and had confirmed the general location. He pointed in a direction and said, More than a hundred kilometers in this direction, there is a relatively strong key source. There is also some quite strong key, which should be the ruler of this area. Let's go over and take a look, we might get some useful information. Sun Gohan nodded and followed Muyang towards the location of that key reaction. Chapter 100 A hundred kilometers away, there was a dim and gloomy palace in a gloomy valley. At the moment, the palace was filled with warblers and dancers. The ruler of the area, King Shula, was sitting on a chair covered in animal skins. One of his arms wrapped around a barely dressed female demon, the other tilted towards a wine glass as he watched the dancers in the center of the palace. Off stage, the dancers were dressed in beautiful costumes and danced gracefully, while countless subordinates on either side drank freely and laughed non-stop. These subordinates, just like King Shula, they had wandered to Earth Lesser Demon Realm because they couldn't make it in the Greater Demon Realm. Compared to the Greater Demon Realm, the Earth Demon Realm was even more remote. A truly bitter and cold place. Because of this, there were no real strong demons who would come here. There were no tigers on the mountain, and monkeys were called kings, so King Shula, as the ruler of this place, usually had a pretty comfortable life. Your Majesty, recently King Gurum's group hasn't been very settled. They won't be hitting us here, right? A pig-headed demon tore off a piece of meat and said as he chewed, but they are really useless. I heard that a beast ran out of nowhere in their territory some time ago. The loss is not small. King Shula, 
who had purple hair, took a sip of wine and said contemptuously, Don't bother with those jumping clowns. If they dare to mess with us, we will definitely make them pay for it. Hee <laughs> hee, as the king said if they dare to provoke us, let them pay the price. Who dares to provoke us in the demon realm? Even the Yaksha king of northern part, wouldn't dare to provoke us casually. Ha ha ha. The countless demons underneath laughed loudly and gorged on meat. They seemed to be very comfortable. The gate over on earth seemed to have opened some time ago, how is it now? King Shula swept the crowd of subordinates present with grace and dignity and asked about the earth gate. One of his subordinates sighed, we didn't find out early enough. That gate has been sealed. I don't know who did it. Damn it. I was hoping to take a stroll on earth. They say the sky is blue there, and the water is sweet, unlike here. It would be nice to rule the earth. Some of the demons had regrets and shook their heads as if they had missed a golden opportunity. Looking at his subordinates, one by one, secretly chagrined and regretting that they hadn't discovered the gate earlier. King Shula shook the wine cup in his hand and sighed. Oh earth! Would their lives have been this difficult if they had been able to enter earth through that gate? But then, King Shula shook his head. Well, there were many masters on earth, too. Everyone is staying safe and sound here. Have you forgotten what happened to the great demon King Piccolo and demon King Malukoho from over 200 years ago? King Shula said grudgingly, suddenly setting his glass on the case. They didn't come back. Hearing the great demon King Piccolo and demon King Malukoho, these demons' subordinates all shuddered. Their faces were suddenly turning a bit pale. They had forgotten that the masters on earth were also very powerful. The great demon King Piccolo and demon King Malukoho, who were considered powerful in the greater demon realm, also wanted to rule the earth. But they never returned in the end. It was feared that they had all perished on earth. Looking at the reactions of his subordinates, King Shula shook his head helplessly. Forget about it. Don't think about the supremacy. The earth demon realm environment was a little harsher, but at least it was still safe. King Shula drained the wine in his cup in one gulp. In the end, they were still too weak. Suddenly, King Shula felt a slight chill for some reason and raised his head to see two silhouettes appearing in the palace at some point. A penetrating gaze swept over. A strong sense of oppression made his body feel uncomfortable. King Shula's face changed suddenly, as his heart trembled wildly, this master is an earthling. How did a master from Earth come to the demon realm? Did he come to annihilate this place? King Shula instinctively felt a thrill of horror as he remembered the gate to Earth from before. Earthlings! Many demons lost their voices, and then chaotic arguments echoed in the main hall. There were still big differences in the looks of humans and demons. The demons present instantly recognized Muyang and Sun Gohan's identity. I come to ask you, which of you knows the gate to the great demon realm? Muyang was condescendingly floating in the air. A shining ball of ki condensing in his hand. The ball of ki was azure in color and incredibly splendid. However, once it exploded, it was enough to wipe out all the demons present. King Shula stared straight at the ki ball. His liver and guts cracked, his sweat shed rainwater, as he quickly came to a decision. Master, the gate to the demon realm you are looking for is near the Blood River in southwest. King Shula lowered his stance and spoke carefully. He was afraid that the key ball in his opponent's hand might accidentally fall. The subordinate demons were all taken aback at the King Shula's reception of such a low stance. At that moment, after carefully examining the two earthlings who appeared in front of them, they suddenly felt an unexpected threat of death. These demons immediately, as frightened as their king, sweating like rain. Taking a faint glance at King Shula, Muyang's eyes flashed with a hint of surprise. This guy was probably the demon king that Sun Gaku had encountered when he entered the demon realm. Tisk, listen to the names, King Shula and King Gurums, each one of them was incredibly weak. It was only their names that were very impressive. He was looking at the surrounding palaces. 
It was quite impressive that such a magnificent building had been built in a bitterly cold place like Earth Demon Realm. So, of course, he would enjoy it. Soon, Muyang hid his astonishment and said, Tell me the detail. If you dare to deceive anything, you and these subordinates of yours will all be killed. Yes, yes, King Shula responded in succession and told Muyang about the gate to the great demon realm in detail. After hearing this, Muyang exchanged glances with Sun Gohan. He then withdrew the key ball in his hand and was about to leave, no one should reveal the news that the two of us are here, or you know the consequences. He said as an incomparably strong pressure crushed over. King Shula and his subordinates turned pale in fear and nodded their heads in response. No, it won't, please don't worry, masters. M.M. Muyang glanced at them, he didn't want to cause any complications here. Then he no longer paid attention to these wimps and signaled Sun Gohan that they would leave as soon as possible. So, in the blink of an eye, they became a shadow and disappeared. 